Welcome to the best course for learning HTML, CSS, and JavaScript by creating simple and interesting projects. My name is Sahan, and I'm a web developer with over 15 years of programming experience. I created this brand new course to share my experience with you. This course is made to help you get familiar with the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript while building simple but practical websites. By the end of this course, you'll be able to write HTML, CSS, and JavaScript codes and build interesting and responsive websites. The course starts with a simple preview on projects and how they work. Then in each project, first we write the HTML part and once we are done with the HTML part, we'll begin to work on the CSS and JavaScript sections. It is completely fine if you have no prior knowledge of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All HTML, CSS, and JavaScript syntaxes are explained in details. All the projects are started from scratch and continued with no copy-pasting of the code. All codes are carefully explained line by line and demonstrated on the project. This is a fun project-based course that will teach you about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript while building modern, super cool, and responsive websites. If you're excited as I am to learn about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and build super amazing websites, then let's get started. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a digital clock. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a background image in the website. We have a title, and also we can see the current time uh, in a digital form. If you check the computer time, as you can see, the time is exactly the same and it's showing here. In this project, we are going to use JavaScript to dynamically get the current time from the computer and set it inside this beautifully designed website. In the next section, we are going to start with the HTML part of our project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. Here, we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, so I click on the desktop. And here, we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder digital clock, which is the name of our project. Here we click on the select folder button to select the folder. We close the Get Started tab again, and on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right-click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.html, and we press Enter. As you can see, now we have our index.html file on the right side, but it's completely empty but we can easily make an HTML5 boilerplate using an exclamation mark. So we write an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion. The HTML5 boilerplate includes doc type, 
which tells the browser which version of HTML the page is written in. And in our case, as we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which is the top level element inside the HTML file. It includes two tags, the head and the body tags, and also the length attribute inside the opening HTML tag sets the language of the page. In our case, we set the language to be English. Then we have the head tags, which includes three metadata tags and also one title tag. The chart set attribute inside the first metadata tag defines the HTML character encoding. UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 for web developers because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols. The second metadata tag tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. Then we have the viewport meta tag, which tells the browser on how to resize the page. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes clearly. The content attribute here has two parts. The first part sets the page's width to device's screen's width. For example, if the user is using mobile screen, the page's width will be smaller than another person using a computer screen. Then we have the initial zoom level of the browser, which is set to be 100% as a default. The title, meta, the title tag sets the title of the page. In order to see the browser inside the Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview extension. We just need to right-click inside the index.html file and click on the Live Preview Show Preview. As you can see, now we have the browser on the right side which is completely empty because we haven't added anything inside the body section yet, but with the title document. We can change the title here to our pages, uh, to our project's name, which is Digital Clock. We can see the Digital Clock on the tab of the browser Let's close this Explorer section to have more space on the right side. We just need to drag this line to the, re to the left. Let's decrease the size of the browser. And let's start coding inside the body section. First, we just add a H2 tag to have some heading and we just write digital clock. And after the H2 tag, we add a div with a class of clock. We just write dot clock. And inside the div, we have our hours, minutes, seconds, and also the AM and PM section. So first we add a div here, it's just an empty div. And inside this div, we add a span and the ID, the first spam, the ID will be hour. And we just write double zero for just hard coded because we can install this later using CSS 
before using JavaScript or dynamically get these numbers from the computer. We have another spam. with a class of text. And here we just say hours. We just need to copy this div three more times using Alt Shift arrow done. And this one would be minutes. And here, minutes. Then we have the next one, seconds. Here as well, second. And finally, here, this one is, uh, we don't need anything inside it. And also we delete this spam because this is just for the AM and PM. We can just write down AM hard coded for now for styling the project in the next section. That was it for the HTML part of the project. In the next section, we're going to start styling our project using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Before styling our project using CSS, we must add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html and just under the title tag here, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet, and the href attribute here defines the destination of the link. As both files are located at the same directory, we just need to have a standard CSS for the URL. Now we can close the Explorer section again. And we go to standard CSS to start styling our project. First, we start with the body section. We just need to remove the default margin and bring everything to the center using display flex. So we just write body and we open a set of curly braces. We remove the default margin using margin zero. Then for bringing everything to the center horizontally, we can just write display flex and as everything went next to each other, we can use flex direction column to bring them back uh, as a column. And also we can use align item center to bring everything to the center horizontally. In order to bring them to the center vertically as well, first we need to set the height of the body to the uh, height of the screens by using height 
100% of the viewport height. Then we use justify content center to bring everything to the center uh, vertically. The next things we need to do is just, uh, I would like to add a background image to our project. So we just write background and we can use the URL function to add an external background URL. So we go to the desktop and we click on the Google Chrome or any browser you would like to use. And in the search of the Google, we search for Unsplash. The, the website we, we are going to use is unsplash.com. We click here. And here in the search result, in the search bar, we search for, for example, nature. We change the orientation to landscape. And we just uh, choose one of these images. Yeah, anything is fine. Uh, this one would be okay, or this one. So here, uh, on the picture, we right click and we click on the copy image address. And we go back to the Visual Studio code and we add a double code set. And inside this set of double code, we paste the link. Now we can see the image in the background. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes. And we go to the next section for styling. Firstly, this uh, headline, the digital clock. The digital clock had the tag of H2, so we target that. We just uh, use, first we make all the letters capitalized using text transform, capitalize, or sorry, uppercase to make everything capitalized. And then we, we increase the letter spacing and the space between the characters of this text using letter spacing and we just set it to be 4 pixels. Let's change the font uh, size to be 14 pixels, a little bit smaller and, and uh, and we choose text align center to bring it to the center. It's already in the center, but, but when we change the other section, we want it exactly to be in the center. So we, we use text align center. The next things we, will, uh, we are going to style is this section. First, we a style this class, uh, the div that uh, contains everything. So we target that with, we just say dot clock because it's a class, we just use dot. We change the display to flex. So everything is now next to each other. 
And the next thing is this div. So all these divs, we're going to target this div. So we just write clock and we target the div. We add some margin, for example, five pixels to make uh, everything a little bit separated from each other. Then we go to the next section and we target the span, all the spans. So we just write here dot clock a span we change the width to be 100 pixels and uh, we change the height to be 80 pixel then we change the background color to be a slate blue we can see the change and we change the opacity to be 80% because we want it a little bit lighter and then we change the color of the text to be white Then for bringing everything to the center, we can use display flex. As soon as we did this display flex, we saw the effects of the width and height. So, and then we use justify content center to bring everything to the center horizontally and align item center to bring everything to the center vertically. We change the font size to be 50 pixels to make them a little bit bigger. And we add some text shadow to have some text shadow. So we just say text shadow the first parameter inside the text shadow is the position of the horizontal shadow. So we set it to be two pixels. Then we have the position of the vertical shadow. We set it to be two pixels as well. Then we have the blur radius, four pixels. And now the color is white. We want the color to be black. So we use RGBA function, we set 0, 0 and 0 for red, green and blue, which gives us the black color and also 0.3 for the alpha value, which means 30% transparency or opacity. So let's uh, change the we forgot to change the font family. We set the font family to sans serif. So the text looks better now. And uh, we're going to decrease the size of them later. But we're just designing this upper zeros and AM. All right, so next we're going to target this spam, which is here, and the class is text. So we, we target them here, we just say dot clock dot text. We set the height to be 30 pixels. We set the font size, we make them a little bit smaller, not a little bit, 10 pixels. And we change the 
let's make them uppercase using text transform uppercase and we increase the space between the letters using letter spacing and we set it to be just uh, two pixels and also ch let's change the color of the background of them differently so we just say background and we set it to be dark blue instead of a slate blue okay and also we add some opacity 80 percent Yeah, this picture, if the background image, we add background size cover, we're going to see all the image betterly. Yeah, now we can see the effects of the opacity on the our website. And let's change the color of this to white as well. So H2. We change the color to white to be more visible. Now, after this, we're going to target this AM and make it a little bit smaller and we bring it to the down section. In order to change the position of the this AM, we can position this one absolute but in order to be relative to other things so we need to change the position of this div to be relative and here we target that am we just say dot clock and the am has the id of am pm so we need to have hashtag here AM PM. We open a set of curly braces and we set it first, we bring it down, we just say bottom zero. And uh, no, we change the position to absolute. So, so we bring it in the bottom, we change the width to be. 60 pixels and height to be 30 pixels like the one we did for this section and also the font size is it's a little bit big so we make it to be 20 pixels and also we want to have a different color for this section so we change the background To be green for example yeah the color is okay too white and uh, yeah everything looks fine for the styling in the next section we're going to use Java JavaScript to dynamically change these numbers and we get the current real time from our computer so see you in the next section for the javascript part of our project all right in the last section we have finished with the css part of our project in this section we're going to start using JavaScript in our project. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. So here we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.js and we press enter. 
Before using JavaScript in our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html and just at the end of the body section here, we add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the src. As both files, I mean index.html and index.js are located at the same directory, we just need to write index.js for the URL. We save the file using Ctrl S and we close this explorer section by dragging this line to the left to have more space on the right side and Let's use overflow hidden in the body section of the CSS to remove these ex ex scroll bars to have a more beautiful website. So we just write overflow hidden. So now by decreasing the size, we don't see any overflow. We save this file as well using Ctrl S and we, we go to index.js. Four things we need to have inside our JavaScript, the four elements we need to manipulate. As this section, the hour, minutes, seconds, and also this AM, because we wanna change it dynamically using JavaScript. So, the four things we have in inside the index.js has four IDs, minutes, sorry, hour, minutes, seconds, and AM, PM. We can return an element with an ID using get element by ID method. So we go to index.js and we create a constant and we call it our element and we equal it to document.getElementById and the ID is hour. We can use Alt-Z to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code completely. And next we have the minutes. We just write minutes or minute element and we equal it to document dot get element by ID and the ID is here minutes. Next we have seconds, we just copy this and we change this minutes to seconds and this one second element and finally we get this am and we create a constant we call it am pm element and we equal it to document dot get element by ID and the ID is AM PM. All right. Now we have the all the elements. We can change them dynamically. First, we create a function to get the data from our computer. So we call the function clock or update clock. And first we get the hour from, our, from the computer using the date constructor. So we, we just need to create a variable because we want to change it later as well. So we equal it to new space date
and we want to get the hours sorry the let is hour so we had put h so we have our new date and we want to get the hours so we use get hours method for the minutes we just write m equal to new date and we get get minutes use get minutes method next we have the second and we just say new date dot get seconds and finally we just set the am pm variable this one we we cannot get it from the computer but we can make a logic to create it first we set it to be am as a default and we're going to check it later for example here we just say if the hour is greater than 12 first we set the hour to be hour minus 12 because after 12 we have 13 for example and the the new hour will be 13 minus 12, which is 1. And then we change the AM, PM to PM. So after 12, for example, 1 in the afternoon, the H would be 1 and the AM, PM would be PM as well. All right. And also the other things is we uh, let's... Uh, First, let's see the, the result. So we use inner text method to change the text inside this hour element, which is here. So we just say our element dot inner text and we set it to be equal to H. And we, we call this uh, we need to call this function every second. First, we call it here. We just say update clock one time, and we can see the hour here. But for the seconds, we need to call it every second. So let's uh, first uh, uh, finish this part. So we the minutes element inner text would be m now my computer is 8 30 a.m i'm recording now the video in the 8 8 30 so the next one is second element dot inner text is equal to s and then we have the AM PM element equal uh, sorry dot inner text to AM PM which we defined here all right so everything is okay now because the time is 8 31 35 second if you refresh it each time we get the new second as well but we can call this function every second using set timeout method. We just write set timeout method actually set a timer that execute a function after the timer expires. So the first parameter inside the set timeout method is a function. And the second parameter is the timer and we set it to be one second which is 1000 milliseconds and every one second we want to call this function not every uh, just after one second we call it again so first we the code runs until here to call the function first and then as soon as reach to the set timeout 
after one second, call the function again. And then the code goes from here again to here. And after one second, call the function again. And it's going to be an infinite loop. So we call the update clock function here. So now you can see every second there, uh, th this function is being called and we are getting a real time seconds here. The next things we need to do is just, uh, as I mentioned before here, now we have we don't have zero here usually the digital clocks have zero eight or uh, it doesn't have a single digits so in order to achieve this one here we create a, a statement the conditional statement we just say h is equal to and if the h is less than 10, you see, now it's true because it's 8. Just if this one happens, you just write 0 plus h. Otherwise, just use the h. Now, because the 8 is less than 10, we are getting 0, 8. But after that, we don't get any 0 at the beginning. We just get the 8 after 10. For the seconds, we, we write this one for the M and S as well. So we copy this two more times using Alt-Shift-Arrow down. And we change this H to to uh, M, I can use all. Of, I can uh, highlight all of them using Ctrl D. So we need, we just need to highlight the first one and use Ctrl D to go to the next one. And now we just use S as well. So now. We did all the parts. Let's check the project inside the browser as well. So we open it inside the browser. As you can see now, we have the correctly showing the time. Let's uh, decrease the size. And you can see it's responsive too. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. See you for the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a multiplication app. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a question here, which can be answered in this input section. And also we have a submit button. In a score section on the top right of the box, we store the scores that the user achieve by answering the right questions. And also if the, if the user answer a question wrongly, the scores decrease by one number. Each time we refresh the page, we get a new question randomly. And if we answer the question correctly, for example, if we say 2 multiplied to 7, 14, we get the score 1. And the next question is 6, and we get the score Two. But if they, we answer the question wrongly, for example, here the answer is 12, but if you write 1 and enter, the score would be decreased by 1. Uh, this is a very simple uh, multiplication app, but can be useful for kids. 
and we're going to use JavaScript local storage uh, to store the scores of the user and also we're going to use the random function to create the random questions using JavaScript. So see in the next section for the HTML part of the project. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. Here, we close the Get Started tab. And in the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click here on the desktop and we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. We name the file multiplication app. And we press enter. Here we click on the select folder button and we close the Get Started tab again. On the left side, in the Explorer section, we create our HTML file. So here we right click and we click on the new file and we name the file index.html and we press enter. On the right side, now we have our index.html file, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to have an HTML5 boilerplate. Here we click on the first auto suggestion to have our boilerplate. In the HTML5 boilerplate, the first line is the doc type, which tells the browser what version of HTML the page is written in and in our case we are using HTML5 so we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag which covers uh, the head tag and the body tags. The lang attribute inside the opening HTML tag sets the language of the page and in our case, we set the language to be English. Then we have the head tag, which includes the metadata tags and also the title tag. The charted attribute inside the first metadata tag defines the HTML character encoding and the UTF-8 is recommended by the HTML5 to all the uh, web developers because it contains nearly all the characters and the symbols. Then this meta tag tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge. The viewport meta tag sets the width of the screen when the page is loaded. The, the first section sets the width of the page to the device's screen. For example, if you have a mobile screen, the width will be smaller than the computer. Then the, we have the initial zoom level of the browser, which is in our case is 100%. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes. Here in the next tag, we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page. In order to see the browser inside the Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview extension. Here we just need to right click and we click on Live Preview Show Preview. Now we can see the browser on the right side, which is completely empty, but with the title document which is coming from here. We can change the doc, uh, title to our uh, project's name, which is multiplication 
uh, app, we just say multiplication app. And sorry, inside the body section, we add a form with a class of form and also with the ID of form. We need the class for styling and we need the ID for the JavaScript section to get the data from the form. Let's close this Explorer section so we have more space on the right side. So we just need to drag this line to the left. Let's enter to accept the auto suggestion. So we have a form with a class of form and an ID of form. We, we don't need the action, we can delete it. And also inside the form, we have uh, First, we have a just the H4 tag with a class of score and an idea for score. And inside it, we have just a, now we have a hard coded a score equals zero. Later, Using JavaScript, we're going to create this uh, dynamically and we calculate the score of the person who is uh, using the application. After the H4 tag, we have a H1 tag, which is the question. We just add the, add the ID of question. We don't need to actually style this but we need the we need to manipulate it using JavaScript later so the question we just hard code a question we just say what is one multiply sorry multiply by one, yeah, and a question mark. Yeah, later uh, using JavaScript, we're going to dynamically create these numbers and create random questions. So let's finish the HTML part first. After the a question, we have an input to the person is able to answer the question inside the input. So we just have an input with a class of input and, and also an ID of inputs. We need the data inside the JavaScript. So we're going to get it using an ID and also we're going to style this input using the class. So we press enter the type of the input is text. We have ID and also the class. Here we can see the input. Let's uh, add a placeholder. Just saying, enter your answer. All right. The other things I would like to do is to bring the marker to the input when the page is uh, like a refreshed. So, uh, for example, I show I show you in the browser. We can see this in the browser using this hamburger and open in browser. So as you can see now. The marker is not here, so we have to come here and click here to have this uh, like a marker. But if we add the attribute autofocus, when we go to the browser, when we refresh the page, we always see the marker 
inside the uh, input. This one is gonna going to help the user to quickly answer the questions after each other. After that, we want to remove the uh, auto complete, which uh, which uh, suggests the user different numbers based on the history of the person. So we not, we are going to set it to be off so we the user doesn't get any suggestion after the input we have a submit button so we just have a button with uh, we choose this auto suggestion to create a button with a type of submit and also we want to add a class of btn so we're going to, going to style this button using this class and inside the button we just write submit all right you can see the button here as well uh, that's that was it for the html part it was uh, very simple but in the next section we're going to start firstly a style this a project and make it a little bit more beautiful and after that we're going to use javascript to dynamically create random questions and uh, and also store the score of the uh, user answers using the local storage of the browser so see you in the next section for the css part of our project All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we're going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So we open the, uh, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css. But before styling our project using CSS, we must add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html and just under the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet. The href attribute uh, defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and the solid CSS are located at the same directory. We just need to have solid CSS for the URL. Let's close this Explorer section. We don't need it. We don't need it anymore. So we can have more space on the right side for the, our coding and the browser. And we go to install CSS to start styling our project first we start we start with the body section uh, we remove the space around the body element using margin zero and uh, we can bring these uh, items to the center horizontally using display flex and justify content center and also we can bring them to the center uh, vertically uh, using the uh, height 100% of the viewport height and also align item center so first we set the height to be 100% of the viewport height so we the size of the body would be the same as this screen size. 
then we set the align item center to bring the items to the center vertically. Also, we can use text align center to uh, bring the inline contents to the center as well. So everything looks fine. We just need to add a background color. I just use yellow and we change we can change the font family to be cursive for example all right let we finish with the body section next we we can start styling the form which covers everything inside the body so for the form we can change the background color to be white we can see it now let's uh, add some padding so we bring these items inside the form so we just add 20 percent of 20 pixels of padding and let's add some box shadows so we can see this form uh, better so we just add box shadow the first value in box in the box shadow property is actually the position of the horizontal shadow we set it to be zero the second value is the position of the vertical shadow we set it to be four pixels we can see it here and the third value is the blur radius so we set it to be eight pixels now we can see the shadow around the box but this shadow is a little bit dim we can remove the transparency or decrease it using uh, RGBA functions. RGBA function sets a color with the alpha value which is the transparency. So we set zero for the red, uh, zero for green and zero for blue which gives us the black color and also we set 0.3 for the alpha value which means 30% transparency or opacity. All right, that looks okay. We just need to uh, add some borders, uh, rounded borders. So let's first use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code completely. And then we use border radius to add the uh, rounded border. We set it to be 10 pixels. That uh, looks fine now. When we decrease the size, uh, the form gets smaller, that's okay. But we want the, a little bit of the space uh, around them as well. So we add a margin of like a 5 pixels or let's say 10 pixels to have some space around the form as well all right let's uh, style this uh, input and the bottom uh, sorry the yeah the bottom the submit bottom so we just say input let's change the display to flex to bring the submit to the bottom and make Sorry, set the display to block to have the uh, input in the all line and push the submit button to the um, to the bottom section. So we just say display block and we set the width to be We set the width to be 100%. So we have the input all the way.
as you may notice the space from here to here is bigger than that size because it's calculating the border as well we can prevent this using box sizing border box so now we can have uh, the same space on the left and the right section let's uh, increase the size of the text inside we just say font size for example 25 pixels and we bring the we bring it to the center using text align center and uh, let's add some padding we just say 10 pixels padding and let's increase the size of this border around the input so we can see it better so we just say border solid four pixels and also let's change the color to green and let's decrease the color of the text uh, let's change the color of the text first we just say color green now we have a green color inside and also this enter your answer i want it to be a little bit lighter in order to access to that one we need to just uh, use the sudo element placeholder and uh, we just change the color to be uh, light light gray would be fine and also let's change the font family to be inherit so we ha we have the same font I think uh, we just need to define it first. We just say cur cursive would be better. Yeah, we have the same text font for here and here as well. Uh, that's okay for the input section. Or we can increase the size, font size to 30. It would be better. Yeah. And also, let's uh, let's uh, style the button. So we just say we target the button oh, by its class, which is btn. So we just say dot btn. We set the background color to be green. Let's change the color of the text to be white. Then we have, we remove the border. We're using border none. And let's uh, set the display to block as well for this item. And then we just set the width to be 100%. And then we add some padding. Just say... 20 pixels or it's too much just say 10 pixels and font size to be 25 pixels uh, just 20 is fine just say font family cursive as well and then i want a, a, a little bit of a space between the top and bottom so we just add a margin to add space around the button so we just say uh, margin 20 picks uh, just the uh, top and bottom the left and right to be zero so now we have the submit button just add some border radius to have a, a rounded corner 
to be five pixels and let's add some box shadow for the submit button as well so we can see it a little bit in a 3d form you just say zero for the horizontal position two pixels for the vertical shadow then we have four pixels for the radius and the color would be rgba uh, zero 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 for black and 0.3 for 30 percent transparency or opacity and also uh, let's add a curse let's change the cursor to be pointer so when we can see a pointing hand when we hover over the button and i want this button to be a little bit uh, the color to be a little bit uh, darker when we hover over the button so we tap to its hover pseudo class just say hover and we add a filter to it and we change the brightness to be 90 percent instead of 100 percent so it would be a little bit dimmer when we hover over the button all right that's uh, and also we didn't install this uh, score we forgot this score so the score has the class of the score so we just say a score we change the color to be green and let's bring it to the right section so we just say text align right instead of center that's okay uh, we don't need to install it more the functionality is more important uh, in the next section we are going to use javascript to dynamically create these questions and also we get the answer from the users we calculate uh, and check if it's correct or wrong and if it's correct we increase the score and also if it's wrong we decrease the score by one point so see you in the next section for the javascript part of our project all right in the last section we have finished styling our project using css in this section, we're going to add functionality to the project using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. So we click, we use Ctrl Shift E to open the Explorer section. And in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.js. Before using JavaScript in our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just at the end of the body tag, we add a script, a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the script with the src. As both files I mean the index.html and index.js are located at the same directory we just need to write index.js for the url now we can use javascript in our project we save the file using ctrl s we close this explorer section and we go to index.js to start adding functionality to our project first we need to create a random number between 1 to 10 uh, to replace this one by these numbers to create a random number we can use random function uh, from the math 
properly. So we just need to create a constant and we call it just num1 and we create the random number using math dot random and we don't forget to add the parentheses because the random is a function if we console log this console log num1 and we open the console using open dev tools pane we go to the console section we see we got a number between 0 and 1 and if we refresh the page we get a different uh, a random numbers just ignore this uh, uh, error because uh, this is in the internal browser of the uh, Visual Studio Code doesn't support the autofocus that we added to the input but uh, it's fine in the other browsers so just ignore this error in order to create the random number between 0 and 10 we just need to multiply this to 10 now we are getting for example, 894, 8.59, uh, and 992, or something like that. But we don't want a number with uh, decimals. We just need to, we just want a, a rounded number. So we add math. We just first put this one in the parentheses and we add a another function called math.seal now we get one if you refresh the page we get two one four six three so it's a number between one and ten all right let's use alt c to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code completely and it decreased the size of this a little bit more yeah that was for the that was it for the num num1 let's create another number we just say num2 will be the same things we just need to copy this because we are creating another number between 1 and 10 so now we just need to change this one by the number one and the second one with the number two. So in order to manipulate this header, we need to bring it first to the JavaScript and return it here. As the h1 tag has an ID of question, we can return it using get element by ID method. So we create the a, con a constant we call it question element and we use document dot get element by id method to to get that element and the id was question now we are getting the question element now we can manipulate it using dot inner uh, inner HTML or inner text actually because it's just a text we just say inner text and as soon as we add the back text we remove it and whatever we write down here we see inside the browser so we just want to say what is one uh, it was one multiplied by one but we want to mu multiply number one with number two so we just say number one because the number one is a variable we need to add a dollar sign and open a, a set of curly braces and inside this we just write number one and we want to multiply this multiply by number two so we add another 
dollar sign and set up curly braces and we just write num2. Now, if we refresh the page each time, let's add the question mark to. Now, it's, if we refresh the page each time, we get a different question by different numbers. So we refresh it, we see what is 2 multiplied by 6, 3 by 9, 5 by 2, or 1 by 1. Yeah. So the question is created, but we need the answer as well to compare it with the answer that the user enters. So we, the correct answer, we just say the correct answer. So, sorry, we create a constant, we call it a correct answer. And we just say num1 multiplied by num2 would be the correct answer because this is the real mathematics. And uh, now we need to get the answer from the user. So we add a form here. So we need to add a add event listener method to the form and track the submission of the form and get the data from the input. First, we bring the form. Form has the ID of form. So here we add, we can add it at the top. So we just say a constant form element and we equal it to document dot get element by ID and the ID is form. And here we add a add event listener to the form and the event that we want to handle is submit. So anytime the user submit the form, we activate a, f a f callback function, which is here. So each time uh, someone submit the form, we want to get the information. So the information we want to get is the whatever inside the input. And we can get this one by just bringing the input element first, the input element here has the ID of input. So we bring it here. We just say const input element and we equal it to document dot get element by ID and the ID is input. So we can get the information inside the input by just adding the Dot, uh, dot value method. So we save it to a constant and we call it user answer. The user answer would be equal to input element dot value. But the value we are getting is actually a, a string. It's not a number. Uh, we can test it here. We just say a log. Let's log the user answer and also the type of user answer. We just say type of user answer. Let's open the console again. So when we submit a number, a random number we submit it we can see the number is here and the type of this user answer is a string in order to convert this string to number we just need to add a plus at the beginning of this string now we if we write down a number and we submit it we get the number and the type is number as well so now we can compare this user answer with the correct answer which we are we are getting from the question. So we delete the console and we we compare the both of them the user 
answer and we say if the user answer is equal to correct answer then we want to increase the score let's first uh, set the score to be zero for example just here we just create a variable call it a score and we set it to be zero at the beginning and here we just say if the answer was correct we increase the score by one and otherwise we decrease the score let's uh, console log the uh, score and see the change we console log it in the both sides and we open this first the score is zero if we answer the question correctly the, the, the score would be one and if we answer the question wrong the score would be minus one so we just and first we answer it correctly we just say 35 we press enter now we get one for the score this one is a 21 the, the correct answer is 21 but we just say four and we enter now we get minus one for the score the reason we are not getting zero because the the first it was one and then we decrease it by one we didn't get zero because we are not uh, uh, storing the score because each time we submit a number the page would be refreshed and we uh, we get this uh, javascript from beginning and the score would be set again to zero in order to prevent this we can uh, we can store the score inside the local storage of the browser so we create a function here and we call it local storage or we just call it update update local storage and we just save the score uh, variable inside the local storage. We can use set item method to uh, store an item. This the item we want to store, and we we want to call it a score. And we cannot save the score directly to the local storage because the score is a number. We have to convert the score to a to a string otherwise the browser doesn't allow us to do it this is for the security of the browser doesn't allow you uh, to uh, store anything except uh, an a string so in order to convert this number to a string we can use json dot stringify method and we just say a score and we get the variable from here so each time we uh, we need to update the local storage and we call this function here instead of the log we just call the local storage uh, function all right so now we open the local storage using open devtools pane and we go to the application and here inside the local storage we go to our website which is this url we see from here now we don't have anything in the storage but let's answer one question we just uh, answer it correctly use three multiplied by one is three so we submit it now we have a variable inside the uh, local storage which is a score and it's one the value is one 
Now, if we answer another question correctly, we don't get the value 2 because the reason is that we always set the score to 0 at the beginning and then we even we increase it by 1, we always uh, update the local storage and the score will be always 1. In order to prevent this, we need to first get the score value from the local storage and set it to the variable score at the beginning. So here at the top, we need to, uh, instead of setting the score to zero, we just say uh, local storage dot instead of set item, we need to use get item. And the item we want to get is a score. But still, this local search that get item is a string now, and in order to have it as a number, uh, as as a number for a score, we need to uh, JSON dot parse it instead of JSON dot stringify, and then we can have the correct value. Now, if we answer the question, another question correctly, we just say 36, the value inside the local storage would be two. So it's updating and let's answer another one correctly. And now if we even answer one question wrong, we decrease the value. So now it's, uh, this one is 30, the correct answer. We just answer, for example, two. Now the value is two. All right. Uh, in order to prevent a, a situation when the, there is no score in the local storage, in order to don't get any error, we need to just say if the score is not existed, we just say add a uh, not sign at the beginning, if there is no score, just uh, set the score to be zero. All right. Now we are saving our uh, scores inside the local storage, but we haven't updated this section yet uh, in the browser. So in order to get this uh, score, we need to bring it uh, from the HTML. The ID we used for this part is this one. This, uh, the ID is a score. So we just bring it inside the JavaScript using the get element by ID method. Here, we just say const a score element document dot get element by id and the id is a score now we have the score element we, after updating the score and getting it from the local storage we can update the score element and we change the inner text to be now we remove it completely. We just say store, uh, sorry, a score equal to a variable. And uh, in order to have a variable, we add a dollar sign and a set of curly braces. And the variable is a score, which we are getting from here or here. So now the score is two. We, we can answer one question correctly. So it becomes three, this is 12, this one is 63. So each time we are answering a correct, uh, we are answering a correct one, we get an increase in the score. And if each time we answer it wrongly, we get a decrease in the score. For example, this one is 10, we just write, 53 and the score would be 4. 
let's try this in the browser as well so we so let's go to the browser as you can see now the score is zero here because this browser is different from the browser of the uh, visual studio code and this is a chrome browser so the local storage is empty so the score is zero let's answer some questions uh, we just say nine and press enter and we get the score one and also we as you may notice each time we answer the autofocus comes to the input section so we can answer the next question very fast let's uh, make a mistake and we just say two so we decrease the point in the uh, score section that was it for our projects uh, I hope you enjoyed and may learn many things. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a button ripple effect. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a button and if we hover over the button from any direction, we see a ripple that starts from that position. For example, if we go from this side, we can see that the ripple starts from that side. We are going to use a JavaScript to get the position of the mouse when we enter from any direction of the button. And also we are going to use CSS to create such a beautiful uh, uh, rippling effect. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here we click on the desktop, and here we click on the New Folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder uh, button ripple effect, which is the name of our project. We press enter and here we click on the select folder to select the folder. We close the Get Started tab again, and here on the left in the Explorer section, we create an HTML file. We right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.html and we press enter. Now on the right side, we have our index.html file, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation mark and here we click on the first auto suggestion. Now we have our HTML5 boilerplate and here the first line is doc type which tells the browser which version of HTML the page is written in and in our case, we write only HTML because we are using HTML5. Then we have HTML tag, which is the top level element of the HTML file. And in, it includes the head tag and the body tag. The lang attribute inside the HTML opening tag sets the language of the page. And in our case, we set the language to be English. Then we have the head tag, which includes 
the meta tags and the title tag. The chart set attribute inside the first meta tag defines the HTML character encoding and in our case we set it to be UTF-8 which is recommended by HTML5 because it contains nearly all the characters and symbols. Then we have this meta tag which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge. The viewport meta tag tells the browser on how to resize the page. And these two sections uh, inside the content attribute, first, the, firstly, they set the page's width to devices' screen's width. For example, the mobile screen will be smaller than the computer screen. Uh, then the second part sets the initial zoom level of the browser, which is in our case is 100%. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes clearly. And after these meta tags, we have the title tag here, which sets the title of the browser. In order to see the browser, Inside the Visual Studio Code, we can right click and we click on Live Preview, Show Preview, which uh, enables us to see our website in real time when we are changing our code. Now on the right side, we see our uh, website, which has the title document. Let's change the title to our page's name, which is button ripple effect. And let's close this explorer section to have more space on the right side. And in the body section, we just have a button to, to be in, in the middle of the screen later and we can add the ripple effect using JavaScript and CSS to this button. Uh, we use an anchor tag for this button and the class we want to add is btn and the href would be an hash, a hashtag which uh, means that we're not going to anywhere by clicking on the button and we have a span in the middle and we just write button. The reason we are adding a span is because we want to later add effect on the button and in order to see the, the, the text inside the button when we are hovering over the button and we are adding the effect we want to uh, uh, bring up this spam using Z index. Later, we're going to see it and you're going to understand it clearly. But for now, we just uh, write it like this. And in the next section, we're going to use CSS to style this button and bring it to the center and add the hovering effect and also the ripple effect. So see in the next section for the CSS part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to style our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. We just open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Before using CSS in our project, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. 
So we go back to the index.html and just after the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet, which is the style.css. The href attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and the style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have a style.css for the URL. And uh, now we can use JavaScript, uh, we can use CSS in our project. We just close the Explorer section on the left side by dragging this bar to the left and we save this file using Ctrl S and we go to style.css and we start with the body section of our project. We just write body, we open a set of curly braces. First, we remove the margin, the default margin around the uh, body of the body element using margin zero. Then we wanna bring this button to the center. First, we bring it to the center horizontally using display flex and justify content center. Then for bring it, bring it to the center vertically, we can use, we can set the height to be 100% of the viewport height, which means all the uh, screen size from top to bottom. Then we can use align item center to bring it to the center vertically. Let's uh, add a background color. We just say background color and we set it to uh, Alice blue or Alice blue. which is a creamy color. Then we change the font of this button using font family and we set it to be sans serif. After body section, let's start styling the button. The button had the class of btn, so we just need to target this class using dot btn we just change the background color first to see it properly we just set it to be pink we change the padding we add some padding to the top and bottom 20 pixels and left and right 40 pixels so we have a very big Button so we can see the ripples later easily. Let's change the border. We add uh, make the border rounded using border radius and we set it to be five pixels. And uh, let's add some box shadow to the button, the first value in the box shadow is the position of the horizontal shadow. We set it to be zero. The next one is the position of the vertical shadow. We set it to be four pixels. We can see it at the bottom. Then we add the blur radius using, uh, we set it to be eight pixels. The, the shadow the color of the shadow is blue. We want it to be black. Uh, we can use RGBA function to set the color. We use zero for red, zero for green, and zero for blue for the red color. And we just set the 0.3 for the alpha value, which means 30% transparency or opacity. Now we have a beautiful button. 
here, let's remove this line under the button text using text decoration none. And let's change the color of the text to black. Then uh, that's fine for the button for now. And the next things is to add the a hover effect and add something inside that has a ripple effect. So in order to add this, we can use the before pseudo element to add this content. This, we have to set the content to empty first for the before and after pseudo elements. And then we need to position this absolute we want to position it absolute so in order to have this one absolute we need to use its parents to be uh, relative so we position this relative and we cannot see it yet let's add some color to it which we set the color to orange red but still we cannot see it. We add the width to, for example, 20 pixels and height to 20 pixels as well. So we can see this one here. And uh, we want to bring it to the center. So we set the left to 50% and top to 50% as well. And in order to bring it exactly to the center, we can use, uh, I mean exactly, but because we are we brought the edge of the this uh, element to the center, not the middle of it. So we can use transform translate and we set the X and Y to minus 50%. So it, it came to the center exactly. Let's add some border radius. Let's set it to be 50%. So it, be, it becomes uh, like, a, like a circle. And... Uh, That's, that's fine for it. And we want, when we hover over the button, this circle, uh, the size of this circle increases. So in order to target the hovering effect, we can just say BTN hover. So when someone hovered over the, the, bit, the button and we want to target this before pseudo elements and we set the width to be for example 300 pixels and height to 300 pixels as well so when we hover over them we can see a big circle but uh, it's bigger than the button so we can use here uh, overflow hidden for a button to remove the extra hovering so we just say overflow heading so now we getting this one and in order to see that uh, ripple effect we can use a transition to make it a little bit more smooth and the transition should be on both width and height so for the width we add 0.5 second and for the height so we add a comma here for height we add 0.5 second as well so now when we hover over the button we can see this hovering effect 
So let's remove this width and height. So we set it to zero, so we don't see it. But anywhere we enter the button, we see this uh, hovering effect from the center because we set the left and top to be in the center. Uh, later using JavaScript, we're going to target the mouse uh, position and we center this circle from the position of the mouse. Let's bring this button to the top. As you remember, we add a span for the button text. So we can target this here. We just say btn and we, we target that span and we change the z index to the one. But before doing that, we need to change the position to relative and we change the z index to one. The, the normal default z index is zero but when you set it to one, it comes over all the elements. So now we see the button over everything else. That was it for the CSS part of the project. In the next section, we're going to add the functionality to our projects using JavaScript and we are going to uh, start this rippling effect exactly from the uh, the place that the mouse enter into the button. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. In this section, we are going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. We just need to first open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index js and we press enter now we have our index.js here but before using the javascript in our project we must add a link to this index.js file within the html code so we switch to index.html and just at the end of the body section we add a script tag we just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. The SRC attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files are located at the same directory, we just need to write the index.js for the URL. Now we can use the JavaScript in our project. Let's close this Explorer section first. And then the only things we need here is this button element. We need to return it inside the uh, JavaScript and the, the button has the class of BTN. So in order to return a, an element with a class, we just need to use query selector method. So we just write here BTN element equal to document dot query selector and the element we want to return is button so we just write dot btn here and we need to add a add event listener method to this button to track the uh, mouse event when we moving the mouse inside the button. So we just say btn element that add event listener and the event we want to listen is mouse over 
And when the mouse over happens, we want to trigger a function. And here inside this parenthesis, we can get the event, which is the position of, we can get the position of X, Y, and anything inside uh, related to this mouse, mouse over event. Let's console log the event dot page x. So when we open the console log, when we go inside this button, we can see a number inside the console. When we move it, we can see different numbers. In the left, we have a smaller, in the right, we have a bigger numbers. But this X is from this point to here. All right. And we have also the Y. We can get the Y as well. So this is the position from the top to this place. But in order to get the position exactly in the inside the button, for example, here will be zero and increases until here for the x and from the top to bottom we we need to subtract this amount from the position of the button from the top so in order to get this one we can use btn element dot for the y for example we can use offset top now, when we go here, we can get the position from the top of the button. As you can see, it starts from zero to goes to the bottom here. So here at the top, it's uh, almost zero. It shows minus one. And from the bottom is like a 57. For the x, we need to subtract this number from the offset left instead of offset uh, top. So here should be 1 or uh, near, near 1. So you see minus 1. And uh, this way would be 125. So in this case, we can set this value here, uh, left and top, instead of center, we just get this point, any point that the mouse is entering. But uh, unfortunately, you cannot have access to the before pseudo class pseudo elements inside javascript because the before and after pseudo elements are not part of the dom but the the things we can do is to is just add a variable here and we change the variable inside the javascript so here inside this before element we just uh, add a variable and we, we, we call it for example x position and for the top one we just say for example y position and we can change this variable inside this inside javascript using set property method so here, uh, first, uh, let's uh, save these numbers. For example, we save this one. We call it x. And we, we copy this. We change this y to this one y. And uh, we change the variable that we have 
create it here in this way we just write down that style because we want to change the style and we change the set property and the property we want to change is expositions inside a double code we just write down x position and we set this to be equal to this x plus pixels because this is just a number we, we wanted this uh, left and top uh, our base of pixel or percentage so we do the same things for the y as well so we just add the use the style and set property and this one is y position and the value is we are getting from here y plus pixels so now if we enter from any size of the button we can see the ripples it starts from that point so the the center of the uh, the the circle starts from here and increases its size from top this way that way anywhere yeah let's check this inside the browser as well so we open this inside the browser you can see it here All right, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. That was a kind of a cool button that you can use for your own website. So see you on the next project. Welcome to another project. In this project, we are going to create a real-time character counter. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a container here with a text area and we have the total characters, which is zero now and the remaining 50. As we start writing, you can see that the total characters is increasing and also the remaining is decreasing and when we reach to the 50 characters we can see that we cannot add more uh, text inside this text area it doesn't allow me to write any more text and also the remaining is set to be zero In this project, we're going to use JavaScript to uh, calculate the number of texts inside this text area in real time and also dynamically change the total characters and remaining using JavaScript. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML parts of the project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here we click on the Desktop. In, we click on the new folder button to create a new folder and we name the file real-time character counter
real time character counter is the name of our project we enter to save the name and we click on the select folder button to select the folder we close the get started tab again and on the left side in the explorer section we right click and we click on the new file to create an html file we name the file index.html now on the right side we have our html file which is completely empty but we can use an exclamation point to create an html5 boilerplate we just write an exclamation point and we can press tab or we click on the first auto suggestion to have our html5 boilerplate in the html5 boilerplate we have doc type which tells the browser which version of html the page is written in and in our case as we are using html5 we just need to have html in the opening tag then we have the HTML tag, which is the top level element inside the HTML file. And the head and the body tags are inside the HTML tag. Then we have the length attribute inside the opening HTML tag, which sets the language of the page. And we set it to be English by just writing en here and then we have the head tag which includes the three meta tags and a title tag the character attribute inside the first metadata tag defines the html character encoding and it's set to be UTF-8 which is recommended by HTML5 because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols then we have the compatibility meta tag which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge the viewport meta tag uh, sets the initial zoom level and the pages width by uh, these settings the first one is the sets the pages width to devices screens width for example if the page is small like a mobile screen the pages width will be smaller than a, a bigger screens like desktop computers then we have the initial zoom level of the page which is 100% as default. Let's use Alt C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes. Then we have the title tag which sets the title of the page. We can see the browser inside the Visual Studio code in real time using live preview extension. And we just need to right click and we click on live preview show preview but we will have to install live preview extension previously so we click on this section now we have our browser on the right side which is completely empty but with the title document let's close the explorer section to have more space on the right side and let's change the title of the page to the name of the page which is real time character counter so we just say real time character counter then in the body section we have a container that is the main container and the box that we're gonna have our counter so we call it just container 
it's a div with a class of container. And inside this div, we have an H, we have an H2 tag. Just the name of our project, which is Leo time. Character counter after the h2 tag we have a text area so we can write our text here so add a text area tag the text area mm, we just remove the name we don't need it we just add an id of text area and also we add a class of text area we don't need columns and all rows we're gonna uh, style it later using css and also we have a placeholder saying please write your text here we can write our text here and then we want to limit the number of characters that we're going to write here um, to, for example, 50 characters. We just need to use max length, for example, 50. You, you can change this one according to your uh, website or project later. So if you write something, as soon as we get to the 50 characters, we cannot write anymore. It's, it's gonna limit us. Now I, I'm typing, but we cannot see anything adding inside the text area. After this, we have the counter area. We, we have the total counter and also the remaining. So we create a div here with a class of counter container. And inside this div, we have a paragraph saying inside total characters. And inside we have a span because we want to change this section using JavaScript later dynamically when we are typing. So this is spam has a class of total counter and uh, and also an ID of total counter so we can easily get them inside the JavaScript. Just for now, we, we just write a number inside the span. We just say, for example, uh, 30 or something. And then uh, we're going, going to change this number dynamically using JavaScript. Let's uh, copy this using Alt Shift arrow down. And we change this total characters to remaining. And also here, the, these two totals, we just change it to remaining. and just change this number to, for example, 20. 
Also, later we're going to use JavaScript to dynamically calculate the remaining and also the total characters. In the next section, we're going to start styling our project using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So here we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Now we have our style.css file which is completely empty, but we can't use it yet because we must add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html and just after the title tag and at the end of the head tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet. The href attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and the style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have a style.css for the URL. Now we save the file using Ctrl S, we close the Explorer section and we start a styling from the body tag. So we go to style CSS and we add body here. We open a set of curly braces. First, we remove the space around the body element using margin zero. Then we bring these items to the center horizontally using display flex and justify content center. Next, we bring them to the center uh, vertically using a height 100% of the viewport height it means that the height of the body is similar to the height of the screen. Then we can use align item center to bring everything to the center vertically. Let's change the background color of the body and we set it to be, for example, salmon color. And then we change the font of the project using font family property and we set it to be cursive. It's just my preference. You can use any font family you like for your own project. The next things we, we want to style is this container that covers everything this div with a class of container as it is a class, we, we have to use dots at the beginning of the name of the class as the CSS selector. We change the background color to light pink. We, we can use Alt-C 
to turn on the world wrap so we can see all the codes clearly. Then let's change the width to be 400 pixels. Then we add some padding to push everything to the inside. And we set the padding to be, for example, 20 pixels. Let's bring, uh, let's use display flex to be able, actually we don't need display flex. Uh, let's add some margin. So when we decrease the size, we wanna add, I wanna add some space around the element. So we just say margin five pixels. And let's add some borders around the container using border radius. And we set it to be, for example, 10 pixels. And let's add some box shadow so we can see this container more clear. So we use box shadow property. The first value inside the box shadow property is the position of the horizontal shadow and we set it to be zero. The next value is the position of the vertical shadow and we use four pixels for it. You can see it here. Then we have the border radius, which is eight pixels. Sorry, not border radius. The uh, below radius, yeah, below radius to be eight pixels. And then the color is black is fine, but I want to add some transparency to this color. So we use RGBA function to set the color. RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. We set zero for red, zero for green, and zero for blue, which gives us the black color. Then we use 0.3 for the alpha value, which means 30% transparency, or you can say opacity. All right, now we have a beautiful box shadow. Let's uh, size this. Uh, text area, a uh, style it. So the text area has the class of text area as well. So we can target it using dot text area selector. We open a set of curly braces. First, we prevent the resizing. Now we can use uh, our air, our mouse to resize the yeah, text area, but we can just set it to be none. So now we cannot resize it, but we size it ourselves. We set it to be 100% the width. Then we have the height to be, for example, 100 pixels. Let's, let's increase the size of the text using font size, for example, 18 pixels. We can change the font of this text using font family and we set it to be sans serif as an example. Let's push this text a little bit inside using padding. So we just say padding 10 pixels. As you can see, the paddings affected the size of the text area. In order to prevent this one, we can use a box sizing, border box, uh, which removes the padding and 
uh, borders when we are sizing a text area or input inside CSS. All right, let's add some border. So we, add, we set the border to be solid, two pixels width, and change the color to dark gray. Yeah, everything looks fine now. Let's uh, install this part, the counter section. We set the div that cover the, this area, counter container. So we target that using dot counter container. First, we change the display to flex to bring them next to each other. But I want this part to be in the left side and this part on the right side. So we can use justify content, a space between to achieve this goal. Then uh, we want to change the, like a, we 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 push the button push these texts to the right and this one to the left a little bit we can use a padding we want the padding top and bottom to be zero but left and right just five pixels all right that looks fine now let's uh style this paragraph and these numbers, I want this number to be blue and this one to be red. So first we target the paragraph. This paragraph. So we we target counter, counter container and its paragraph. And we just change the font size to be 18 pixels. And we change the color to be gray. Let's target the color of uh, 30 and 20. These, uh, this span has the class, different classes. The first one is total counter. The second one is remaining counter. So we target them here using dot total counter. We set the color to be white, but I want to use the slate white, state blue, sorry, blue, but the state blue. And for this one, I want to use the orange red color. So we target this using remaining counter and we set the color to be orange red uh, that looks uh, okay for now and in the next section, we're going to use JavaScript to dynamically calculate this total character and the remaining character as well. So when we are writing here, this number is going to go up and this one goes down from its target, which is here. The max length, which is 50 for now. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. In this section, we are going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. So we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E and on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. 
rename the file index.js and we press enter. Before using JavaScript in our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html and at the end of the body section, we add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the src. As both files, I mean index.html and index.js are located at the same directory, for the src, we just need to have index.js. Now we can use JavaScript in our project. First, we close the Explorer section on the left side to have more space on the right side. We save this file using Ctrl S and we also save the style.css using Ctrl S and we go to index.js to start adding functionality to our project. The things we want to do is to track the, the text which is being written inside this text area and we count the characters of this text and put it here. And also we get the information from the max length of the text area from here inside the text area tag, we get this max length and minus that one from the total characters. So first we need to get this text area. So the text area has the ID of text area as well. So we can get this element using get element by ID method inside the JavaScript file. We just make a constant here and we call it text area or text area element equal to document dot get element by ID and the ID is text area from here this And then the, the things we want to do is to uh, add an event listener to this text area element and we track the writing inside this section. First, we use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes on the left side. We close this a little bit and we add the add event listener method to this element. The add event listener method has two parameters. The first parameter is the event handler. So the event handler we want to use is key up, which, me which means whatever we press here and we remove the key, uh, we trigger this function that we are going to create here. So this function is going to be triggered once this uh, event handler happens. So let's uh, let's console log something. We just say. key is pressed. We open the console section here using open dev tools pane inside the console. Now if you write something inside this text area, we see that the, the console log is showing something. I wrote four characters and we got four key is pressed. All right. 
the things we want to do instead of console logging we want to change the total character here and calculate the amount of character from here so we just create a function we just say uh, update counter and we create the function under this we just say update counter and we need to get the length of this the things we write here and we can do it by just just saying text area element dot value so we get the value and we calculate the length of it so we want to uh, put this one inside this instead of the 30 so we need to get this element as well so the element is here the total characters and the element is this span and the span has the ID of total counter. So we bring this element using get element by ID method. So we just create a constant and we call it total character or total counter element and we equal it to document dot get element by ID and we just write total counter and here we just equal this to total counter element dot inner text and equal it to this so when we write something here for example i'm writing hello We have to get the total characters here, for example, five, but we are getting a wrong one because here, instead of value, we write area value max, which is the problem of the autocorrection. All right. And also we try again. So we are not getting yet. Should be some problem. We check uh total counter and here is to uh, this one is typo uh, total counter let's try again we just write hello now we can see the change inside the total characters which is five and if we keep continue writing we're getting the real time character counter until we get to the point which is 50 which is the max uh, length of the text area next things we want to do is to show the remaining characters when we are writing the, inside the text area the remaining area has the idea of remaining counter so we copy this and we go to the javascript and we write const, we create a constant, we call it remaining counter element, and we call it to document dot get element by ID, and here we paste the ID and we also wanted to get this max length so in order to get that one we need to uh, we just say text area the element dot get attribute and the attribute we want to get is this one max length so inside inside uh, in, inside a double quote we just say max length and uh, we want to equal this to this remaining elements. 
So we copy this, we put it here, and we just say dot inner text equal to this one. Equal to this one. Now, if you start writing, the remaining is 50, but we want to minus this from the total characters, which is this one we are getting here. So minus this. So when we start writing, we see that this one is 3, this one is 47. And if we keep continue, this one goes bigger and this one gets smaller. Until we get to the 50 and the remaining is 0. And the other things I would like to do is when we someone comes to the website, I want to set the total character to 0 and the remaining to 50. So the best thing is just call this function once here. We just say update counter. When we do that one, uh, when someone comes, first the function is triggered and we get the total characters calculated which is 0 and the remaining is 50. So now we can even remove this 30 and 20 from the spans. And also if you want to change the max length you can change it here for example you put it 150. So now the remaining is 150 and you can write 150 characters. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. Uh, see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a sticky navbar. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have an image at the background of our main section. We have a navbar at the top with the logo and the menu. And if you scroll down, we see some uh, like lorem ipsum texts and if we scroll down more, we see that the, our navbar has been changed to black color. And also if we go back again to the top, we see our navbar has been changed to white color again. We are going to use JavaScript to calculate this certain point that the navbar reach and we are going to add and remove some classes to reach different styles for the navbar. So see in the next section for the HTML part of our project. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. Here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. As usual, I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click on the Desktop, and here we click on the New Folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder sticky navbar which is the name of our project we press enter and here we click on the select folder button to select the folder we close the get started tab again and on the left side in the explorer section we right click and we click on new file to create an html file we name the file index.html and we press enter. As you can see, now we have the index.html file on the right side 
which is now completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to have an HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion. Now we have here the uh, complete HTML5 boilerplate, which has doc type, which tells the browser which version of HTML is using. And uh, for HTML5, we just need to write HTML here. And then we have HTML tag, which covers the head and body tags. The lang attribute here inside the HTML opening tag sets the language of the page. In our case, we set the language to be English by just writing EN for short. Then we have the head tag, which has three meta tags and also a title tag. The chart set attribute inside the first meta tag defines the HTML character encoding. UTF-8, which covers nearly all the characters and symbols, is recommended by HTML5 for uh, web developers. Then we have the compatibility meta tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. And finally, we have the viewport meta tag, which tells the browser on how to resize the page. And the way he says how to resize the page is to set the width of the page to the device's screen and also set the initial zoom level to 100%. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes inside this window. Then we have the uh, title tag, which sets the title of the page. We can see the browser inside the Visual Studio code using the live preview extension. Uh, we just need to right click and we click on live preview, show preview. Now we have the browser on the right side, which has the title document. We close this Explorer section to have more space on the right side by just dragging this line to the left. Let's change the title to Sticky Navbar, which is the name of our project. We can see the sticky nav bar here on the title. In the body section, we have three parts for this project. First is the nav bar part. Then we have a image section, which is the top container. And we have the text container, which is the bottom container. So we need three uh, div to divide the, our website to three sections. So the first div is um, just the top one. It's a div with a class of navbar. And it contains the logo and also the uh, navbar menu. For creating the logo, we can use a website uh, for a website called SVG Logo Creator or Generator to create an SVG uh, logo. SVG logos are uh, SEO friendly and it helps usually the website to be ranked better in the search engines. So we go to our browser, the Google Chrome, and we search for SVG logo generator. 
here, if we scroll down a little bit, here we can see a website called svglocomaker.com. We click on this website and we just make the logo. In my case, I just write my name. You can make any logo you, you like. So I just write my name. We force refresh, we see the logo here. The font size is fine, but I want the width to be 200. So we don't waste width after the logo. And also I want the height to be uh, just 40. Yeah, that's... Uh, looks okay and I don't, I don't want to have the frame for my logo so I remove it by just using this frame and set it to be no we change the logo to a color for example red we refresh it and we, we can download the, the logo by clicking on this button we drag this downloaded logo to our folder. I created the project in desktop, so I bring it to the desktop and put it inside the folder sticky navbar. I go inside the folder and I would like to change the name of this SVG logo to just logo. If we go back to the Visual Studio Code and we open the Explorer section, we can see now we have another file called logo.svg. We can have uh, access to that one just uh, making an image tag here. And inside the source, as the both files, I mean the index.html and logo.svg are located at the same directory and or folder, we just need to write here logo.svg. As soon as we write down the URL, we can see that we have our logo on the browser on the right side. We don't need an alternative or we just write logo for alternative. All right, we can close the Explorer section now. We don't need it. So we can have more space. After the image, we have the menu. The menu is just the unordered list tag. And inside the unordered list tag, we have a list. And the first list would be a link. So we, we use an anchor tag to have a link. And the address would be nothing. Just we don't want to go anywhere now for this website. We just add a hashtag. And inside the anchor tag, we just write, for example, home, the first one. Now we can see it here. We just need to copy this uh, two times using... Alt Shift arrow down one two and we just change this home to for example block and these are optional as well you can have anything you like in your computer sorry in your website all right yeah that was for the that was it for the navbar section we go to the top container. So we create a div with the class of top container. And the, the top container is just an image. And uh, we have uh, some uh, like a title in the middle. So we add an h1 tag. We just write welcome to our website. All right. 
So after that, we have the bottom container. So we add a div with a class of bottom container. So this is just, uh, I want to create just a lorem, uh, like a lorem text. So just a junky text. So we just write, we add a, a paragraph with a class of, for example, text. And inside that, we want to add a hundred words of lorem. So we just write lorem. And we add lorem, uh, we add 100 after lorem. If we enter and accept the auto suggestion, we get 100 words of lorem ipsum. All right. So we just make kind of this uh, paragraphs a few times. So we copy this paragraph using Alt Shift arrow down. For example, four times, one, two, three, four. So we have some text here because we want to able to uh, scroll down and see the nav bar changing from, for example, background color white to background color black and vice versa when we're going up. But if we don't have any text, so we are not able to scroll down because the page would be very small. All right, that was it for the HTML part of our project. Uh, see you in the next uh, section for uh, styling our project using CSS. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our projects using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file as style.css and we press enter. But before using the CSS in our project, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html file and just uh, under the title, tag here and just at the end of the head tag we add a link tag so we write link and we click on the third auto suggestion the one with the css now we have a link tag with the relationship between the html file and the external style sheet which is the style.css the href attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have style.css for the URL. So now we can start styling our project using CSS. We just save this file using Ctrl S and we close this Explorer section by dragging this line to have more space on the right side. So we go to the is, uh, to this file, style.css. First, we start from the body section for removing the uh, default margin. Usually we have, uh, I think, around eight pixels default margin around the body element. So we just remove it using margin zero. And now we can style our project easier. So first we start with the uh, top container section. We add the 
background image. So after that, we can easier uh, install the nav bar section because the nav bar is going to be on the top of the top container section. So in the index.html, first we had a div with a class of top container, which contains this uh, h1 tag, which is saying welcome to our website, as you can see here. So we, we target this div and we return it to the, and we, ch we choose it, we select it inside the CSS because uh, using dot top container because it has class. So here at the, just the bottom of the body section, we just write dot top container and we just add a background image. We use URL function to add the background image. The image we want to choose, uh, we can choose it from the Unsplash website. So we go to the browser, we open a new tab, and we search for Unsplash. The first result is Unsplash.com. So we click on this link and here we search for, for example, I want to add a computer behind this container. We search for computers. So the first uh, images is just a premium. You, you need to pay, but if you scroll down more, we see that we, we have the result for the free images but still you have the we can see that a sponsored one these are uh, not free so we go down a little bit the i would like to choose this image for the website so we click on this and we right click and we click on the copy image address to get the URL. We go back to, to the Visual Studio code and inside the URL, we add a set of double quotes and inside the double quote, we paste the link using Ctrl V. Now we can see the image, but as we don't have uh, enough height for the, this section, we cannot see it properly. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes. So after that, we set the height to be 100% of the viewport height, which means it's the size would be exactly the size of the uh, screen size. So in any zoom levels, this image would be the same size of the all the screen. We can check it inside the browser as well. We can open it inside the browser using this hamburger icon and open in browser. As you can see, the image is exactly with the size of the screen. We can change the zoom level. We can see still the image looks like this, but it's repetitive. We can remove this one and make the image as large as possible to fill the container using background size cover. Now, if you come back to the browser, we can see the image is bigger and it covers everything. As you can see by changing the zoom level, we still have the same amount of image for the height. So we remove this part. Yeah. Now let's install this H1 to, or before doing that H1, we, we need to bring this H1 to the center. So here we just 
change the display to flex to be able to bring this one to the center horizontally using justify content center and then we use align item center to bring the uh, h1 tag to the center vertically here we cannot see it properly because the color and the size so we target the h1 tag using top container h1 first we change the color so we can see it better so we just change it to white we increase the size of the text using font size property and we set it to be 50 pixels and also i want this text to be exactly in the middle so we can bring it in. Uh, we can bring the inline content using text align center. All right. Let's change the font of this text using font family. I would like to choose impact. And let's add some space between the. Uh, characters of the world using letter spacing for example we set it to be two pixels all right looks good now we can start uh, styling our navbar but i would like to install this text as well so we finish with the website and then we go to the navbar section so the text these texts are uh, located inside the bottom container and uh, also it has the class of text as well so we can target this class so we just say dot text we add some margin, we just say margin top and bottom, 50 pixels, and we have left and right, just we say 5%. So now we have this one, and uh, I think it's fine, we just change the font family to be sans serif all right that's that's enough uh, because uh, it's not very important we the, in this project our focus is the nav bar and how to make it sticky and how to change it when we reach to the to a certain point all right so we, let's install this nav bar so we target the navbar by choosing its class navbar here. So we just write dot navbar. And we just change the background color. No, sorry, we just uh, change the display to uh, flex to bring them next to each other but uh, we want this actually be in the top of this images image and uh, to be like a uh, with a different position we just say position fixed so when we change the position to fix we see the navbar on the top of the image So now we just need to change the height. Uh, we change first. We change the background color to be white, and so now we know exactly where the uh, navbar is. So we we'll, we set the width to be hundred percent. And 
we change the justify content to space between. So we bring the logo this way and the other menu to the right side. And let's uh, install this menu first. So we bring them next to each other. So we just say in that nav bar ul we target this uh, ul inside the div we just change the display to flex and uh, we remove these dots using a list a style type none and uh, next we need to target the li so we can change the color and also remove these text decorations so after this as you can see from the index.html we had the div with the class of navbar and then we had ul and after that we have li and inside the li we have a which is the anchor tag so we want to target this a to fix everything so you just say navbar ul li and then we have a so we don't want the text decoration so the underline we set it to be none. As you can see, now we don't have any underline. Then we, we, we add some margin. We say top and bottom to be zero and left and right to be 10 pixels. Let's change the color to be black. and change the font family to be cursive. Let's bring this logo to the center using, in the nav bar, we just, we can use align item center to bring everything to the center. Uh, that looks fine now. All right, let's add some hover effect using hover CSS pseudo class. So when uh, we change the color of the text when we hover over them. So we need to just target the same things, nav bar, ul, li, and a, but the hover pseudo class. And we just say change the color to be red when we hover over them. That looks fine. Also, we want the this logo to be clickable. So when we click on this logo, we go to the home page, but we didn't do it from the beginning. So here we add a anchor tag, which goes to the index.html, which is the home page. And we just cut this image and we bring it inside this. Now, if we click on this logo, we go to the home page. All right. I think uh, if you check this website and change the zoom level, I think it's fine for now. Uh, we can add some box shadow. at the bottom so we can have it more beautiful when it's white. So for the nav bar, we add a box shadow. The first value inside the box shadow is the position of the horizontal shadow. We set it to be, for example, uh, zero. And then we have the vertical shadow, which is the bottom of the element. We just say, four pixels and then for the blur 
radius, we just say 8 pixel. And for the color, we, we use RGBA function. And we set 0 for red, green, and blue, which gives us the black color. And also, we set 0.3 for alpha, which gives us the 30% th trans transparency or opacity. So when we go down, we can now see the box shadow at the bottom. All right. The things we want to do in the next section. So when we pass this image, as soon as we go to the bottom section, we want to change the color of the nav bar to black and change the text to white. Uh, the, the things we want to do is just to add a class to the nav bar here. We add a class of active. We test it now. And then we we change the style of this nav bar when the active class is added differently. So we just say, for example, nav bar when it has it it has the class of active, just change the background color, for example, to black. As you can see now. And uh, we want the color of the li, sorry, the ul, li, and a, which is here, ul, li, and a. We want the color of the text of the menu to be white. Now we can see them. So when we have this active, we have uh, the black nav bar, but if we don't have it by removing it, we have a white background, white uh, nav bar. In the next section, we're going to use JavaScript to actually uh, add and remove this nav bar when we reach to a certain point, which is exactly this line between the the up, uh, top container and bottom container. So see in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. In this section, we're going to use JavaScript to add functionality to our project. We're, we have a class now, the active class. When we add the active class, our navbar uh, turns to black. And when we remove it, it it uh, returns to its original color, which is white. By using JavaScript, we're going to calculate the this point when the top container and the bottom container meet each other. So first we create a JavaScript file. We open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E and on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.js. We drag it to that side. Before using JavaScript in our project, we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just at the end of this file and uh, at the end of the body tag, we add a script tag. We just write SC and we select the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. As both files, index.html and index.js are located at the same directory, 
we just need to write index.js for the URL of the script tag. So now we can close the Explorer section by dragging the line to the left. And uh, we go to index.js to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we, we need to return this navbar element to the inside the JavaScript using query selector method. As where the navbar has a uh, the navbar section has a class of navbar, we can return this div with the, uh, using its CSS selector and query selector method. We just need to make a constant and we call it navbar element equal to document dot query selector. And inside a set of parentheses, we need to specify the selector of the navbar, which is dot navbar because it's a it's a class. So we just write dot navbar. We use Alt C to turn on the vote wrap so we can see the code clearly on the left side. So now we have the navbar. We can. Uh, we can actually see it with console log navbar element. We can uh, open the exp uh, the dev pulse pane, uh, pane using this hamburger icon, and we can see the console here. Now we return the, the element navbar. So first we need to add an event listener to the window so we can target when we are scrolling in the in the website. So we just say windows.add event listener and the event we want to listen is a scroll, sorry, scroll. So when this happens, we want to trigger a function here. So we just console log here. We can see that it's working or not. We just say a scrolled. So now if we scroll, we see that we are getting this message. We delete it and we, we get it again. That's working. So how we know that, actually how do we know that we when we are going down, we reach the, this point. First we need to target the scroll amount. So we can console log something called window dot scroll y so it shows uh, what's the number of the y amount when we are scrolling sorry we scroll y we scroll y yeah so at the beginning the amount is zero as you can see at the bottom but when we are going down uh, slowly this number increase and this number is based on pixel actually. So we are here in the 50 pixels and if we go down, we reach to this point, we see now it's 272 pixels. As we go to the end of the website, we get the 1000 Five hundred and sixty, and this number is be, is different when we have a different zoom level in our website. We can check this in our browser. We can open the web developer tools using Ctrl Shift C. Here we should click first, and in the console, 
when we are scrolling, we see the number is changing from zero and at the end we have 1380. If we change the zoom level of our browser, for example, we put it to 200%, when we go down, we get more number, so right, a bigger number, 2500. So depend, depending on the zoom level, we get a different number for the pixels and also the scroll ball wide. Uh, amount. So we are getting this one and also we want to get the the position of this section, the bottom section. So first we need to bring this bottom container. So we just say here bottom container element we set it to be uh, equal to document dot query selector and because it's a class we just need to add dot here and we just say bottom container so for the bottom uh, let's console log it first with console log bottom container element so it's a uh, we are returning the dev if we get its uh, uh, offset top we can see that we are getting uh, let's remove this console log so we focus on this we are getting 378 for this number but this number actually it's here after the margin and also when this place goes to this part to the very top part not here because this sticky bar is on the top of the website not it's not separated so we need to divide this num uh, number uh, to the height of the nav bar and also this margin. So we have to say here inside this function, so if a window dot scroll y, which we got before, is greater than this number which is 375 minus the height of the uh, nav bar how we get the height of the nav bar we we can use just first uh, console log and, and we can see if we log the nav bar element dot dot offset height so we are getting an error because we didn't finish this part yet so we delete it for now so we are getting 54 pixels for the height of the nav bar and also the position of this is 374 so here we just control Z, we get this if again, and we just say if the window dot scroll Y is bigger than bottom container element dot offset hot, offset top minus this one, nav bar element dot offset height, and also we have some margin here. If you go to the solid CSS, we added uh, uh, in the in the bottom section, no, in the paragraph text, 
in the text section we added 50 pixels for uh, top and bottom of the text so we need to add this 50 as well so here we just say minus 50 so if this one happens we want to add the that class let's close this one we want to add the class to the navbar we just say navbar element dot class list dot add the class we want to add is active let's test it so when we go down and we reach to this point this one should work yeah but when we go back we want this to be white again so we add an else here so we just say nav bar element dot classless dot remove and we just remove the active class so now when we are going down we reach to this point we re we change to black when we're going up we get we change to white let's add some transition to the nav bar so we can see this changing a little bit more smooth so we just say transition on background color only for example four point sorry point four seconds so when we are going down we see a change but with the transition so let me explain this one again i feel that it's very confusing so we calculate the scroll y so here in this point the scroll y Windows scroll dot scroll y is zero and here is in its maximum depending on the zoom level so we say if this one is greater than this this point when it, it goes it goes to the uh, top so when this one goes to the top i mean uh when this one goes to the top, which actually this one is here, under that one. I mean this point, when it goes to the top. This number, the bottom container that offset top, actually gives us this number when it's in the top. But we want this line when it reaches to this, uh, this point. So we have to minus this amount which is here at the top minus the height of the nav bar and also uh, the margin from this point to this point which is 50 pixels so when we calculate this one we when we reach exactly to this point and reaching this to this we activate this f in this one becomes true and then we add the active class and also in any other situation we, we remove the class which when it's less than this amount we are in the top that was it for our project i hope you enjoyed and learned many things if it was confusing for you please ask any questions you have in the quick q and a section so see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a random color generator. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have different colors in the website with different uh, color code and if you refresh the page, each time we, we get different colors with different color codes. We are going to create these uh, color codes using JavaScript and we, we are going to create them randomly each time for 30 uh, color container. The website also is responsive. If we decrease the size of the website, we can see 
in the bigger screen we have four columns and then we have three two and one columns when we are decreasing the size of this screen so see in the next section for the HTML part of our project. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open folder. I would like to create the project as usual in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here we click on the desktop, and here on the, we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder random color generator. which is the name of our project. We press enter and we choose the folder that we have created and we click on the select folder. Here we close the get started tab again and here on the left side in the explorer section, we need to create an HTML file. We just need to right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.html and we press enter. Now on the right side, we have our index.html file, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate. So we just need to write an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion. As you can see, now we have our HTML5 boilerplate, which includes doc type, which tells the browser which version of HTML the page is written in. And in our case, which we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which is the top level element in the HTML file, which includes the head and the body tags. The lang attribute inside the opening HTML tag sets the language of the page. And as we are uh, writing the, our project in English, we set the language to be English by just writing en. Then we have the head tag, which includes three metadata tags and also one title tag. The chart set attribute inside the first metadata tag defines the HTML character encoding and UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 for web developers because it nearly contains all the characters or symbols. So the users can easily see our project and they won't have any problem seeing the characters and symbols of the page. Then we have the compatibility meta tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. The viewport meta tag uh, tells the browser on how to resize the page based on the here devices screens width. So hit this attribute, the content attribute sets the width of the page to the devices screens width. For example, the mobile screen will be smaller than the computer screen, the width of the mobile screen. Let's use Alt C to turn on the world wrap to see the next part, which is the setting the initial zoom level of the page. And it, the default value is 100%. Then we have the title uh, tag, which sets the title of the page. 
We can see the browser here inside the Visual Studio Code using the Live Preview extension. We just need to right click here and we click on Live Preview Show Preview. Now we can see the browser on the right side, which is completely empty, but with the title document. Let's close the Explorer section to have more space on the right side. And let's change the title of our website to the name of our website, which is Random Color Generator. We can see the random color generator inside the tab of the browser. Then we start our HTML coding inside the body tag. First, we add a header by using a H1 tag. And this would be the name of our project. We just write random color generator. We can see here. Then we have a div with a class of container to include all the colors that we're going to create later using JavaScript. And inside this container, we have the color container that is just a box that has a color and the title in the middle. So we have a div with a class of color container. And inside this div, we have just a color code. We just add a random color code. It should be six characters, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. So we just uh, copy this few times, for example, six times, because we're, we're going to use this data to next in the next video, we're going to style the project using this uh, information and uh, divs with, and the numbers. And later using JavaScript, we're going to create these divs randomly with different color codes and dif uh, different background colors and also the title. But we just hard coded a few numbers and the few divs to be able to install our project in the next section. That was it for the HTML part of our project. In the next section, we're going to start styling our project using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the, ref, on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css. Before using CSS in our project, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just after the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML code and the external style sheet, which is style.css. The href attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and style.css are located at the same directory, 
we just need to have starlet CSS for the URL. Now we can use CSS in our project. We, we save this HTML file using Ctrl S and we close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left to have more space on the right side. And we go to solid CSS and we start with the body section. We just write body, we open a set of curly braces. First, we remove the default margin of the body section. We just write margin zero. And we change the font family to be, for example, cursive. And uh, yeah, that's it for the body section. And we let's uh, style the H1, bring it in this to the center. We just say H1 and we use text align center to bring it to the center. Then we have, uh, we need to style this uh, container the main container that covers the all the divs with the class of container color container so here we target the container class using dot container and we change the display to flex to bring bring them next to each other but we want them to go to the next line when we decrease the size. So we change the flex wrap to wrap instead of no wrap. So each time the new container goes to the next line when we have a smaller screen. Then we use justify content center to bring the items to the center horizontally. After the container, we start styling the color container itself. Uh, let's change the background color to orange to see it better. Later, we're going to create this background color randomly using JavaScript, but just for now, we, we keep it to be for uh, orange so we can uh, style it better. We set the width to be 300 pixels and we set the height to be 150 pixels. We change the color of these texts to white. And uh, let's change the display to flex to bring this one to the center. And before that, let's add some margins so we can see the boxes uh, separately. So we just say margin five pixels. So now we see the boxes in a different place because we use justify, uh, we use flex wrap wrap when we increase the size, we have two and depends on the size, we have different number of uh, boxes in one row and different co columns number. So let's change the display to flex to bring this text to the center horizontally and vertically using Justify Content Center and Align Item Center. Justify Content Center brings them to the center horizontally and Align Item Center bring them to the center vertically. And let's change the font size and increase the size of the text to be 25 pixels. And as may we have a very light colors in the background using uh, the generator. Maybe we cannot see this text later. So let's add some text shadow to this text to have some shadow effects. 
so we can see them clearly in the lighter colors as well. So we change, we use the text shadow property and uh, the first value in the text shadow property is the position of the horizontal shadow is set it to be two pixels. Then we have the position of the vertical shadow is set it to be two pixels as well and four pixels for the blur radius. And we want the shadow to be black with some transparency. So we use RGBA function to set the color and we set zero for red, green, and blue, which gives us the black color. And we use 0.5 for 50% trans transparency. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes clearly. And let's add some border to each box, we just say border, we want it to be solid with black color and also with two pixels width. And let's change the border radius to be, uh, for example, 10 pixels. I think uh, this is fine. Yeah, in the next section, we are going to use JavaScript to create these color codes randomly. And also, depending on these color codes, we change the background color of these boxes. So see in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. We have in, we have installed our project. And uh, in this section, we are going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. We're going to create and generate these uh, color, um, color codes randomly using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript files. Okay, here, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.js and we press Enter. This, uh, as the same as the solid CSS, before using JavaScript in our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and here at the end of the body tag, we add a script tag. We just write SC and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. And as both files I mean, the index.html and index.js are located at the same directory. We just need to write index.js for the URL and inside the src attribute, which defines the destination of the link. Let's close this explorer section again by dragging this line to the left. So we have more space on the right side and we go to index.js to start coding. First, I would like to generate these boxes using a for loop and we add the, this, we create this div with a class of container, a color container and add it to this container. So, First, we bring this container and return it using query selector. So we create a const and we call it container element and we equal it to document because we want to create it inside the DOM. 
and we use query selector method and because the div has the class of container we just need to add dot container as the selector inside the parentheses and the double quotes we can use alt c to turn on the world wrap so we can see the code clearly and then we add a for loop we just write for and here we click on the second auto suggestion with the one with the for loop so it gives us a template and we have an index which starts from zero to the array lengths. We, we want to create 30, for example, uh, boxes and containers. So we just write 30 and we want to increase the number of index each time one. And here we want to create a div. In order to create an element, we can use the create element method. So we just write here we, we want to create a color container element. And uh, we can use the document.create element method and the, the element we want to create is div and after creating it we want to add the class of color container in order to add a class to the to the element we can use the class list property and add method so here we have the color container elements we can use the class list property and we use add method to add the class and the class we want to add is color container and after that we need to append this new element inside this container so we just write container element dot append child and the child we want to append is this uh, color container element color container element as soon as we add it you can see that we have more elements here Let's remove this uh, hard-coded one that we have created before. So from here to here, we delete them all. So the, all the, the boxes you see is created here, which should be 30 boxes. Let's open this project inside the Google Chrome by using the open in browser. And you can see now we have 30 boxes and they are responsive. In a bigger screen, we have four box in four columns. Then we have three, two, and one. So now we go back to the visual studio code now we want to add the uh, we want to create this uh, uh, color codes using uh, creating a function first we create the function we create a function we call it uh, random color The chart set uh, that we have for the creating the color palette, uh, it has uh, it has the all the numbers from zero to nine, so we write it here, and also it has 
alphabets from A to F. So we just have to write A, B, C, D, E, F. So we want to create the random uh, color codes depending on these char uh, characters. All right. And the color lens, the, the color code lens is, so we just write color code lens is equal to six. Then we start the variable color or we can use let for variable. We just say color. First we start from empty and we use a for loop again, but this time the for loop will be the, the lens will be the color code lens. So we just write color code lens. So we're going to loop through the color code lens, so we're going to uh, we're going to create each character one by one randomly, and uh, add it to this color variable. So first, we create the random number. So we we want to. This is uh, like a ten like 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. We have 16 characters. So we want to create a number between 0 to 15. So in order to create it, we just create the random number. We just create a constant. We call it random number, and we use the math dot random method because we want it to be between 0 and 15 so we just can say multiply this one to this chars but the length of this chart so we just say chars dot length so now we are creating the random number, but this is the number. Uh, let's uh, log it first so we see so what we are doing. And we, let's call this function as well. So we just say random color. We open the console. As you can see, we are creating uh, six random numbers, but as you can see, it had it's it's not a rounded one, so we can use the floor method. Just a math dot floor to create these numbers like this. Now we have zero eight zero fourteen four thirteen. So this one means zero means the first number is zero. Eight is one eight is uh, zero one two three four five six seven uh, seven would be the number for the eight and then we have zero which is zero fourteen so we want to add these random characters together to create this color code so let's change this to color code and uh, here, let's close this console log. So we want to add this new number to this color. So first the color is empty. And then we want to add the new random characters, which is a charge.substring. So we want to get the string inside it. 
but which one we want to get the one that has the 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 index of the random number and also the random number plus one what does this mean if this the random number is for example uh, two so we have it here and then until the three so it means from two to three we get the num number two let's uh, log this character color sorry the color code we are getting the color code so let's uh, console log the color code and see it inside the console as you can see the colors code first it starts from empty and then it it became b b3 b3 2 and each time one new character added to this one and if we we check that which uh, what is the random number so let's clean the console log and refresh the page you can see first we get the character 11 which is the letter b then we get the 14 which is the letter e then we get 0 which is 0 and then we have 11 which is the character b 6 is 6 and 14 is e so we are each time we refresh the page we get the new uh, new random color and also we want to create 30 of these random numbers and put it inside this uh, boxes that we have created so instead of random uh, calling it here we create another function which we really generate the colors and this function is going to loop through all these 30 boxes that we have created so we just here we just say color container element uh, actually we don't have this 30 still now so we can get all of them we just create a constant and we say all the color containers we add a s here so we are getting all of them we use document dot query selector all to get uh, all the containers with this class so we just copy this and put it here and uh, let's delete this one first and we console log this we can see that we have we get a node with 30 elements which all the divs with the class of color container now we can loop through all of them using for each method which actually execute a function once for each element of this array so we just say color element uh, container we add the s to get all of them and then we just say for each and uh, we get each of them first we create a function we trigger this function and we can get each element of this array here inside this parenthesis we just call this uh, um we just say color container element without s 
and put it here. So we are getting each element with this name and then we, we, uh, we create a random color first by using this function. So we should create a constant, we call it random or we just call it new color code and we get it from this function random color so when we uh, actually we are not returning anything so we have to instead of console logging we return the color code so we just say return color So here, if we console log the new color code, we get, we should get 30, uh, first we should call this generate color, colors function. When we, so we do it again, color codes is not defined in the line 27 yeah color code instead of color yeah as you can see oh we are returning each of them it this return should be outside this loop so we are returning the last color code so if we now refresh the page we should get 30 color codes like this and each time should be different. We, uh, we clear the console, we refresh the page and we, each time we get a new color code. All right, now we are, get, we are creating the color code here and we want to first we change the background color of these elements, these boxes using the a style method we just say color container element dot the style dot background color as you can see the javascript syntax and this one should be style i don't know the Joker syntax for uh, CSS is a little bit different from the CSS itself. The background color here has a dash, but inside the JavaScript, it's in camel case mode. So we don't have any dash, they're connected, and the second letter, second word is capitalized. So the background color should be this color, new color code, but the new color actually starts from the, with the hashtag. So we just add a hashtag at the beginning and we add this new color code. All right. So now we can see different colors in each box. Each time we refresh the page, we see different background color for any of the boxes. And also we want to get the text inside. So here we just say color container element dot inner text. We, uh, with this funk, uh, with this me uh, method we can change the text inside an element so we add a hashtag again plus new color code now we are getting the codes inside as well and each time we get a different one let's check it inside the browser as well as you can see each time we refresh 
we get the new colors and new color codes. All right, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a hard tray animation. As you can see from the final version of the project, when we move our mouse inside the browser, we are creating some heart inside the browser with different colors and also different sizes. In this project, we are going to use the keyframe queries to create an animation that has some hue effect and also some changing inside the opacity and sizes of the heart. And also we're going to use JavaScript to detect the position of the mouse inside the, uh, the browser, the X and the Y position. And we're going to use this position to set the heart in exact position of the mouse. So in the next section, we are going to start with the HTML part of this project. So see you in the next section. All right, welcome back. Let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. Here we close the Get Started tab, and in the File menu, we click on the Open folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here we click on the desktop, and we click on the New Folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder Heart Trail animation, which is the name of our project. Sorry. Trail animation. We press enter and we click here on the select folder to select the folder. We close the get started tab again and here on the left, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.html and we press enter. Now we have our index.html file here on the right side, but it is completely empty. We can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation mark. And here we click on the first auto suggestion. We can use Alt C to turn on the vault wrap so we can see all the codes clearly. Now we have the uh, HTML5 boilerplate, which has the doc type, which tells the browser which version of HTML the page is written in. And in our case, as we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have an HTML tag which covers the head tag and the body tags. The length attribute inside the HTML opening tag sets the language of the page. And in our case, we set the language to be English by just uh, writing EN here. Then we have the head tag. The head tag has metadata tags, and also the title tag. The charset attribute inside the first meta tag defines the HTML character encoding, and UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 for web developers because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols. Then we have the com compatibility meta tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. Then we have Viewport meta tag, which 
tells the browser on how to resize the page. Inside the viewport meta tag, we have a, we have the content at, uh, attribute which tells the browser sets the width of the page to device's screen. For example, the mobile, mobile screen will be smaller than a computer screen. Then we have the initial zoom level of the browser, which is set to be 100% as a default. Then we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page. We can open the browser inside the Visual Studio Code using the Live Preview extension. We just need to right click here and we click on the Live Preview Show Preview. Now we can see the browser on the right side, which is completely empty, but with the title document. Let's close the Explorer section by dragging the, this line to the left. So we have more space on the right side. And let's change the title to the name of our project, which is Heart Trail Animation. Now we can see the Heart Trail Animation on the tab. And then we inside the body, tag we just have a span that we're going to add a background color uh, sorry the background image to this span using css that was it for the html part of our project in the next section we're going to to use css to style and add the the heart image to the background of this span and we're going to uh, style it using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we're going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. Here, we, we can use Ctrl Shift E to open the Explorer section. And in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Now we have our style.css file here, which is empty, but we can't use it yet because we must add a link to this CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html file and just after the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet, which is a style.css. Uh, the href attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have style.css for the URL. Now we can use CSS in our project. So we just save the file using Ctrl S and we close this Explorer section to have more space on the right side. And the only things we need to do is to add some background image to this span tag and style it. So we go to style it CSS and first we start from the body section and re remove the default margin of our project. So we just remove the margin so we can style the components inside the body section easily. And we set the height 
of the body to be 100% of the viewport height, which means 100% of the screen size. Then we change the background color to be black. So we have now a completely black website with nothing inside, but we're going to add some background image to this spam tag inside the body section to have an image. So inside the span, we add a background we use the background property to add a background image. So for the image uh, or the icon, we want to use the heart icon. For using the, for having icon in our browser, we can use a website called Icon Finder. So we go to the desktop and we click on the Google Chrome. And here in the search bar, we search Icon Finder. And in the search result, we can see a website with the URL iconfinder.com. We click on this website. And we close this. And here inside the tab section, we search for heart. And in the search result, we have too many hearts, different shapes, but some of them are free and some of them are paid. We just, we can, in, inside this tab, we can choose the free one so we can get all the free icons. The icon I would like to choose is this one. We just need to click on it and here on the picture we right click and we click on the copy image address and we go back to the visual studio code and here we add a url function and inside a double quote instead of double quote we paste the link we can't see the image yet because the span tag doesn't have any width or height. So we change the width to 100 pixels and height to be 100 pixels as well. Then we position it to, to the middle so we can see the icon. So we position it absolute first so we can see it here a little bit. And in order to uh, put this image inside exactly that, uh, that uh, place with the width and height of 100 pixels, we can use background color, uh, sorry, background size cover to increase the size of the image as large as possible to fill the container. And uh, we can see it now properly. All right, let's bring this heart to the center. Just uh, for our styling. And so we just say left. 50% and top 50%. This one actually brings the edge of the uh, icon to the center from the top and the left in order to bring exactly the middle to the center. We need to use a transform property and it's translate function and we set the X and Y to minus 50%. Now we have the heart exactly in the middle of our uh, website. 
that was it for the CSS part of our project. In the next section, we are going to use JavaScript to firstly detect the movement of the mouse inside the browser. And we get the position of the mouse, X and Y. And also, we're going to create this heart in different size and different colors when we, we are moving the mouse in the different area of the browser. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished styling our project using CSS. In this section, we're going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. So here we click and we use Ctrl Shift E to open the Explorer section. In the Explorer section on the left side, we right click and we click on the new file. Here we name the file index.js and we press enter. And before using JavaScript in our project, as same as the CSS file, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to index.html and just at the end of the body section, we add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the src. The src attribute is similar to href attribute here and defines the destination of the link. And as both files are located at the same directory, we just need to write index.js for the URL. Now we can use a JavaScript in our project. So we close this Explorer section and we go to index.js first things we need to bring to JavaScript is the body element. And as the body element just is a tag with a class, uh, with no class or with no ID, we can use query selector method to return this element inside the JavaScript. So we just write const to create a constant and we name the constant body element and we target the document and we use query selector method to return the body. And as it doesn't have any class or ID, we just need to have body here. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code completely on the, uh, in two lines. So, now we can add a add event listener method to this body section and attach an event handler to detect the mouse the mouse moving inside the browser. So here we just write body element dot add event listener and the add event listener method has uh, the first parameter inside the add event listener method is the event that uh, is going to trigger a function. So this event, the event we want to use is mouse move, which means when the mouse move, we're going to trigger a function. So we, let's test it. We just say uh, console log. Uh, for example, we just say moved or mouse moved, whatever. We open the console section here. It's clicking on uh, open DevTools pane. As you can see, we clear the console by using this icon. And when we go to the browser and move the mouse there, we can see them. We are seeing move many times because 
each pixel is going to be one trigger for the function. So this is working. We just need to get the X and Y position of the mouse when we are moving it. So we can get it uh, using, uh, we just get the event here. And if we console log event dot, for example, offset X, and we open the console, and if we move, we can see the position of the mouse in the X offset. So when we go up to the left, we see a smaller number, but in the right side, we see a bigger number. And also if we, we can get the Y axis as well. So upper is lower and uh, in the bottom, we, we are getting the bigger number. So we are getting the both numbers, X and Y offset. So we just save them inside a constant and we just say x position equal to event dot offset x we copy this and we change this to y and next we want to create a, a span like this so we have a span here in the body but we are going to create exactly the same span using create element method. Uh, and we just write a constant and we just say span element. This is a new one. So we just say each, each time the mouse moves here, just create a span. And we just say dot create element. And the element we want to create is a span. So if we, we cannot see it yet because we have to append this span inside the body section, which is here. So for the body element, we append a child. And the child we want to append is this a span element. So when we go now inside this, uh, let's remove this. Inside this browser, we can see this span inside the body section. We have to open this inside a browser, and we open the Dev Tools using Ctrl Shift C. As you can see, now we are ha we're having a lot of span inside the body. As we are moving, we are creating a span inside the body. All right. But we want to position this span as well. So we go back to Visual Studio Code. And before appending, we position this span from the left and top by using this X and Y position. So we just say span dot style it because we are styling them because we are doing the same things inside the styled CSS. We positioning them left and top. So we actually styling them. So we just say dot style dot left and we want it to be left X position. And because this X position is just a number, we need to add pixels at the end. So now we can see this one in the left when we are moving it, moving our mouse there. But let's add the top position as well. We copy this and change this left to top. And instead of Y, we add, instead of X, we add Y. So now we see the heart creating when we are moving. And the reason you see double um, heart is the, because we need to add something called uh, pointer events 
we change the pointer events to none and we're going to fix this. So now we're only uh, creating the heart exactly on the mouse position. But this is actually creating infinite number uh, or thousands of millions of heart each time we are moving. But we want to remove this heart after a few seconds. And also we want to create an animation and bring this heart to, to up and also change its uh, color as well. So we go back to style CSS and we add an animation inside the span. So for creating animation, we need to use the keyframe uh, query. And we just name this animation animate. And the keyframe queries has, you can create different position. We just say 0%. set the transform translate x as the same as the, the top minus 50% in the both side because 0% we want to have the same things and the opacity to be 100% as well it means uh, we don't have yeah, opacity 100 means no opacity. And then we're going to copy this. And instead of 0, we have 100%. And instead of having 50% top, we just make this one a big, big number. For example, 5,000 to bring this heart outside the, the browser at the top and also change the opacity to zero so make it invisible over time so we add this animation here inside the span using animation property and the animation we want to use is animate which, which we have created here and the animation du duration we choose six second and linear as you can see, now the heart is going up. And uh, after a while, we see too many hearts inside and it gets a little bit messy. So we can remove the heart after a few seconds. We just use a set timeout method inside the JavaScript at the end to remove the a span. So we just say set timeout. The set timeout method actually sets a timer and trigger a function after the timer expires. This uh, we can set the timer here. We just say, for example, three seconds, and we want to remove the span element when we after three seconds we want to remove the a span element. So we create it here, but after three seconds, we remove it. So it's not going to be messy like that. And also we want to create different size of the heart instead of just having one heart. So it's, it's going to be a little bit more beautiful. So for changing the size of the heart, we can create a, a random number here. For example, we create a constant and we just say size and uh, we use the math dot random function to create a random number. And we use this random number to change the uh, width and height of the uh, span. We will we set the height and width to be hundred per hundred pixels at the beginning, but we can randomly change them here. So we just say span element 
dot style because we want to style them and we've changed the width to be this size this random number is between 0 and 1 so it's very small we want it to be between 0 and 100 so we can add a 100 here so it's going to be between this size is going to be between 0 and 100 and we just say something like above size plus pixel so we change the width and we can change the height as well by just copying the upper code and change the width to height now we are creating different size of a heart we can get rid of the middle heart which we have created by removing this span so we are just creating the heart by moving the the mouse and also another cool things we can do is to change the color of the heart by changing by using a function called hue rotate inside the filter property so we just need to go to install the CSS and inside the animation first we just uh, set the filter hue rotate to zero uh, it means nothing and uh, no change but after, uh, until it, it reaches to its 100% we want to change the uh, hue rotate to for example 720 degree so now we can see that first the heart starts from the uh, like a red color and it changes uh, goes to green and finally blue and red we can test as you can see when we go to the right and the top we can see a scroll bar we can remove the scroll bar by using just uh, uh, overflow hidden inside the body section so we we not gain it. so we can hide the scroll bar easily by uh, just using overflow hidden so let's uh, see this inside our browser as you can see the spans are creating inside the body section and they are removing just uh, by using the set timeout method it's created after three seconds we don't have any span this concept is can be used for creating uh, very cool animations and also some like a congratulation or some uh, things in your website that you want some beautiful things comes from the top or bottom so I hope you enjoyed this project and, and learned many things I'll see you in the next project Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a movie trailer pop-up. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have an image here with a movie title and some Lauren Ipsum text. Then we have a button. So when we click on the button, we can see a video pops up and we can play the movie. And we can full screen the video and also we can change the playback speed and uh, we can download it and also we can watch it in a smaller screen 
And also we have a button here for closing the video. And just pay attention, the video is in the 15 second. When we close it and we open the pop-up video again by pressing the watch now button, we can see that the video is reset to be in the zero second and we can play it from the beginning. We're going to use JavaScript to add these functionalities like uh, resetting the videos and also uh, adding and removing this pop-up window when we click on this button and we can close it using this button using JavaScript. And also we're going to use the video tag of the HTML to create this video player and we're going to style it using CSS. So see you in the next section for the HTML part of our project. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here we click on the desktop. And here we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder, for example, video trailer pop up. And we press enter. And here we click on the select folder button to select the folder. We close the Get Started tab again, and now we can create our HTML file. So here on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.html and we press enter. Now we have an HTML file on the right side which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to have an HTML5 boilerplate. In the HTML5 boilerplate, the doc type tells the browser on uh, uh, which version of HTML the page is written in, and for HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have an HTML tag which covers the head tag and the body tag. The land attribute inside the HTML opening tag sets the language of the page. And in our case, we set the language to be English. In the head section, we have three meta tags and also a title tag. The chart set attribute inside the first meta tag defines the HTML character encoding, which uh, is set to be UTF-8, which is recommended by HTML5 for web developers because it nearly contains all the characters or symbols. Next, we have the compatibility meta tag which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge. The viewport meta tag tells the browser on how to resize the page. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap to see all the codes and here inside the content attribute we set the width of the page to be the same as the device's screen width, which means 
for example for the mobile screen uh, we have a smaller width than a computer screen then we have the initial zoom level of the browser which is set to be 100 percent this met this tag sets the title of the page in order to see the browser inside the visual studio code we can use the live preview extension that we have installed so we right click and we click on the live preview show preview now we have the browser on the right side which is completely empty but with the title document let's close this explorer section by dragging this line to the left to so we have more space on the right side in our browser and also the coding editor so let's change the title to be the same as the name of our project which is video trailer pop up and inside the body section we create a div with a class of uh, top container or the main container which is the main section for our website including the title the image and also the paragraph of the movie so we create this div with a class of main container and inside this div we add an image tag which is img and in, in the source we we just get an image from a website for example we get from the pixels.com so we go to the desktop and here we click on the google chrome here we search for pixels and in the search results we we click on pixels.com in the search result we just search for movie and we just choose a picture for example this one and we right click on the image and we click on the copy image address we go back to the visual studio code and here in the src attribute which the which is the destination of the link we paste the link we can see the image now inside our browser which is huge but later using css we're going to style this image in the alt we just say a movie image all right after the image we have the name of the our movie where we can use a h2 tag we just say movie title as an example you can see it here then we have a paragraph which is we just can use lauren ipsum to create some random words we just say lauren and we press enter so we have a kind of paragraph of the uh, lorem ipsum texas then we have an anchor tag or a button we can create a button with a class of btn and inside the button we just say watch watch now 
so for the trailer and we can press enter to accept the auto suggestion to have the button with the class of btn and the text of watch now okay that was it for the main container dev i think uh, yeah we should put this button h2 and the paragraph inside this div not the outside so we just cut this and put it inside this div right that is correct now and outside this div we can uh, we can have our pop-up video window so we create a div with a class of trailer container and inside this div we just add a video tag and inside the src we can just find an a video from the mm, from the pixels.com website we just Here we are inside the photo section. We can click on the videos and we just choose on a video. Uh, anything is fine. We just uh, click on any videos and Yeah, that's a video. We just download it with the original or any quality you want. We, we can just uh, full HD is fine. We just free use free download to download it. And in the download section of the Google Chrome, we we just drag this file and bring it inside the folder that we have created for our project. And we go inside the folder and we change the name of this file to just trailer. We go back to the Visual Studio code and inside the source, we just say trailer.mp4 as a index.html and the file are located at the same directory we just need to have trailer.mp4 for the src of the video tag we can see the video here but it doesn't have any controller like a play or pause button so here we just add the controls uh, attribute so now we have the controller we can play the movie we can pause it we can just uh, change we download it put it in a picture in picture mode but the size is big but we're going to use css to style this video or other parts of our project later Another thing things we're going to have is a, a close button for closing the video pop-up section. So here we just uh, we go back to the browser and in the new tab we search for font awesome to bring the icon. So we're here. In the search results font awesome.com we click on icons in this in the search bar we search for uh, times and in the first result we have the closing 
closing icon. So we click on it. And here we see the HTML tag of this icon, which is an I tag with the class of FAS FA times. We click to copy the HTML tag and we go back to the Visual Studio code and we paste it here. We can't see it yet because we must add a link to the Font Awesome CDN within the HTML code. So we go back to the browser and inside a new tab, we search for CDN.js. In the search result, we click on cdnjs.com. And here in the search bar, we search for font awesome. We click here on font awesome. And we scroll down a little bit and in the first result, we click on this icon to copy the link tag. We go back to the Visual Studio Code and just under the title tag, we paste the link using Ctrl V. If we scroll down, we can see the letter icon here. We can increase the size of this icon by just adding fa dash for example 2x we can double the size of the icon yeah that was it for the html part of our projects in the next section we're going to style our project using css so see you in the next section All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Now we have the style.css file on the right side, but before using CSS, we must add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just under the font awesome tag, and at the end of the head tag, we add a link tag and we press and we select the third uh, auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external uh, style sheet. The href attribute here defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have style.css for the URL. Now we can start styling our project using CSS. We just save the file using Ctrl S. We close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left to have more space on the right side. And we go to style.css and we start styling from the body section. First, we remove the, the margin around the body element using margin zero. And uh, we can use box sizing border box to easily install the uh, containers inside our project and we change the uh, font family to, for example, 
sans serif. And then we want to position everything to the center. So we have to change the width to be 100% or we just change. First, we change the display to flex and then we use justify content center to bring the items to the center horizontally. And we set the height of the body to be 100% of the viewport height. And we use align item center to bring the items to the center vertically. And we change the background color to be black. We can't see the changes yet, but uh, we're going to decrease the size of the image so we can see everything better. So for the main container that we have here that covers the image, the H2 and the paragraph and button, this one, So here we just write main container we set the max width to be 550 pixels and uh, we change the image size we just say main container img which is the first image we change the max width to be 100 percent we can't see it yet because it's under the video tag and we change the margin button to be 15 pixels All right, so let's uh, remove this video section so we can see our everything else first. We just this change the display of the trailer container to none. Otherwise, we don't know what we are doing here. Display none. And we're going to change it later. So now we set the image to be 100% of the max width and the, the width was 550 pixels. You can see here. And then we cannot see the title and the texts yet because the the color is black and the background color is black as well. So here we, we target the main container H2 and we change the color to white firstly and uh, we change the font weight to be 500 which is a thinner font and we change the font size to change the size of this and make it double by using 2 em or instead of this we can just use a h1 tag so we change this h2 to h1 and we change this one to h1 so the size would be enough. All right. Let's uh, style the paragraph. So we just say main container paragraph 
first we change the color to white so we can see it properly and uh, we just add some margin to it margin 15 pixels we just add margin for 15 pixels and uh, yeah just 15 pixel for left uh, top and bottom and zero for left and right you can see that's the responsive too And then if we add some padding to the main container, probably we don't have any problem for the, we just say five pixels. I want to, yeah, maybe 10 pixels. So we have some space around these elements when even we have a smaller screen. So this is completely responsive now. And after this paragraph, let's install the button. So here we just say the main, the button has the class of BTN. So we just remove, uh, we change the background color to white. We remove the border using border none we add some padding we add 10 pixels up and down or top and bottom and 20 pixels left and right and uh, change the cursor to be pointer so we see a pointing hand when we hover over the element and uh, I think everything looks fine we just add some border radius 5 pixels Yeah, everything looks okay. We, let's check this one in the real browser like Chrome. So we open it inside the browser. We close this. Yeah, as you can see, now we have a like this website and in the smaller screen. Looks okay too. Let's add some border radius to the image as well so we go back to the visual studio code and the image section we just add a border radius 10 pixels all right looks okay Now let's add some hovering effect when we hover over the BTN. So we just say BTN hover and we change the background color to, for example, orange like this. All right. So next we are going to like uh, install the video section. So we remove this display none so we can see the video, but we're going to style them first. So for the trailer container, we position it fixed so we can bring it in the center we by using top 
50% left, 50%, and we use transform, translate to, because this is in the center, but the edge of the uh, video is in the center. So in order to bring it exactly in the center, we can add minus 50% for translate X and Y. All right. And let's change the background color to be black for the video container. We change the width to be 100%, the height to be 100% as well. And we bring the video to the center using display, flex, justify content, center, and align item, center. All right, so for the video inside, we just uh, trailer container and we target the video tag. So now if you check, we have a div with a class of trailer container and inside the div, we have a video, uh, video tag. So now we are target targeting the video, so here we Position this as a relative, and we change the max width to be 900 pixels. So we have a smaller, and we remove the outline to by using outline nine none inside the browser now we can see the image but it's in the left side now so uh, we can position it first so we already position it using this trailer container this Oh, I, I, I made a mistake here. The left is 15%. It should be 50%. Sorry about that. So now we have the video exactly in the center. That was a little bit confusing for me. So here now we have the video at the center. We can play it. We can pause it. But we want this video to be smaller when we have a smaller screen. So we can use media query to set this. So we just say media query and we say if the max width is, for example, 991 pixels, We set the trailer container video to the, we change the max width to 90%. So as you can see now the, if we have a smaller screen, we have a video like this. Let's test it here as well. See, in the big screen, we have only this size, but in the smaller screen, we have the 90% of the width. So that was it for the video part. Let's uh, install this uh, close button that, that we have brought, this one. So let's uh, now we have this close button has the 
has a unique class, but uh, we can add another class. We just say close icon and we can install it using this. We just say close, uh, sorry, close icon. We position it absolute. And we just say top 30 pixels and right 30 pixels. We can't see it because the color is white. So we change the color. So the color is black. We change the color to white. So now we can see the button on the right side. Let's make it a little bit like a thinner or that's fine. We here is the size is okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's fine for the we change the cursor to be pointer, so we have a pointing hand when we hover over it. So I think that was it for the CSS part. We just need to remove this pop-up video when we have a class of active inside the uh, inside this. Here inside the div with the main container. If uh, not, sorry, in here inside the trailer container, if we have the class of active, we want to remove this pop off video. So here, the trailer container, we just say if we have the class of active. We want to change the visibility to hidden. So now when we add this class, we don't see the pop-up window. And if we remove it, we see the pop-up window. So in the next section, we're going to use JavaScript to add and remove this active class when we click on this button and also we remove it using the closing button that we have here. All right. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right. In the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. In this section, we are going to add functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. So here we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.js and we press enter. Before using JavaScript in our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we switch to index.html file and just at the end of the body tag, we add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the src. As both files are located at the same directory, I mean the index.html and index.js, we just need to write index.js for the URL of the JavaScript file. So we can close the explore section now. We don't need it. So we have more space on the right side. And 
the elements we need to bring and uh, return to the JavaScript is this button and also the closing button and this trailer container div to add and remove the active class. So three things we need. We create a constant and first we bring the button. We just say btn element and uh, inside the document, we use query selector method to return the element with the class of btn. So here. We can use Alt C to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code clearly. And after this, we bring the closing button. So we just say close icon element, say document dot query selector. And the element had the class of, we had the, this class here, close icon. We copy this and we paste it after the dot. The next element we need to return is this trailer container because we want to add and remove the class of active to this class. So we just say const trailer container element and inside the document we used query selector method and the class name is trailer container. All right, we have everything now inside the JavaScript. We first we add a add event listener method to this button. So when we click it, we can trigger a function. So we just write btn element dot add event listener. The first parameter is the event handler. Uh, the event is click because we want to track the click. And when the uh, click event happens, we want to trigger a function. And what we want to do is to remove the class of active when we click on this uh, button from this uh, trailer container element, this element here. So we just say, trailer container element dot class list and we remove the class of active. So when we click here, now we see the video pop up. Now we want to add the event listener to this closing button. So when we click on this button, we're going to uh, add the class of active. So we just say close icon element dot add event listener. The event is click and we trigger function. And inside the trailer container element, we want to add the class of active. Like this. I want to add some like a transition to this pop up because it's coming very suddenly. So for the trailer container, we add the Op uh, we add the opacity opacity uh, one 
and when the it has the class of active we want this opacity to be zero but uh, we want to add the transition here so we just say transition on opacity and we just say 0.4 seconds now we see a transition when we are doing it just make it a little bit more maybe seven all right now when we click on this play button uh, after a few seconds if we close the button and we open it we still see that the video is uh, playing even we are not seeing the video so we can uh, fix this one by adding by just uh, after closing the button we want to stop the video so we need to bring the this video tag inside the javascript so here we just say const video element and we use the query selector method and uh, we target the video tag and here we just say video element first we pause it we check this so we are playing it when we click on this the video should be paused we can see and then we we want to set the current time of the video to zero so when we play it for example now the seconds is five six when we close it and we open again the video time is zero and it's already passed so we have to play again so each time someone click on the watch now watch now sees the video from the beginning let's test it inside the browser you can see in the full size we have a bigger screen we can play it and we close the video we play we see that this is reset already as you can see we can use the change the volume we can full screen the video and the other features is we can change the playback speed like a increase it or decrease it as well yeah, that was it for the, our project. I hope you enjoyed and may, learned many things. So see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a blurred background pop-up. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a, our main website, which is very simple. It has a background image with a title and also a call to action button, which, may, which saying click to join. When we click on this button, a pop-up window appears from the top with a transition. And also we have a blurred background in the back the pop-up window has a, an input for email and also a join button and also a close 
uh, icon at the top right. When we click on the close icon, the pop-up window disappears and also our main website returns to uh, normal and without any filter or blurness. We can try it again. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of our project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. Here, we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here, we click on the desktop and we create a new folder by clicking on this uh, new folder button. We name the file, we name the folder blurred background pop up, which is the name of our project. We press enter and here we click on the select folder button. We close the get started tab again and here on the left side in the explorer section we create an HTML file. So we right click here and we click on the new file. We name the file index.html and we press enter. Here on the right side, we have our index.html file, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation point and we play, and we choose the first auto suggestion or we can press tab. Now we have our boilerplate and the first line in the boilerplate uh, is the type is the doc type which tells the browser which version of html the page is written in and for html5 we just need to have here html then we have the html tag which is the top level element in the html file and it has head and the body tags inside it then we have the lang attribute inside the opening HTML tag, which sets the language of the page. And as we are using English in our website, we just need to have en for the lang. Then we have the head tag, which has the meta tags and also the title tag. The chart set attribute inside the first meta tag uh, defines the HTML character encoding and, H and UTF-8 is recommended by the uh, HTML5 for web developers because it mostly contains all the characters and symbols so the users won't have any problem reading our website. Then we have the compatibility meta tag which tells the internet explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is edge the viewport meta tag tells the browser on to how to resize the page let's use alt c to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes and in the content attribute we have two sections first we set the width of the page to devices screens width for example for mobile mobile screen we have a smaller width than in the computer screen then we have the initial zoom level of the browser 
which is in our case is 100%. The title tag sets the title of the page and we can see it in the tabs uh, section of the browser. In order to see the browser here inside the Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview extension. So we just need to right click and we click on Live Preview, Show Preview. Now on the right side, we can see our browser, which is completely empty, but uh, with the title document. We can change the title here and we set it to be the same as the name of our project, which is Blur uh, Background Background Pop-Up. All right, we can see the new title inside the tab of the uh, browser. Let's close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left so we have more space on the right side for the HTML file and also the browser. Then in the body section, we have to add two div with a class of container and also the class of pop-up container. So we have two sections, the container that covers the title of the, our website and also a button, uh, which is a callback, uh, call for action button. And we, we just write click to join in it. Then we have uh, our pop-up container that has the offer and input for the email. And also we have a button for the joining inside the pop-up container. So we have two containers. The first container has the class of container, or we can say main container, or just we leave it as a container. Then inside this container, we have a edge an h1 tag, which uh, is the title of our page. We just say, welcome to our website. After the head one tag, we have a button, which uh, is a call for action button for joining to our website. So we add a button here with a class of BTN. And inside it, this button, we just write click to join. We can see the button and the title in, inside the browser. And uh, after this container, which is the main uh, section of our website. We have another container for our pop-up window. So here we, cre we create a div with a class of pop-up container. And inside this div with the class of pop-up container, we have an H4 tag saying for example, 20% of offer. Then we have a label, an input, and button. So first we add the H4 tag saying 20% of offer. Then we have a label for our input just saying your email, we just say label for our email and the label is just your email. For the label, we have an input 
and the input has the class of input as well. So we just say input and also the type of the input is email because we are using it for users to enter their email. So we, we just add a clone and uh, we just write down email and we add a class by adding dots and the class is input as well. All right, we just press enter to accept the auto suggestion. So now we have an input. We have an input with the type of email. The name is email as well, the same as the label. And we don't need any ID. And uh, we can see it here, the input. We just need a placeholder. So it's just a text inside the input. And the place uh, placeholder just saying enter your email. All right. After this, this uh, label and input, we have a button with a class of pop up BTN. Just saying join. We just say button with a class of pop up. btn and inside the button we have the text just saying join we press enter to accept the auto suggestion now we have the button with the class of pop-up btn and the text of join we can see here all right the other things uh, I would like to have inside the pop-up button is a closing icon. So to close the pop-up uh, window. In order to have this icon, which is a times icon, we can use font awesome in our project. So we go to desktop and we click on the Google Chrome. Here inside the search bar, we search for font awesome. In the search results, we have fontawesome.com and we have sub, some uh, subsections and we click on the icons here. We wait for the website to be loaded and uh, we can see that we have a lot of icons here, 7,864 awesome icons and we can search for the times icon. The icon I would like to use is this icon. We click on this icon and wait for the page to be loaded and here we can copy the html tag which is an i tag with the class of fas and fa times so we click here to copy the html tag and we go back to visual studio code and inside this div with the class of pop-up container under this button, we create another div with a class of uh, just say close icon. And inside this div, we paste the link that we have just copied. All right. Still, we cannot see the icon in our browser because we must add a link to the CDN of the Font Awesome website within the HTML code. So we go back to the browser and we open a new tab and here in the search bar we search for CDN.js. 
CDN.js is a website that provides the CDN for uh, popular uh, popular uh, frameworks and also the website like Font Awesome, jQuery, Owl, Crowd, Carousels, and uh, search. You can search for all the libraries here. First, uh, we click on the cdnjs.com here. And in the search bar, we search for font awesome. In the search result, we click on the first one, font awesome, with a version of 5.15. 5 and uh, we scroll down a little bit and here we click on this icon to copy the link tag. We go back to the Visual Studio code and just under the title tag, we paste the link. As soon as we paste the link, we get the times icon inside our browser. I would like to have a bigger icon so in order to just make the size double, we can just add a class of FA3X. A 3X is for three times. We can just say 2X for two times for the icon. And you can see the instruction inside the font awesome as well here. For different sizes, you have to write 3x, 2x, 5x, uh, until 9x. Alright, that was it for the HTML part of our project. In the next section, we are going to style our project using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. We can open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E, or we can go to the View menu and click on the Explorer. And on the left side, in the Explorer section, we can right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Before using CSS in our project, we must add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html file and just under this uh, link tag related to the font awesome and at the end of the head tag we add a link tag we just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion the one with the css now we can use css in our project we save the file using ctrl s we close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left so we can have more space on the right side. Then we go to install a CSS and we start from body section. We just write body, we open a set of curly braces, and the only things we need to do in the body section is just to remove the default margin from the uh, from the body, I mean the space around the body element. So we just write margin zero. Now we don't have any space around the container, the main container which is here, uh, there for the class of container that covers the H1 and the button. So now uh, we're going to start uh, styling this div with the class of container because it's a class, we need to add dot at the beginning of the name of the uh, container. So we just write dot container.
we open a set of curly braces. And first we need to bring the items to the center horizontally and vertically. For bring the items to the center horizontally, we just need to change the display to flex. As you can see, the button came next to the H1 tag. In order to prevent this, uh, we just need to change the flex direction to column. The default flex direction is row, so you can see the both items next to each other, but when we change it to column, they come right uh, after each other, and also uh, the, the first item on the top of the second item. Now we can use justify uh, sorry, align item center to bring the items to the center horizontally, like this. After this, we can set the height of the, this place, the main container to the height of the screen by setting the height to be 100% of the viewport height. So as you can see, the, the pop-up section went down after the 100% of the viewport height. Now we can use justify content center to bring the items to the center vertically. Now we have our everything uh, centrally located. The next things uh, we can do is to add the background image to the container. I would like to use the website unsplash.com to get the background image for our website, but you can get it from anywhere you like from the internet. So we go to browser, the Google Chrome, we open a new tab, and here in the search bar, we search for unsplash. In the search results, we click on the unsplash.com. Here in the search bar, we search for, for example, computer. I just assume that our website is a tech website. I would like to use this picture so we click on it and we right click and we get the URL using uh, this icon the this uh, co copy image address so we co we click on copy image address and we go back to the visual studio code and here we create a background property we use URL function to add the uh, URL of the picture from this unsplash.com website. So we paste the URL here. As soon as we paste it, we can see the picture behind our website. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the code inside this container. And we cannot see the picture properly we can change it we can change the background size to cover to large the picture as as much as possible to cover all the container okay i think that was it for the container section and uh, we just need to style the head one and the button at the bottom of this. All right, so here we target the H1 tag, which is this welcome to our website. The things I would like to do is to first increase the size 
change the color to white and also change the font family and add some text shadow. So first we change the font size to be, for example, 60 pixels. Then we can uh, change the color to white. For bringing this text to the center, we can add text align center to the container. to uh, bring the inline content to the center as well. So now we have the color white. We change the font family to be impact. And then we increase the space between the letters of the words using letter spacing properties. You just say letter spacing and the just uh, add four pixels so we increase the space between the two letters then we add a text shadow to the text text shadow property has uh, the first value in the text shadow property is the position of the horizontal shadow we set it to be two pixels the next one is the position of the vertical shadow. We set it to be two pixels as well. We can see the shadow. Let's add some blur. The third value is the blur. So we add four pixels blur. And we don't want the shadow to be white. We, we want it to be black. So we just change the RGBA. We use RGBA function to set the color. RGBA stands for red, green, blue, and alpha. We set zero for red, zero for green, and zero for blue, which gives us the black color. And for alpha, we set 0.3, which means 30% transparency or opacity. All right, that was it for the H1. Let's, uh, the next things we would like to uh, style is this button which has the class of btn here so we target this button just say dot btn uh, we just change the padding width we add some margin and also background color to be red and we add some border radius as well so first we start with the padding we just say padding 10 pixels for the top and bottom padding and 20 pixels for the left, left and right. We set the width to be 200 pixels. So we have a bigger button. And then we change the cursor to be pointer. So when we hover over the button, we can see a pointing hand. Then we change the background color back ground color to be uh, orange red this color and uh, we remove the border as you can see here we just say border none for removing the border and we change the border radius to add a rounded border to the button we just set it to be 5 pixels and after that we change the font size to be 20 pixels Right. Uh, we just need to add some hovering effect when we hover over the button so we can add that one using btn hovers uh, css pseudo class and we set it 
we sit and filter and we use brightness function to change the brightness when we hover over the button you can see now we can open the website inside the browser we check it in the bigger size here we can see now the button is beautiful and also our website is fine <clears throat> the next things we need to do is just the uh, style this section the uh, pop-up section we don't want it to be at the bottom we just wanted to have a fixed position at the middle and also we want to add some background color white and uh, the other stuff first uh, let's add some class to the this container that we have here we call it active and we say if this active class exists we want this background color the background uh, image or everything here to be blurred and has some brightness so we just say active just say if the active exists and inside the container so we want to change the filter to be we add some blurness so we just say blur we add five pixel blur and also we want it, we want it to be a little bit dark so we change the brightness to be 70 percent we can see it now if we add the pop-up at the top we can see the pop-up better so before uh, before styling the pop-up I, I wanted to change this container to see the pop-up better so now we start with the pop-up container with this class with the class uh, this div with the class of pop-up container so here we just write dot pop-up container and we set the position to be fixed first now we can't we can't see it anymore because it doesn't have any positioning uh, we can bring it from the left 50 percent and uh, actually because it doesn't have any width we cannot see it so we just set the width to be 400 pixels and height to be 200 pixels so from the left 50% and from the top 30% now we can see it inside uh, our main container let's bring it exactly in the middle because this left 50% bring the edge of this container to the middle we want we can use transform translate x minus 50 percent to bring it exactly in the middle so let's add some background color background color white and we can see it better but actually we want to add a, an image behind it finally so but first uh, let uh, stall everything we just uh, use display flex let's do it here and under this we just say display flex we bring everything next to each other but we can change the flex direction column and uh, now everything uh, uh, is on top of each other let's add some padding for example 20 pixels so everything came inside a little bit and 
after the padding we can uh, because we want to add the background image so let's add uh, find an image for this one as well we go back to the browser and inside the unsplash website let's scroll down a little bit more and we can choose uh, let's choose this image that's for for an example you can choose any background image you like so you can click on copy image address and we go back to the VS code and we change the background and we change the URL function and inside a double quote we paste the an image but as the same as the one we did for the previous div we need to change the background size to cover to see the image completely all right so everything is fine but uh, we, we need to install this h4 these things later but for this uh, this pop-up container we just add some border radius to have it to be rounded at the corners 10 pixels for example and we add some box shadow the first value in the box shadow is the position of the horizontal shadow we set it to be zero the vertical shadow to be four pixels and eight pixel for the blur and we add the RGBA black color with the 30% transparency. All right, if everything looks fine. We just need to a little bit style these items. So we go uh, for styling the H4. So we just write H4. We change the font size to be 30 pixels. We, we add some margin. We just say top and bottom to be 10 pixels, left and right to be zero. Then let's change the font family to be sans serif. And then we change the color to be blue, blue violet. Just an example, but you can choose any color you like. Let's uh, style this label here as well. We just say label. We, the color is the same as above, blue violet, and the font family as well. Just say sensor and let's install uh, the the this button first the buttons class here is pop-up btn so we just say btn pop-up pop-up da dash btn It's uh, similar to the one we did for the previous one. We just need to change the background color to be orange red. We add some cursor to be pointer and padding and font size. So we just change the background color. To be orange red. We add some padding, 10 pixels. We can see the space around it. We change the font size to be 20 pixels. And also we change the cursor to be pointer. So we, when we hover over the button, we can see a pointing hand. 
for this uh, button, particular button, we, I want to add a border, two pixels border, and solid. All right. Next, we we're going to style the input at the top. So the input had the class of input as well. So which you can just say input. And uh, we let's add some border for this as well. Border two pixels and solid. We change the padding to be 10 pixels. And we want some space between the input and the button. So we write margin 10 pixels and zero for the left and right. The other, the last things we, we can do is just uh, change the font size and also bring this to the middle. So we just say font size, uh, 20 pixel and text align center. So uh, I would like to change this color, the color of this enter your email to be a little bit lighter. So we can achieve this one by using the placeholder pseudo element. We change the color to be light gray. All right. The, the last thing I would like to do to bring this uh, uh, times icon to the right uh, right top of this pop-up container. So we target this icon and the icon has the class of close icon. So here we just write close icon we open a set of curly braces and first we set the position to be absolute. So it went up, but we want it to be at the right 20 pixels. That looks fine. The, the other things I would like to do is just uh, change the cursor to be pointer. So when we hover over this icon, we see a pointing hand and when we hover it over it, we want to change the color of it to be red as well. So we just say close icon. We use the hover pseudo class and we change the color to be the same orange red would be fine. All right. So the next things we need to do is just add the active as here as well to this div with the class of pop-up container. But the things we do here, uh, instead of blurring, we, we want to remove this. So we just say if the active class exists, the dot active inside the pop pop-up container, we want to change the visibility to hidden, so we cannot see it as well. All right, that was it for the CSS part of our project. We added two class active. The second active uh, removes the pop-up window. The first active uh, we added in the first uh, div actually blurred the background image.
In the next section, we are going to use JavaScript to add and remove this active class when someone click on this button and also click on the close icon inside the pop-up uh, pop-up window. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. We have added a class of active to each uh, container, the pop-up container, and also the background uh, container, the, the main website. So by adding the active container in the main container we have blurred the container and also by removing the active class we can see the pop-up container again uh, inside our website so we bring back this active class as a default we don't want to see the pop-up container and as a default we want to see our website clearly now in this section we're going to start using javascript to add and remove this active class from our html uh, divs so first we need to create a javascript file so we can open the uh, explorer section using counter shift e and on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file index.js. Before using JavaScript in our project, we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we switch to the index.html file and at the end of the body section, we add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion the one with the src the src attribute defines the destination of the link and as both files i mean the index.html and index.js are located at the same directory we just need to write index.js for the url all right, now we can use the JavaScript in our project. We close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left. So we have more space on the right side and we go save the standard CSS file using Ctrl S and we finally we go to index.js to start adding functionality to our project. First, we need to bring some elements inside the JavaScript, the element we need is this icon here uh, because we want to track the click on this button another element is the container here because we want to add the class active and remove the class active uh, from this container the next thing is the container of the pop-up window and also we need to target the close button the times icon inside the pop-up window so we, in order to uh, return the a class a div with a class we can use query selector method inside the javascript so we go to index.js and we create a constant First, we want to bring the container, the main container here. We just say the name container element. We use the document.querySelector method to return an element with a, with a class attribute. So the class was container. 
We can use Alt C to turn on the word wrap so we can see this uh, code completely. The next things we want to bring is the this button. The button has the class of btn, so we just say btn element equal to document dot query selector, and the class name was btn. After that, we want to bring the pop-up window container. The pop-up window has the class of pop-up container. So we just write const pop-up container element be equal to document dot query selector and the class name was pop-up dash container all right next is the this icon with the class of close icon so we just say const close icon element document dot query selector and the name was close dash icon now we have everything we just need to add add event listener to this uh, button to we bring the pop-up window and also we blur the background image so we just uh, this button was btn element, we brought it and we just add, a, add event listener method. The first parameter inside the add event listener method is the event we want to handle and the event we want to use is click. And then the second parameter is a function to be triggered when the event have, happens. So we want to add the class of active to the container so we add the class list property and add method so we just say active so we test it now when we press the active button active class added to the background image and also we want to remove the active class from the pop-up container so there we can see the pop-up uh, window so for the pop-up container element we use the class list property and remove method and we remove the class of active so we test it now we can see it's working. Then we want to add add event listener method to this icon here. So we just say close icon element dot add event listener method. And the event we want to add is click. And we want to trigger a function and also when we click on that one we want to do the reverse remove the active icon active uh, class from the container and add it to this one so we just copy this and we just remove this section and add this one we test it when we click on this first uh, button we add the class of active to the container and remove the class of active from the pop-up container and we click on this one we remove the cl uh, class of active from the container so and then we add the class of active to the pop-up container we want this happen with the transition not suddenly so we go back to the installer css and 
for the when we have an active pop-up we want the opacity to be a hundred percent we just say one and uh, when we don't have it and also we want the top to be uh, 10 pixel 10 percent instead of uh, 30 percent that we added at the top pop up the yeah, pop-up container we add the top 30 percent and here the visibility was uh, we change uh, yeah we change the opacity here to zero and we add a transition to everything uh, just point or point 0.7 seconds now we can see actually yeah we did the opposite we should be the opacity here should be one and uh, when we have it the opacity should be zero now we can see it correctly so the the pop-up window is coming from the top to the bottom with the opacity zero to one and when we remove it it goes up with and the opacity goes to 100 percent all right and also the blur we want we don't want this blur to happen suddenly so for the container main container we just add a transition on the uh, on the filter and uh, we want this to be 0.7 second as well so when we do this we see a transition on the this browser has a little bit of the like a problem you can test it inside the main browser you can see now here is more smooth actually adding transition actually a little bit consume CPU for the uh, user so without having transition your website is going to work better for the uh, for the user all right that was it for the our project i hope you enjoyed and learned many things so see you in the next project Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a blurred background pop-up. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a, our main website, which is very simple. It has a background image with a title and also a call to action button, which, mean, which saying, click to join. When we click on this button, a pop-up window appears from the top with a transition and also we have a blurred background in the back the pop-up window has a, an input for email and also a join button and also a close uh, icon at the top right when we click on the close icon the pop-up window disappears and also our main website returns to uh, normal and without any filter or blurness we can try it again in the next section we're going to start with the html part of our project so see you in the next section All right, 
let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on the Open folder. I would like to create the project as usual in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click here on the desktop, and we click in, uh, here on the New Folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder, for example, Background Image Scroll effect which is the name of our project we press enter and here we close uh, we click on the select folder button to select the folder we close the get started tab again and on the left side in the explorer section we right click and we click on the new file to create an html file we name the file index dot html and we press enter now on the right side we have our index.html file which is completely empty but we can use an exclamation point to create an html5 boilerplate so we write an exclamation point and we click on the first auto suggestion now we have our html5 boilerplate and the first line is doc type, which tells the browser what version of HTML the page is written in. And in our case, as we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then the HTML tag, which is the top level element inside the HTML5. And uh, we, inside that tag, we have head and body tags. The lang attribute inside the HTML opening tag sets the language of the page. And as we are using English, we just need to have en here. The head tag includes the metadata tags and also the title tag. The chart set attribute inside the meta uh, tag, the first meta tag, sets the HTML character encoding, which is UTF-8, and UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 because it nearly contains all the characters and symbols that may user see in our project. Then we have the compatibility meta tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. The viewport meta tag tells the browser on how to resize the page. Let's use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the codes. The content attribute here inside the viewport meta tag sets the page's width to devices the screen's width and also sets the initial zoom level of the browser to be 100%. Then we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page. In order to see the browser inside the Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview extension. We just need to right click here and we click on the Live Preview Show Preview. Now we have the browser on the right side, which is completely empty, but with the title document. Let's close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left side. And we have now more space on the right side. Let's change this title to our project's name, which is Background Image Scroll Effect. You can see the background image scroll effect 
in the tab of the browser as the title and inside the body section we create a div with a class of background image we just write bg image and we add an id of bg image as well background image this is just an empty div that uh, we're going to use later css to change the background image of this uh, empty div but for now we just leave it like this and then we we have the main container that our website cons uh, uh, text and titles goes there so we just write down dot container and inside this container we have a h1 tag we just say welcome to our website after this h1 tag we're going to have a paragraph that inside it we have just some lauren pick some texts and we're just gonna copy this paragraph a few times to have more text so when we are scrolling we can see the scroll effect this is just a simple uh, website that we're going to use. This is not important. The important part is this background image that we're going to add the zoom and opacity effect using JavaScript to it. In the next section, we're going to start styling our project and add the background image using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we're going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we create a CSS file. Here, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file. We name the file style.css. Before using CSS in our project, we must add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we switch to index.html and just after the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet. And the href attribute here defines the destination of the link. And as both files are located at the same directory, we just need to have styled CSS for the href or the URL. Now we can use CSS in our project. We, we save this file using Ctrl S. We close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left to have more space on the right side. And we go to style CSS and we start from styling the body section of the project. So we just write body and we open a set of curly braces. First, we remove the Default margin, the space around the body section, and we just write margin zero. And we change the font family to sans serif. That was it for the body section. Next, we're going to style the background image div, the empty div. We're going to add some image to it. So we just target it by dot bg image. First, we 
set the height and width we just say hit width 100% and height 100% of the viewport height which means 100% of the screen size you can see now the div at the top it's completely empty but we add a background image to it in order to have the background image i would like to use the website called on splash so we go to desktop we click on google chrome and here in the search bar we search on splash in the search result in the first one we have unsplash.com we click on the unsplash beautiful free images and pictures and in the search bar we search for for example nature All right, and here we can uh, choose one of them. I just choose this uh, image of ocean. So we right click here and we click on copy image address. And we go back to Visual Studio Code and here we add a background property and we use the URL function to add the external image. So we add a double quote here and we paste the link. Now we can see the image on the right side. But uh, we want this image to be fixed at the top. And when we are going down, Yeah, that's fine for now and then uh, later using uh, let's uh, first uh, change the background position to be center so we see the center of the image and we change the background attachment to fixed so as you can see the background became fixed and when we are moving down uh, they don't move we just uh, go to the so this is all right for our project the only things we need to do is just when we're scrolling down we zoom zoom out the image and also change the opacity right so let's install this uh, h1 tag and also the paragraphs here before going to the javascript part so the the here the the div that contains this one it has the class of container so we target that and we change the padding to be 100 pixels to push everything inside uh, we just check this one in the browser yeah the, here it's fine for this size but uh, let's add some media query so we just say media query if the max width is 500 pixels i mean the, when we have a screen a smaller than 500 pixels we want this dot container has only 
like a 10 pixel padding. All right, now it looks fine. When we increase the size, you see that the image like this. That's actually not important. Our website, uh, the design, this, this picture is important that we're going to style later. And let's change the size of this heading. So we target H1 and we just say, we change the font size and we set it to be 50 pixels. We can see in the browser. And as you can see, the image has some uh, repeated effects on the top. We can fix this one by just adding the background. Size. To. For example, 160 percent. And if you check the browser now, now it is actually in the zoom mode and when we are scrolling down, we want to zoom out the image. So we're going to have a, a zooming effect later using JavaScript. Yeah. And let's also increase uh, the paragraph looks fine to me. Just change the color of the paragraph. We set it to be gray. All right. So that was it for the CSS part of our project. In the next section, we're going to add functionality to our project using JavaScript. We're going to add zooming and opacity effect when we are scrolling down the project. So see you in the next section for the JavaScript part of our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the CSS part of our project. We added a background image, and also we styled our main website. In this section, we're going to add functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we need to create a JavaScript file. And here we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. On the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on the new file to create a JavaScript file. We name the file index.js. Before using JavaScript in our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we switch to index.html and just at the end of the body section, we add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the src. As both files, I mean the index.html and the index.js are located at the same directory, we just need to have index.js for the URL. Now we can use JavaScript in our project. First, we save the file using Ctrl S. We close this Explorer section by dragging the line to the left and we go to index.js and we start coding our JavaScript. The first element we, we need to bring is just this uh, background image, which is here, a div with a class of background image and an ID of background image. We can use get element by ID method to return an element with the ID attribute. So inside the JavaScript, file, we just add a constant and we call it background image 
element and we call it to document dot get element by id and the id was background image we can use alt c to turn on the world wrap so we can see all the codes and we want to add add event listener to the window so when we're scrolling we can track the scroll so we just write here window dot add event listener the event we want to add is a scroll and we want this when this event happens a, a callback function triggered and we want to call a function and update the size and also the uh, opacity of the image. So we call a function. We just make a function. We call it update image. And we create the function here. We just call it update image. So in this object image, we're going to target this element, which is this background image. And we're going to change the, first we change the opacity. So we, we're going to change the style. So we just write dot style and we change the opacity. The opacity, we want to start when it's full, uh, we are in the top, we want to have uh, just one, the opacity to be one, and we want to decrease it by when we are scrolling. We can calculate the scroll by just uh, using window dot page y of set. All right, and then we want this number to be divided by a big number like 800. So this number will be smaller than one. And we want it uh, minus one, my, uh, use one minus this number. So now when we're scrolling down, you see the opacity of the background image is changing. We can console log this to see the number. So we just console log two things. The windows dot offset. And also we, uh, one minus windows dot offset divided by 800. So we open the console here using this hamburger icon and open DevTools pane and we go to console section and we scroll down. As we scroll down, you see that the windows Y offset is two something and then the opacity starts from 99% and it's going down when you're scrolling down. And finally, when we reach to the button, you see that uh, the opacity is get going to zero and also getting the minus. And this opacity page offset is 837. So we can choose different numbers so we don't get minus so we can change this one to 900 it depends on the zoom level and the screen size of your but uh, it doesn't matter even the opacity becomes negative all right now we add 
we added the opacity. Let's change the background size. And we start from this 160% background size. So we just target the background image element dot style dot background size. And we change the background size from 160% and we decrease it by this uh, window.page Y offset. And also this one is a percentage, so we should add a percentage at the end. So when we are going down, you see that this one is getting smaller, but this number is uh, very big. So we divide it by, for example, 12. So now we see that the zoom level is okay. We, let's test it inside the real browser, the Google Chrome. So as you can see, when you're going down, the zoom level is decreasing and also we're having more opacity at the top. In different zoom level, we, we can see it as well. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. Uh, we have used CSS to style our background image and fix it at the top. And also we used JavaScript to change the opacity and the background size of the, uh, the background image when we are scrolling down. So see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create drum kits. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have four buttons. And if you press on each button, you can hear the associated kit. For example, if you click on crash, we can hear the crash sound. And also kick, snare, and thump. Also, we have background image for each button. And when we click on the button, we can see an animation in the background image. Another feature of this project is, if we press the first character of the letter, for example, if we press C or K, we can hear the sound as well. For example, now I'm pressing C. Now I press T, S, and K. Also, we see an animation and change in the scale of the button. In the next section, we are going to start with the HTML part of this project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start the project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here, we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click on desktop. Here we click on new folder button to create a new folder. And we name the folder drum kit. We press enter. And here we click on select folder button. We close the get started tab again. 
And here in the left, in the Explorer section, we create an HTML file. We right click, we click on new file, we name the file index.html. And we press enter. Now we have the index.html file on the right side, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to have a HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion. Now we got the HTML5 boilerplate which has doc type, which tells the browser what version of HTML the page is written in. For HTML5, we just need to write HTML here. Then we have a HTML tag, which is the top level element in the HTML file and includes the head and body tags. The length attribute here inside the opening HTML file HTML tag sets the language of the page. In our case, as we want to use the English for our website, we just set it to be EN, which, which, which stands for English. The head tag has meta tags and also the title. The first meta tag is for the HTML character encoding. The UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 for web developers because it contains all the characters and symbols. So uh, the user won't have any problem seeing our page and can see all the characters and symbols. This meta tag tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. And uh, the next one is the viewport meta tag, which tells the browser on how to resize the page. The first part, uh, we can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap to see all the code. Here, the first part is uh, adjusts the width of the page to the device's screen. For example, the mobile screen has a smaller width than the computer screen. Then we have here the initial zoom level of the browser, which uh, is 100% as a default. Then we have the title tag, which uh, change the title of the page, we can see the title in the browser. In order to see the browser inside the Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview ext ex uh, extension that we have installed previously. We just need to right click and click on Live Preview, Show Preview. Now on the right side, you, you can see the browser which is completely empty, but the, the document title. We can change the title here. We, uh, we just write drum kit, drum kits, which is the name of our project. And now we can see the drum kits in the title of the page. Let's uh, add a, a H1 tag here inside the body tag. We write down drum kit. I would like to add an uh, icon here that is similar to drum. I would like to use font awesome for bringing icons to my website. So in order to use the font awesome, we need to just go back to the desktop and we click on Google Chrome. And here we search for font awesome. In the search results, uh, we, we see the fontawesome.com website. 
uh, we can click here on icons we can see a lot of icons here that some of them are pro so we need to pay but most of them are free we, we in the search bar we search drum and we click on the first drum icon which is the free version and here we click on the HTML tag, which is an I tag with a class of FAS, FA drum. We just click to copy the HTML tag. We go back to the VS code. And just after the drum gets here, we had a space and we paste the link using Ctrl V. We can't see the icon yet because we must add a link to the font awesome CDN within the HTML code. So we go back to the browser, we open a new tag to new tab. And here we search for CDN JS. The first website is cdnjs.com. We, uh, we click on this website and here we can search for the font awesome CDN. We write font and we can click here at the first font, the first link. And if you scroll down a little bit, we can click here to copy the link tag. We go back to the VS code and just under the title tag and the, at the end of the head tag, we paste the link. Now we can see the drum icon in the browser. Let's add a container and empty div. So we write dot container and we press enter to accept the auto suggestion. So now we have a div with a class of container and inside this empty container, we add some uh, buttons because uh, we wanna uh, style the buttons after the HTML part. We just uh, make the buttons hard coded now but later we're going to make these buttons using JavaScript. So first we just write button. We add a cl class of BTN and we press enter to accept the auto suggestion. And the first button is uh, we just write snare for the drum uh, drum kit name first drum kit name snare we copy this button three times using alt shift arrow down one two three we just change this snare to for example kick and we have trash or crash sorry uh, and Tom. So we have now our four buttons here. And uh, that was it for the HTML part. In the next section, we are going to start styling the website using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished the HTML part of our project. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So in the Explorer section on the left side, we 
we right click and we click on new file. We name the file as style.css and we press enter. Now we have our style.css file here, but before styling the website using CSS, we need to include a link to this to the CSS file within the HTML code. So sw we switch to the index.html and just after the font awesome tag font awesome link tag we create a link tag and we choose the third auto suggestion the one with the CSS now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet the href here the href attribute defines the destination of the link. As both files, I mean the index.html and the style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have here a style.css. Now we can use CSS in our projects. So we go to the style.css, we start styling uh, the body so we write body and inside a set of curly braces first we remove the space around the body by margin zero we can see that there is no space and for bringing the items to the middle, ver uh, ver uh, I mean horizontally, we need to add a, uh, we need to change the display to flex. As we want the, uh, the, the title and the bottoms to be on the top of each other, we change the flex direction to column because the default is row. Now we can see them on the top of each other and we can use align items center to bring the items to the middle horizontally. After that, we can change the height to be 100% of the viewport height to makes us the ability to bring the items to the middle vertically because the body would be the same size of the viewport height which is the size of the screen and any screen including mobile or desktop screen it doesn't matter the items will be in the middle in order to bring it to the middle we need to use Justify Content Center. All right. Let's change the background color of the body to be, for example, pink. And for the heading and the icon, we target this H1. So here we write H1. And we want the size to be bigger, so we change the font size, for example, 50 pixels. And let's change the, the font uh, to be, for example, uh, in a different font family. So we use the font family, we use impact, We can use Alt C to see all the codes. And uh, let's increase the increase this distance between the characters of the text.
text using letter spacing and we just say four pixels now we have more space between the letters let's change the color to be white and let's add some sh shadow effects around the text using text shadow so we write here text shadow the first uh, value in the text shadow is the position of the uh, position of the vertical shadow which uh, we want it to be two pixels the next one will be hori uh, horizontal shadow we set it to be two pixel as well and we want to set the blur radius to four pixels and the last value of the text shadow is the color of the shadow we want it to be black but with transparency so we use rgba function and we use zero for blue sorry for red zero for green and finally zero for blue which gives us the black color and we we use point uh, three for the alpha value which gives us 30 percent opacity all right that's enough for the uh, title but you can see that when we decrease the size of the screen the title wraps in two lines in order to remove this uh, line wrapping we can use white space no wrap now always the title will be the same in the same line all right let's start uh, styling the buttons so we target the button using its class here the class btn so we write dot btn first we add a padding 30 pixel for the padding top and bottom here and here and 50 pixels for left and right and let's remove the background color we just uh, set the background color to white let's remove the border by using border none and let's add some space around the buttons using margin just say 10 pixels as you can see it's responsive but the buttons are on the left so we can fix it by adding text align center to the parents of the buttons which is this uh, div div with the class of container so we just here we write dot container to target the div and just say text align center to bring them in the middle all right let's increase the size of the text just say font size for example 30 pixels and let's uh, you see that the size of the this button is smaller than the this this one because it has only four characters and this one has five characters so we just change the mean width sorry mean width to 200 pixels so all of them will be in the same 
size. We can add some box shadow as well. First, uh, let's round the border of the buttons by using border radius 10 pixels. And we add the box shadow. Same as the text shadow, the first value is the uh, vertical shadow. I think uh, it's a horizontal shadow because the shadows goes this way and that way. Yeah, that's correct. The horizontal shadow. So we call it, we, we set this one to be zero. The vertical shadow, we want it to be four pixels. So it's Yeah, and we set the blur to be 8 pixels and we change the color transparency by using RGBA 0, 0 and 0 for the black color and 0.3 for 30% transparency. Now we have a beautiful button shadow. Also, we want to add the background image for this button the, the images we want to use uh, if you go inside the and if you download the resources of this project and if you go in the folder you, you see two folders one is images and one is sounds the images has four image four images including crash, kick, snare and tom and the sounds are four audio files including crash, kick, snare and tom. So you just need to copy these two folders. You go inside the folder that you created the project. I created the project in the desktop in this folder and you go any uh, wherever you created the project and here paste the two folders if you go back now to the visual studio code we can see these folders here we want to change the background image firstly we want to make it like a static all the all the uh, buttons has the same background image for example the Tom one and later we're going to use JavaScript to dynamically change the background images one by one. So here we just say background image and we use URL and the URL is images slash tom.png. So we write here images slash tom.png that is suggested here. Now we can see all the background images. Let's increase the size of the image as big as to fit all the uh, container by using background size cover and let's change the color of the snare kick and tom texas so we just say color we make it white but uh, let's change the font family to be for example cursive and let's add some text shadow as well like the same as we use for the h1 so we just write it again, text shadow, two pixels for the position of the horizontal shadow, two pixels for the position of the vertical shadow, and we have four pixels for the blur, and also the color we want to use is black with 
30% transparency. The alpha value, and these are red, green, and blue. All right. The next things we, I want to do is to change the cursor to be pointer. So when we hover on the buttons, we see a point, the hand pointing, a, a pointing hand. And when we hover over the button, we can use the pseudo class hover to change the color of the text. So we just write btn hover and we change the color to be, for example, pink. Now, when we hover over the buttons, we see the difference in the color of the text. And also, when we click on the button, let's change the background size. And we can use active pseudo class. So we just write btn and use the active CSS pseudo class to change the background size of the image, for example, to be 105%. And when we click on them, we see the change in the background size. Yeah, that was it for the CSS part of our project. In the next section, we're going to start adding functionality to the project using JavaScript. So we're going to start uh, create these buttons dynamically using JavaScript and we are going to we're going to add some audio tags as well to hear the sound of these uh, drum kits. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished starting our project using CSS. In this section, we are going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. First, we create a JavaScript file. We go here in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on New File. We name the file index.js and we press Enter. Before adding functionality to our project using JavaScript, we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we switch to the index.html file and just at the end of the body tag, we add a script tag. And we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. As both files I mean the index.js and index.html are located at the same directory. We just need to write index.js for the URL of the link. All right. Let's go back to our index.js file. And first we create an array we just add a const, we name the array kits, and for the first element, we just write down the name of the our uh, kit or instrument. So the first one is crash, the second element is kick, the third one is snare, and the last one is Tom. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the quotes. Now we need to loop through the kits uh, array using for each method. So we just write kits dot for each. The for each method actually triggers a function for each element one by one. 
So, and we can get each element in each, uh, in each loop here. So we just write kit. So we get each kit and we can write our function inside these curly brackets. The one, the things we want to do is to create these buttons using JavaScript dynamically for all the instruments. So first we go back to the index.js and we delete all these buttons that we created hard coded. And we're going to create these buttons using JavaScript here. For creating an element inside JavaScript, we can use a create element method. So we just create a constant and we name the constant btn element for the button. And inside the document, we create an element. The element we want to create is button. So we just write here inside a double code button. Now the buttons is created, but we cannot see it yet because we have to uh, append it as a child inside this div, the div with the class of container. First, we need to return this div inside the JavaScript. So we create a constant. We name the constant container element as the div has a class, we need to return it uh, using query selector method. So we just write document dot query selector. And as the selector is a, coming from a class, we need to add dot here and write down the class name. And the class name is container. All right, now we can append this button inside this container. So here we just write down container element and we use append child method to append btn element to the container element. All right, now we can see the buttons here, but they're not styled yet because in the styled CSS, we use the class btn to style the buttons, but we haven't add any class to the buttons. Uh, for being more clear, let's go to the browser using open in browser. We open the web developer tools using Ctrl Shift C and as you can see inside the, the div with the class of container, we just have four buttons, but they don't have any class. The method we can use to add the class is the class list method inside JavaScript. So we go back to the, our index.js file and just under the create element, we just write btn element dot class list and we use add method to add the class. The class we want to add is uh, btn. So we just write btn here. As soon as we, we write btn, we can see the buttons as styled inside the browser. But still, we, we don't have any text inside the buttons. We can use the, let's, let's first check it inside the browser. Now we have a div with a class of container. Inside the, this div, we have buttons with a class of btn. And here we can add another method that is called inner text. So we just write 
dot inner text and the text we want to add is the elements inside the array for example crash kicks snare on top we are getting these elements here cat so we just write round cat and in for each loop we get one cat and we create the element accordingly so we have crash kick snare on top we can uh, make the first character of each let uh, each word uppercase using uh, text transform capitalize actually so we need to go back to the solid css and in the btn section and at the end we add text transform capitalize and all right we already made the buttons the next things we want to do is to add a, their song for example if we click on crash button we can hear the crash.mp4 mp3 sounds so if you uh, the only things we need to do is just to uh, create another element and the element we want to create is an audio element so we create a constant here we call it audio element and we just create it using create element method and we just inside the parentheses we write down audio so if you go back to the browser inside the dev with a class of container we can see the buttons but we, we cannot see the audio tags and we need to use the append child method again to append this element so we write container element dot append child and the one the child we want to append is the audio element all right let's go back to the browser we open the div with the class of container and now we can see the buttons as well as the audio tags next let's add a source for the audio tags and the source will be uh, sorry inside the image tag we have the our images and inside the sounds folder we have our crash uh, files uh, i mean this uh, the audio files so we added just under this we add the src resource so we just write down audio element dot src and we equal it to this folder and the src will be actually sounds slash and we wanted the the name of this the sounds would be dynamic so we use plus kit and plus dot mp3 so if we go back to the our browser and we we see inside the div we have the audio files and the source is sounds the first one is crash the second one is kick and snare on top let's uh, change the background image as well because the background image is all the same so we go back to the index.js and for the button before appending it we just add the background image so we just need to style it first and dot background image as you can see the the javascript syntax for css properties are different from the css 
In CSS, for background image, we, are, we use background dash image, but in JavaScript, we just connect them together, background image together. And this one would be equal to URL, we open a parenthesis, and this one, we want it to be dynamic, so we just add a plus and kit, and we just say, oh, we need to add the folder as well. So here we just add images slash and kit dot PNG. And also we close the parentheses. So we can see different images, background images for the buttons now. Uh, let's add an event listener to the button. So when we click on the button, we can hear the associated sounds. So here we just write btn element dot add event listener. The event listener, the first parameter is the event. And the event we want to use is click. So we just write click. And the second parameter is a callback function that will be triggered after the event happens. So after we click here, this function will be triggered. So, but the, the, one of the, the things we want to do is just uh, play the song. We just say audio element dot play. And if we now go to the browser and we just close the web developer tools, and if we, let me zoom it a little bit. If we click on the first button, you can hear the song. And second one, snare and tongue. The, the next things I would like to do is to play the sounds when we uh, press C in the keyboard or K or S or T. So we just target to the uh, first letter of each uh, text. And if this uh, key is pressed, we want to play the song. So we go back to the index.js. And just at the end, we add an event listener, in, this time to the window. And the first parameter, which is the event, is key down. It means if someone uh, press the key, this function will be triggered. So we get the function and we want to know which key is pressed. So here we get the event. And if we console log event.key, And you open the console here with using open DevTools pane. And inside the browser, if you press, for example, now I'm pressing S. Now you can see S here or F or H. The reason we have four, because we are in the loop and the loop is has uh, four elements. All right. So instead of console logging, let's add a condition here. We say if the key at the event dot key, which is the key that someone pressed, is equal to the the first letter of the each uh, text. So we can get it here, like just say kit dot slice method. The slice method actually uh, returns to the parts of a string and here for example for crash the first letter is has the uh, position zero and the second one has the position one and if you want to get the first character or letter we just need to write inside a parenthesis zero and one so now we are getting the first letter and we equal it to the, the to the key that someone pressed. And 
we just say if this condition happens, we want to hear the sound. Just we we write down audio element dot play. We go back to the browser, and here now I'm pressing C. You can hear the Christ sound. T. You can hear the Tom sound. But we don't see any animation in the buttons. We can add some animations as well. We can change the scale of the button, for example. So we go to the index.js and here we just change the scale by using a scale function. So we just say btn element dot the transform method. And transform method has the scale function inside it. So we just say scale. And inside a set of parentheses, we just say 0.9. It means 90% of the scale. So if you go back to the browser and now we press C, um, it didn't work. Transform. Oh, we, we missed the style here. Because we are changing the style, we have to write down style first. Now, we go back to the browser, we press C. You see that the scale of the button changed. Now we press K, S, and T. But the, we want the scale come back to normal after a few seconds. Uh, so actually, actually after some milliseconds. So here we added set timeout method. We just say set timeout. Same timeout actually triggers a function after a, a timer is expired. Actually, we can, the first place is a function, the first parameter. So we create the function. And if this function will be triggered after a delay, and then we can set the delay here. For example, we say 100 milliseconds. So we just say after 100 milliseconds, just change the scale to the 100% again. So we just say btn element.style.transform. And we set it to scale again. But this time, the scale would be 100%. So if we go back to the browser. Now I press K. You see the animation the kick, C for crash, and S and Tom. Also, we can click it by the mouse. You see the animation differently. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next project. Welcome to another project. In this project, we are going to create a random image feed. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have six images. And when we refresh the page, we see new random images each time. Also, we have a button at the bottom of the page. So when we click on this button, we can see new images adding to the website. We are going to use a website called Lorem Pixum to get the images. So see in the next section for the HTML part of our project. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. Here, we close the Get Started tab. And in the File menu, we click on the folder. 
simply click on the open folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click on desktop and here we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. We name the file, uh, for example, random photos, which, which is the name of our project. And here we select the folder. We close the get started tab again. And here on the left side, in the explorer section, we create an HTML file. So we right click and we click on new file. We name the file index.html. And we press enter. Now on the right side, we have our index.html file, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to have an HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation mark and we click on the first auto suggestion. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code clearly. Here we have our HTML5 boilerplate, including a doc type, which tells the browser what version of HTML we are using. For HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which is the top level element in the HTML file. The lang attribute here sets the language of the page, and in our case, the language is English. Then we have the head tag and also the body tag. In the head, in the head tag, we have three meta tags and also a title tag. The chart set attribute defines the, this, uh, the HTML character encoding and UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 because it contains all nearly all the characters or symbols. Then we have this meta tag, which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. This viewport meta tag tells the browser on how to resize the page. And the first part actually tells the, uh, sets the pages width to the device's screen. For example, the mobile screen is smaller than a computer screen, so the width will be smaller as well. And then we have the initial zoom level of the page, which is in our case 100%. Then we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page. In order to see the title and the browser inside the Visual Studio Code, we can use the Live Preview extension. So we right click and we click on Live Preview and Show Preview. Here on the right side, we have our browser, which is completely empty, but with the title document. Let's change the title. Let's first actually close this Explorer section by dragging this line to the left. And we change the title to Random Photos. So we can see the random photos in the title section in the bar. Let's uh, decrease the size of the browser. And in the body section, let's add a container which covers all our image in our page. We just say container or just let's, net, uh, let's make it more specific by saying just image container image dash container and here we click on the auto suggestion to have a div with a class of image container for the images i would like to use a website called lorem pixum uh, to get some random images so we go to our desktop and we click on the 
Google Chrome. Here we search for Lorem Pixel and we press enter. Yeah, I missed the S. So in the first result, we have a website called pixum.photos and the, the name of the website is Lorem Pixum. So we click on this website If you read the tutorial, it's so it's very easy to use. You can have this link to have a photo with the size of 200 to 300. If you copy this and we go to a new tab and we paste this link and we press enter, we get a photo. And if you paste it again and we get another photo. If you want the photo to be square and only be, for example, 200 to 200, we can use this link. So we co copy this and test it. We get a square image each time we paste this one on the browser. All right. Sometimes uh, the browser catch the photo and I show you the repetitive image. In order to avoid this, we can add some uh, query at the end and just say random one, random two, and so on. So we always get as the same as a different image. So we we need these kind of tags in our HTML. So we copy these two tags and we go back to our Visual Studio code. So we paste the link and we can see two different images now here. But uh, we don't want the image to be this size. We just want it to be 300 to 300 so we delete the 200 section as you can see now we have two mesh let's add another one so we copy this using alt shift arrow down we change this two to three so we get three images and after this container we add a, a button we add a button with a uh, we had a button with a class of btn and inside the button we want to just write down load more. So here we choose the auto suggestion. So we get a button with a class of btn which saying load more at the end. We are going to use this button to load more images from the website using JavaScript. And also in the next section, we're going to use uh, CSS to style our project. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we're going to style our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And on the right, on the left side, we right click and we click on new file. We name the file style.css and we press enter. Before styling our project using, using CSS, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html file and just under the title tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a link tag 
with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet. The href attribute defines the destination of the link and as we as both files, I mean the index.html and style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to write style.css for the URL. Now we can use CSS in our project. So we save this file and we close this explorer section by dragging this line to the left. So we open this one a little bit and we go to the style.css section. First we start with the body section. So we write body, we open a set of curly braces First, we remove this margin, the default margin, using margin 0. Then we can use display flex to bring the items to the center. Horizontally, we just write display flex. And as you can see, the button uh, came to the right side we can use flex direction column to bring back the item to the end of the screen then we can use align item center to bring the items to the center horizontally as you can see the the button came in the middle but still we have the images uh, on the left side. We can decrease the size of the image to fix this problem. Or yeah, just have this div with a class of image container. So we just say image container. And we can uh, use text align center to bring the all the images and in the center. As you can see, when we open the when we increase the size of the browser, the we have two images, and when we decrease, we have one image. So it's already responsive, and we just need to target the image and just uh, make it more beautiful. Let's change the background color of the body using background color. We just choose the color. I would like to choose a color called brown. No. Yeah, brown color looks fine. Then we change the image, just say image container IMG, we target this IMG tag inside the class with the uh, IMG container. So we can add a margin, just say 20 pixels. Maybe it's too much, just 10 pixels is fine. Yeah. Just uh, change the border radius. We add a border, we round the border of the images using border radius, which uh, we add a 10 pixels border. Let's add some box shadow and we add some shadow shadow effect around the elements so we just, if the first element the first value of the box shadow element box shadow property is the position of the horizontal shadow we set it to be zero and then we have the vertical 
position of a vertical shadow, we set it to be four pixels. You can see the dark here. We set eight pixel for the blur. And the last value is the color of the box shadow. We use RGBA. We use RGBA function and we set 0, 0, and 0 for the red, green, and blue values, which gives us the black color. And then we have alpha, we set it to be 0.3, which is 30% transparency. Let's add some background color. We just say light gray. We cannot see the background color because the, the width and the height of the image is not defined yet. So we just say width to be 300 pixels and height to be 300 pixels as well. So this background color helps when the image is not loaded. It's kind of preloader for the image as well especially when we have too many images we can see the background color all right let's uh install the button here so we start target the class of btn so we just say dot btn we remove the, we just say background color to be, for example, slate blue. We remove the border, border none. And then we add some padding. We just say 10 pixels uh, for the top and bottom padding and 20 pixels for the left and right. Let's add some margin. So we just say 20 pixels margin. You see the button here. Let's change the color of the text to be white. Then let's add some border. Sorry, border. We, we round the border of the button using border radius, just five pixels. And we can add some box shadow as well. So we just say box shadow, 0%, 0 for the horizontal shadow, position of the horizontal shadow, 4 pixels for the position of the vertical shadow, 8 pixels for the blur, and we use the black color and 30% transparency. All right, let's change the cursor to be pointer. So when we hover over the button, we can see a pointing hand. Then also let's use the hover pseudo class. So we change the opacity of the opacity of the button when we hover over it so we just say 90 percent opacity so you see a little bit change all right that's it for the css part of our project in the next section we are going to make these uh, images to come dynamically and when we click on the button we can see more images uh, loading inside our website. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished styling our project using CSS. In this section, we are going to add functionality to our project using JavaScript. We are going to add some uh, add event listener to this button. When we click on this button, we can see new images coming from the 
Lauren picks some websites and we, we keep we can keep loading images on and on. So first we need to create a JavaScript file. So we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E and on the left side we right click and we click on new file. We name the file index.js and we press enter. Before using JavaScript in our project, we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just at the end of the body tag, we add a script tag. We just add sc and we click on the second auto suggestion. SRC defines the destination of the link. So as we have index.html and index.js in the same directory, we just need to write index.js for the URL. Now we can use JavaScript in our project. The first things uh, we need to do is to bring this div with a class of image container and return it inside the JavaScript inside a constant so we can add new images using a create element method. Because the, the, we have class here, we need to return the element using the query selector method. So we go to the in, index.js we create a constant and we call it image container element. And we just write document dot query selector to return the element. And the, sele the CSS selector is dot image container as the same as here. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap so we can see all the code. And also we can close this Explorer section to be, so we can see the code clearly and we have more space for our browser. The other things we need to bring is this button so we can add some event listener to the button. The button has a class of btn so it's the same as above. We just create a constant and we just say btn element and we change we add the document that query selector and inside a set of parentheses we add dot btn for the class CSS selector. All right. So we add it. Uh, we add the event listener to this button first. We just say btn element dot add event listener. The event we want to add is click. So when someone click on the button, we want to trigger a function. We just add the function here. In order to see that it's working, we can use log console log and then we just say clicked. So we open the console using this hamburger uh, icon and we click on the open dev tools pane. So in the console section, now if we click on the button, we can see clicked each time we click. So we create a function here. We just say add new images. And the, the things this function does to add more images to our container. So Uh, for in order to create an image image element, we just need to use the create element method. So we just say new 
image new img element we just say document dot create element and the elements we want to create is img and the sources for the new uh, the img because the img has a source attribute so the source will be so we just say new ele image element dot src equal to it would be the same source but we want to change this random number so we copy this we copy the first link and we put it here but we put it inside a set of backtick so we can do this number randomly so instead of one we just create a variable using dollar sign and open a set of curly braces and we just create a random number we using math dot random and the number we want to create the number between for example 0 and 2000 so we multiply it to 2000 but this number is now actually because this is a random number between 0 and 1 so this number is not uh, like a uh, rounded in order to create uh, to round the number we need to wrap this inside the math dot floor so in this case the number would be between uh, 0 and 2000 so now we create the image and we set this src now we can add it to inside the container we just say container uh, image container element that we uh, we got here dot append child so we're gonna append the child which is this new image and we write down new image here to append it as a child so the things we do here when we click on the button we we call this function add new images so now we have three images when we click on the load more we see one more image coming each time we click in order to see more images we can add instead of adding only one image we can put this one inside a loop uh, a for loop so we just create a for loop uh, let me do it again so you just write for and we click on for loop or auto suggestion and now we have a uh, index which is from zero and it should be until the number of images we want so we just say image number and we set this image number before calling the function we just say let image number to be for example 10 so in this case we're going to create 10 images and inside this instead of this constant we put our function so we control x the function and we paste it here so now each time we click on the load more we get 10 more images it's not working now let me check the reason is not working because we set this uh, variable as a lead and this variable is not access accessible outside this function we just need to delete this lid now when we click on the load more we get 
10 new images each time. So let's increase the number of images we have at the beginning to, for example, six. So we just copy this three more times using Alt, Shift, and Down Arrow. One more time, we just change this to four. five and six so let's open this in the browser uh, using this hamburger sign and click on open in browser so when the the image is loaded when the uh, uh, let me close uh, decrease the size so when the uh, page is loaded at the beginning we have six images and when we click on the load more, we can see each time more images are loading. And we never get a repetitive image because we are creating the random number between uh, 0 and 2000. Actually, it's possible to get the repetitive image, but it's less likely. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned new things. See you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create an image slider. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have an image slider that automatically changes every, for example, five seconds. Then we have two buttons here, the previous and the next button. As you can see, when we click on the button, we go to the previous image. And when we reach to the first image, we go to the last one. And also here, when we reach to the last image, we go to the first one. Also, we have a very beautiful box shadow and beautiful icons from Font Awesome. In the next section, we're going to start our project by doing the HTML part of the project. And then we're going to continue styling our project using CSS. And finally, we add the functionality to the project using JavaScript. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. And here we close the Get Started tab. In the File menu, we click on Open Folder. And we create our project uh, wherever we want to do. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click on desktop. And here we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. And we name the folder image slider, which is the name of our project. We press enter and we choose the select folder. We close the get started tab again. And here on the left in the explorer section, we right click and we click on new file. We create an HTML file and we name the file index.html. Here on the right side, we see our file index.html, which is completely empty, clearly. And we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate. 
So we write an exclamation mark and we choose the first auto suggestion. We can use Alt C to turn on the word wrap to see all the codes. And here we have the doc type, which tells the browser what version of HTML the page is written in. And in our case, we are using HTML5. So we just write HTML here. Then we have the HTML tag, which covers the head section and the body section. The lang attribute here sets the language of the page. And in our case, it's English. Then we have the head tag that includes meta data tags and the title. The first metadata defines the HTML encoding characters. So here we are using UTF-8, which is recommended by HTML5. And because it contains all the characters and the symbols nearly contains all of them. The next metadata uh, tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. And uh, the viewport metadata tells the browser on how to resize the page. The first part of this meta tag is uh, just uh, telling the browser to set the width to the device's width. I mean, uh, if the device is mobile, the width will be smaller than the computer screen. The second part uh, initialized the, the zoom level of the page. And in our case, it's 100%. Then we have the title tag, which is the title of our page. We can see the title by opening the browser. We can see the browser inside the Visual Studio code by using the live preview extension that we have installed previously. So we right click and we click on new, uh, sorry, on live preview, show preview. Now we can see the browser on the right side with the title document, which comes from here. We can change the title. Let's change it to be uh, image slider, which is the name of our project. We can see it here. And in the body section, let's add a container image container for our, actually just call it a slider container. So it's a div with a class of slider container. Just make this one small. And we click on the auto suggestion to get the div. Let's close this explorer section by dragging this line to the left. And inside this div, uh, we make another div for covering all the images. So we call the div, uh, we call the class of the div image container. And we press enter to accept the auto suggestion. And inside the image container, we're going to have some image tag or IMG tag. And for the SRC, we are going to use a website called Lorem Pixel. So let's go to the desktop. We click on the Google Chrome browser. And here we search for Lorem Pixel. So we just Lorem pick some. Yeah, I missed the S here, but it's fine. Uh, we have to click on the pick some dot photos here. Lauren pick some. 
this this is actually a website that we don't need to sign up to get the images and it's based on the unsplash website so the 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 good things about this website so we don't need to sign up or get an api key or some sort of things and for example here if you want to get a random image of 200 to 300 uh, you can just write down this one. So if you just copy this and test it here, we see we're getting a image. And if we paste it again, you get another image. So that's a random, but I would like to choose a, a specific image. For a specific image and not a random one, we just need to add an ID and just put a number. There are plenty of images in this uh, website. If you check here, the list of all images, they have uh, too many images. And these are the IDs of the image. If you use the ID one, you get this image, 10, you get this, and so on. Uh, there are plenty of images, like uh, thousands of images. So we just copy this link using Ctrl C and we go back to the Visual Studio code. And here in the SRC attribute, which is the destination of the link, we paste the link. Now we can see the image here. For the alt section, we just say image, alternative one. So for the size, I want it to be like a 500 pixels width and uh, 300 pixels height, so this size. And we just need to copy this four or like three more times to have four images. A anything you like, it's a dynamic website whatever image you add it goes inside this slider so we copy this using alt shift arrow down three times one two three but all the images are similar but we just can change the id here we just say for example for the first one we just use the id one yeah, i mean the second one and uh, for the third one, we just use 10. And for the last one, we just use, for example, 20. So we got four different images. And if these images are sp specific. If you refresh the browser, we always get the same images. So they are not randoms. All right. And... Uh, Outside this div with the class of image container, I would like to add two buttons like arrow, arrow buttons, so we can uh, slide right or left. For using, uh, for having the arrow, where I would like to use the website called Font Awesome. You probably know about it. So in the new tab, we just search font awesome. And here in the search result, the fontawesome.com website, we click on icons. And here you can, you can see a lot of icons as they claim is seven. 1864 icons so we just search for angle and the the one we want to use is a double angle so this one actually the right and left one so first we copy the right one so we click on the icon the angle double right 
and we can see the HTML tag here, which is a, which is an I tag with a class of FAS and FA for the font awesome. The FAS is a font awesome solid and we have FA angle double right. So we copy this, you, uh, we clicking by clicking out on it, we can copy it. And we go back to the Visual Studio code uh, and we paste it just uh, outside the image container. So we can we cannot see it yet because we have to uh, get the we have to add a link to the font awesome CDN inside the HTML code at the top. So we just in the new tab we search for CDN JS and we click on the first link cdnjs.com and inside the search bar we can search for the font awesome cdn so we just say font awesome and in the first link we we click on the first link and we scroll down a little bit and we click here to copy the link tag We go back to the Visual Studio code and just under the title tag and at the end of the head tag, we paste the link using Ctrl V. Now we can see the arrow here, the, which is the right one. And we just can copy this tag using Alt Shift arrow done and we change the first one to left so now we have two icons the left and right uh, the, for styling this uh, this icon we need to add some class to it so we just for both of them we we use control to select both and uh, we add a class of VTN for both of them. And we press escape. And for the first one, we, we choose, we add prev uh, for the previous uh, button. And uh, for, the, for this one, we just say next. All right. Yeah, that was it for the HTML part section. And in the next section, we are going to use uh, CSS to style our project and make this a slider looks look better. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished the HTML part. In this section, we are going to start styling our project using CSS. First, we need to create a CSS file. So here we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E. And here on the left, we right click and we click on new file. We name the file style.css. And we press enter. Before styling our project using CSS, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just under the link tag for the font awesome, we add a link tag. We just write link and we select this third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we have a 
link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet. Here, href defines the destination of the link and as both files, I mean the index.html and the style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to write style.css. Now we can use CSS in our project. Let's close this explorer section by dragging this line. And we go to the style.css. So let's first uh, like a install the container, the container tag here. In the body section, we have a slider container which covers everything. Let's uh, confine all the images inside that so we can see the uh, styling of the body. So before uh, styling the body, so we just just say slider container. And we just set the width to 500 pixels, which is the width of the images, and the height to 300 pixels. And in order, we now we have the container here, uh, but we can see other images because the over uh, we have to use uh, overflow hidden to remove the other images from the container. So now we can only see the first image because the other images are outside the container and they are removed by using overflow hidden. So let's style the body now. We can see the changes. So first we remove the space around the body using margin zero. And we use display flex to be able to bring the container to the center horizontally. So we just use justify content center to bring it to the middle. And we can set the height of the page to be a hundred percent of the viewport height. I mean the 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 hundred percent of the screen size, but from here to here. Now we can bring the items to the middle vertically using align items center. All right. Let's continue the uh, styling. Oh, first, let's change the background color to wheat color. And let's change the Let's continue styling the sli slider container. Just add some border radius. So we round the border of the container. We set it to be 10 pixels. You can see the uh, borders here. Let's add some box shadow to, uh, to add some shadow effect to the container so just say box shadow the first value of the box shadow is the position of the horizontal shadow and we set it to be zero next one is the position of the vertical shadow we set it to five uh, four pixels we can see it here and we set the blow radius to eight pixels and we change the RGBA. Yeah, I mean, we want to add the black color, but we want it to have 30% opacity. So we just uh, we use RGBA function. Sorry about that. So we open a parenthesis. We just write zero, zero, zero for red green and blue blue and for the alpha value we just say point 
3, which is which means 30% opacity. Let's use Alt C to turn on the world wrap so we can see the code clearly. And yeah, that was it for the box shadow. And for the next div, which is the image container, let's change the image container Uh, we just say display to flex. We want to bring the images next to each other. We cannot see the images yet because the, we are using overflow hidden. We remove the overflow hidden, just temporary. Uh, now you can see all the images next to each other because we are using display flex, but this is our main container. The, the things we want to do in the JavaScript is to change the uh, transform property that uh, the translate x prop uh, translate x actually function. So we just say we just test it here. We just say transform translate x, and now the the translate x is zero. And we have the image here. If we just change it to minus 500 pixel, which is the width of the image, we see the next image inside our container. And if we change it to 1000, go to the third one, 1500 goes to the last one. We want to do this using JavaScript, so we delete this. And we bring back the overflow hidden here. So we don't see the other images. And let's bring the, the buttons that we, the arrow icons. So we just target the BTN class, which we were added to both of the uh, but, uh, icons, the eye tags. So we add BTN for both of them. So we style that, we just say dot btn and we change the uh, position of it to be absolute. So we bring it inside the container. So you, you, you could see it here, but we want this uh, position to be absolute related, uh, relative to the parent, which is the container, a yeah, slider container. So we, we have to change the position of the slider container to relative. So now we could see the, if you refresh it, you can, you can see the uh, icons inside the container. So we can bring it up by changing its top position. We just say top 50%. So we bring it here and it's outside. Let's change the color to be white so we can see them better. Yeah. Let's change the font size and make, make them bigger by setting it to be, for example, 20 pixels. The default is 16 pixels. And It's not, it, we, we use the top 50%, but it's not in the middle completely because the top 50% actually bring the top edge of the icons to the middle, if you can see it. So in order to bring the middle of the icons to the middle, we need to ch use a transform property, translate function, translate X function, and we set it to be, sorry, to translate Y function. And we set it to be minus 50%. Now we can see the icons exactly in the middle. Let's change the opacity of these icons to 50%. So we cannot see them completely. And uh, for the left and right, so we, we used prev and next 
classes so we target them here we just say btn dot let's set uh, first we style the pre one and we just say left we set it to left 10 pixels and for the next one dot next we set it to be in the right side so we just say right 10 pixels so we now we see the icon left in the position of the 10 pixel of the left of the container its parent its parent and also the right one in the right side 10 pixels uh, far from the edge of the container let's ch uh, change the opacity to 100 percent when we hover over it and also let's uh, change the cursor to be pointer so when we hover over the icons we see the pointing hand instead of the no normal cursor all right so we we use the hover css pseudo class to target the the hovering effect and we change the opacity to 100 percent by just setting it to be one now when we hover over the icons we see them more uh, less clear uh, like a more clear and with less opacity all right that was it for the ht uh, i think that was it for the css part in the next section we are going to start adding functionality to the project using javascript and we're going to add functionality to the icons when we click on the icon for example right one we see the next image and uh, when we click on this we click the previous one and also we want to add some timer to the project so the images automatically changes after for example 200 or 300 uh, sorry to three three thousand milliseconds or three seconds so see you in the next section all right in the last section we have finished styling our project using css in this section we are going to start adding functionality to our project using javascript first we need to create a javascript file so in the left side we open the explorer section using ctrl shift e and we right click and we click on new file we name the file index.js and we press enter we move this file by dragging it and bring it to this section to see the browser here and we close this explorer section we don't need them before using javascript in our project we need to add a link to the index.js file within the index.html code so we go back to the index.html and just at the end of the body section we add a script tag we just write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion the one with the src as both files, I mean the index.html and the index.js are located at the same directory, we just need to write index.js for the URL in the src attribute. All right, now we can start styling, uh, we can start adding functionality using JavaScript. So we go to the JavaScript file the first uh, element we need to get is the this button element the 
So in the index.html, we see we have two icons, one with the class of pre and one is next. The one we want to target is the one with the next one. We want to add the event listener. So when we click on it, we see the next image. So in the index.js, we target the next class. We just write const, we make a constant. We name the constant next element. And we just write document dot query selector because the we have a class here. We want to target the class. We need to return this element using query selector and inside a set of parentheses, we just need to add the class name, uh, but with dot because it's uh, the CSS selector of the class is dot. So we just write dot next. We can use Alt C to see all the codes and turn on the word wrap. So we press Alt C and we add an event listener to the next element. So we just write next element dot add event listener. The add event listener method actually attach an event handler to an element. And it has two parameters. The first parameter is an event. And uh, the event we want to use is click. So we just write click in a double quote because we, it's, it should be an, a string. And the next parameter of an add event listener is a function, actually a call function, callback function. So we make an arrow function. So this function will be triggered when this event happens. So inside this uh, set of curly braces, we can write down our statements. So first, uh, let index the number of images. Uh, we just say, we make a variable and just say current image. We just say current IMG and we set it to one. So the first image would be one. And when we click, someone click on the link here, we want to add one number to this current image. So we just add current, sorry, current image plus plus to increment current image one each time someone clicks on it. So after this, we need to update the image. So we make a, a function here. We call a function here and we create the function down below. So we just write function and we name the file function. We name the file function update img. Sorry. So the things we want to do is to just, uh, as I mentioned in the last section, we're going to use transform translate X to see the next image. So we want to target each image and we need to first uh, in inside the, as you can see in the style the CSS, in the image container, if we add transform translate x, for example, minus 500 pixels, we get the next image. So in order to do this in JavaScript, first delete this one, first we need to target this uh, container, image container, which is inside the index.html here. So we return this one using uh, query selector method. So we make a constant and we call it image con container element. And we use the method document dot 
query selector and inside the set of parentheses we just use the image container class name now we got this and we can change the style as we did here using the style method so here we just write image container and we change the style by just adding dot style and the method we want to use is uh, the method we want to use is transform and we equal it to just say translate x and minus 500 pixels and now if you click here we see the next image but we're just seeing the next one because we just used minus 500 pixels if you want to see the the uh, the third one you just have to add thousand pixels so just pay attention for the how we uh, style as you can see the javascript syntax for styling is a little bit different from the uh, in the css so in order to have the dynamic uh, dynamics pixels to we can go using this current uh, sorry current image index to see the next image we can use the backtick instead of the double code we just say backtick we change this one to backtick and instead of this thousand we add a dollar sign open a set of curly braces and inside this we just say current image index but we have to multiply it to 500 But if we click now, we see the third image instead of the second image. At, uh, the reason we see the third image because the current image index is one and we incremented one and it becomes two and two multiplied to 500,000. In order to fix this one, we can uh, just add a parenthesis here and m minus this one to one so as a default the current image is one so here's zero and we have zero pixels that is the first image and when we press next this one is two 2 minus 1 is 1 and 1 mul uh, multiplied to 500 is 500 so we can go next next and but after the last image we see nothing because we are going outside the images so we have to limit this current image index so here at the top we add a state uh, condition we just say if the current image is more than the number of images how we get the number of images we have to re, uh, target the image uh, image tag actually inside the javascript so here at the top we just say count all the images we just say img imgs elements we just say document dot query selector all and the elements we want to get is the img tag so this method actually returning all the images and put it them inside this and if you console log this we just say log and we console log this and see it in the console in order to see the console we just need to click on this hamburger and we click on open dev tools and uh, 
we just need to save and just add a semicolon here so this is 17 we have an error here yeah we didn't finish this one yet so that's why we're getting an error so we first we just delete this one so don't get the error so now we console log the images element we got four elements and the length is four so uh, we delete this console log and we add the condition again we just say if current image index is more than images element dot length which is this one four if this one is more than four just bring it to the beginning just say current image is equal to one so when we click on this button and we go to the next image and when we go to the last one we go back to the first one Let's add some transition to the to the image. So when we go to the next one, we see some transition. So inside installed CSS in image container, we add a transition on transform property that we use inside the JavaScript file, and we just say do it in five, uh, point 0.4 seconds and in is and out way now if we go to the next image we see the transition and in the last image we go back to the first image let's do this trick for the this button as well the previous one the previous icon has the class of Prev. So we target this first inside the JavaScript. So we go up. We just say const preview previous element. And we just use the query selector method to target the class. The, tar the class was prev. And the CSS selector is dot for the classes so we just say dot prev and just under this function we added this function for the prev element we just say dot add event listener and the, the event we want to add is the same as the next one and it's click and we add a function that will be triggered when the event happens. Here is the opposite of the next. Instead of in incrementing, we should decrement and decrease one number from the current image. So we just say current image minus minus, and we update the image. So when we go next, we can come back using previous one. But here, if we click in the first image, we go, we don't go actually anywhere. But we have to uh, decrease it. So we go to the uh, last image actually. So we add a else if here, and we say if the current image is less than one so we just set the current image to the number of images which is the last image which is the images dot length so we did the opposite of the next one so we go back we see the last image we go next we see the first image now we want to add a timer so we see this effect 
like automatically when someone comes to our uh, website we see the next image like every three seconds or so for doing so we just add a time set uh, set timeout method we just say set timeout and we set timeout actually sets a timer which uh, triggers a function after the timer expires so it has two parameters the first one is a function and the last one is the delay or the timer so we just say three seconds we just say three thousand millisecond which is three second and we say that increase the num current image number one and call this image update image function so when the function triggers and we have to actually call the function at the top so we just say update image so when the the when the code reach this uh, line call this function when it finish reading the function it it comes to this point and after three uh, seconds this this function inside will be triggered and the number of the current image increases the index increases and the uh, function will be triggered again and this loop is going to happen on and on forever as you can see here but the problem is when you press the next or previous button too much this timer uh, is going to call more than one time and we are when we are having more than one timer at a time so in order to fix this we should to reset the timer each time we click on these buttons there is a method called clear set timeout so we can use for uh, resetting the set timeout method we, first we need to uh, actually create an, a variable called for example timeout and we equal this set timeout to this timeout And each time we click on the buttons, for example, next or previous, after increasing the number, we should clear the timeout method. But well, which timeout? Which uh, timeout method? The one that has the name timeout. So we, we, we set here. So we just, inside the parentheses, we write timeout. And we have to do this one for the previous one as well. So we just say clear timeout, the timeout variable. So now, if someone comes to the website, see the slides working, and we just need to, when they press, go next, previous. And the timer is reset, so it's not working and not interrupting us. And when we finish clicking, the timer starts working again. Also, we can now increase the number of images as well. So with no problem, we just need to copy this image using, for example, Alt Shift arrow down. And we change the ID to, for ex uh, ID, for example, this one 200. So just if you can see that uh, automatically it's going to show us five images instead of four images you see the the fifth one and also it works with the uh, button as well so we can easily increase or decrease the number of images and the the project is still going to work because we made it dynamically using the length method because we are getting the number of 
all images instead of just writing down four here or five. Yeah, that was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned new things. So see you in the next project. Welcome back to another project. In this project, we are going to create a dark mode toggle. As you can see from the final version of the project, we have a toggle button here. And as we switch it on, we go to dark mode. And if we switch back, we go back to the light mode. Also, we see a very beautiful animation, a sliding mode. We're going to learn keyframe CSS query to create such a beautiful animations. Also, we're going to use JavaScript to change the background color when we switching on and off. Also, we are going to save these modes inside the local storage of the browser. So in the dark mode, when we refresh the page, we can see still the browser is in dark mode. And if we switch it back to light mode and refresh the page, we still have the light mode. So the user can see always the same mode when they come back to our website later. In the next section, we're going to start with the HTML part of our project. So see you in the next section. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. We close the Get Started tab, and in the File menu, we click on Open Folder. I would like to create the project in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So here we click on Desktop, and here we click on the new folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder dark mode toggle, which is the name of our project. We press enter and we click here to select the folder. We close the get started tab again and on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on new file to create an HTML file. We name the file index.html and we press enter. As you can see now on the right side, we have our index.html file. We can use an exclamation mark to have an HTML5 border plate. So we write an exclamation mark and we choose the first auto suggestion. We can use Alt Z to turn on the word wrap so we can see the codes clearly. As you can see, now we have a doc type which tells the browser which version of HTML the page is written in. In our case, because we are using HTML5, we just need to have HTML here. Then we have an HTML tag, which covers the head and the body tags. The length attribute here sets the language of the page. And as we are using English, we just write EN here. Then we have the head tag, which has three meta tags as well as a title tag. The chart set attribute defines the HTML character encoding and UTF-8 is recommended by HTML5 for all, new, all web developers because it nearly covers all characters and symbols and the user who is uh, uh, seen our website won't have any problem reading the characters or symbols. Then we have this meta tag which tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine which is Edge. 
This meta tag, uh, the viewport meta tag, tells the browser on how to resize the page. The first part, I mean this part, tells the browser to set the width of the page to the device's screen. So in, when someone is seeing our website inside a mobile, the width of the screen will be the same size of the mobile and will be smaller when the, someone is using a computer screen. Then we have here the initial zoom level of the page, which in our case is 100%. Then we have the title tag, which sets the title of the page. In order to see the browser inside the Visual Studio code, we can use the Live Preview extension. So we right click here and we click on Live Preview, Show Preview. Now we have the browser on the right side with the title document. We can close this Explorer section so we can have more space for coding and seeing the browser. Let's change the title to be the same as the name of our folder, which is dark mode toggle. You can see it here as well inside the title bar. Then in the body section, we, we, uh, we set an uh, input with a type of checkbox. We don't need to any name for it. The ID will be dark mode. And we have a class of input as well. So we can uh, style it inside the CSS using this class. After this, we have a label for this input. And because the ID is dark mode, so it should be for dark mode. Then this label has a class of label as well. And inside this label, we have a div with a class of circle. Actually, this circle is an empty circle. So we're going to design it later using CSS. So when we click on the button, we see a circle is moving to the right and vice versa. That's it for the HTML part. In, this, in the next section, we're going to start styling our toggle button using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished the HTML part of our project. We added a input with a class of checkbox, as you can see in the browser. We added a label, and inside the label, we added div with a class of circle. In this section, we are going to start using CSS for styling our project. First, we need to create a CSS file. So here, we open the Explorer section using Ctrl Shift E, or you can use View and click on the Explorer. I use just a shortcut, Ctrl Shift E. So on the left side in the Explorer section, we right click and we click on New File to create a CSS file. We name the file style.css and we press Enter. Before using CSS in our project, we need to add a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just under the title tag and at the end of the head tag, we add a link tag. We just write link and we click on the 
third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. Now we can use CSS in our project as we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML, HTML code and the external style sheet, which is a style.css. And the href, ref, uh, href attribute defines the destination of the link and as index.html and style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to have style.css without any path. So we save the file and we go back to the installed CSS to start styling our project. First, we style the, this uh, label with a class of label. So we can see it and starting doing something. So we just say label because it, it's a class, we need to add a dot here and we open a set of curly braces. We just give it a width of 80 pixels and height of 40 pixels. We cannot see it yet because the color is white. So let's change its background color to light gray and uh, can't see it yet yeah everything looks fine let's check this label and this is label too Yeah, let's uh, position this one absolute. So because we put it inside this uh, inside body, in order to give it to width and height, we need to have a, a absolute positioning. So now we can see the label here and let's change the border Let's add some border to it to make it round. So we add border radius, just say half of this 40 pixels. So we get a completely round on the corners. So we get 20 pixels, you can see. Let's uh, in, uh, make this checkbox invisible by just targeting the here to target targeting this class class of inputs so here we target the class of input and we just say visibility hidden here we, we choose the second auto suggest and let's bring this one to the middle by styling the body section. So we just write body. We change, uh, we remove the margin in the body. Default margin, we just say margin zero. We connect them to the top. And we just change the display to flex. And then by changing the display to flex, we can bring it to the center horizontally using justify content center. And we can set the height to be 100% of the viewport height and using align item center to bring it to the middle horizontally. Uh, sorry, vertically. So everything looks fine. Let's uh, uh, let's do this there uh, with the class of circle. Let's uh, style it. We just say circle. We just give it to width of 
34 pixels. Let's change the background color to see it. We just say red. And we give it a height of 34 pixels as well. We can see it here. And let's make it rounded by using border radius 50%. And we set it to top to be three pixels but we should set the position to be absolute. Now, the reason we choose the width and height to be 34 pixels is because we have 40 pixels for the height of the label. If we subtract 40 minus 34, we have six pixels left and we have three pixels at the top and three pixels at the bottom. So we, we keep the circles exactly in the middle. We also need to bring it from the left three pixels. So we now have the circle exactly in the middle. Now we can change the color to white. So we have a beautiful toggle now. All right. Now we want to change the color when we click on it. First, we change the cursor to be pointer so when we hover over the label we see a pointing hand and we say if this label if this input we have is checked so when it's checked we want to change the color of the label firstly we just say if something happened then change the label to be, for example, has a background color of salmon color or yeah. So when we click on it, we see the changing in the color of the salmon. The next thing is I want to this circle to move to the right side when we click on the label. So we need to add an animation to the circle when this one happens. So in order to add an animation, we just need to add a keyframe. So we just say keyframe and we name the animation, for example, uh, just a toggle on or going fr from the left side to the right side, just say 0%. And we change the transform translate X to when when is 0%, we just say 0. And we copy this and we change this one when it's 100% to be at the end, which is the, as, as you can see here, we have 80 pixels. We have 80 pixels, but the, but this one has 34 pixels and we want this to be three pixels in this side as well. So we just set 40 pixels here, which is enough. So we turn on Alt-C to see all the code. And we just set this one for the coming back as well, for the off, target, uh, toggle off. So when we click back, so it comes back. And this should be opposite. This one should be 40 pixels, and this one should be zero. So let's add the animation, but adding the Condition here, we just say input checked and the label inside the label we have a circle. So we just say darkle dot circle. And this circle should have the animation, which is the toggle on when we 
toggle on and the animation du duration is 0.4 second and it should be linear and toward uh, forwards now we click we see that the this one is moving toward the right side the reason we use forward if you delete forward you see when we click it goes to the end and come back to the original place but when we use forwards when we click the circles goes and stays at the end but we want this animation when we click uh, on the in this position when we click we want this circle to go back so we just uh, add the animation in the circle this is a slide off uh, sorry the toggle off yeah toggle off 0.4 second and linear and also forward so we have now the cool animation the next things we're going to do is to add javascript so when we click on this mode we see a dark mode in the body section and also we want to save this mode inside the local storage of the browser so when we someone comes to our browser one time and turn on the dark mode each time he comes back to the website see our website in dark mode so see you in the next All right, in the last section, we have finished with the uh, styling our project using CSS. We made a cool animation for our toggle bar. And in this section, we're going to add functionality to our project using JavaScript. We're going to change the uh, background color of the body to the dark mode when we, we, when we toggle on and we uh, change it back to the white or uh, daytime mode when we toggle off also we're gonna save this mode inside the local local storage so when a user comes to our website several times always see the same dark mode in our in our website so first we need to create a javascript file so on the left side in the explorer section we right click and we click on new file to create a javascript file we name the file index.js we bring this in this uh, window and as you may know before using javascript we need to add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just at the end of the body tag, we add a script tag. So we write sc and we click on the second auto suggestion, the one with the src. As both files, I mean index.html and index.js are located at the same directory, we just need to write index.js for the URL. Now we can use JavaScript in our project. First things we need to bring to our JavaScript file is this, this uh, input. So we want to know this input is checked or not. So it has a class of input and for returning a element with a class, we can use a query selector method. So here inside the JavaScript file, we create a constant 
and we just say input element and we just inside document we add a query selector method and inside a set of parentheses we just write dot input so we get the input we can use alt c to turn on the word wrap so we can see the code clearly if we console log now the input element we just say input element and we open the console using this hamburger icon and open dev tools pane and inside console we get the input which is checkbox if we check if this input is in the check mode or not we can just add dot checked and as you can see as default is false if you refresh the page we see that always it's false all right when it in the false mode we want this uh, uh, we want this body to be in the white mode and when it's uh, true we want it to be dark so we add a function here we just say function and update for example body and we just say if the inputs dot checked is true so this this is true then we want to change the body's body elements we we haven't imported the body in our javascript yet because the body is only a tag which we can use query selector as well we just say const body element we add a document dot query selector and inside a set of parentheses we just write body all right so we set the body we change the body the background color of the body by using a style method and dot just say background and we set it to be if it's checked we want it to be black and if not we want this body element dot the style dot uh, background to be white all right so now the check is false but if we change this input we just say input dot checked equal to true so and we call this function we just say update body you see the background color of our body became black and we have, if we change this true to false we get the white color And also, we can add an event listener, the click, uh, the, the change event listener to this toggle mode. So when we toggle on, we we update the body based on the this uh, checking status. So here we add a, we bring this uh, toggle. The toggle class is this one. The label delay uh, yeah sorry the input yeah we, we already import uh, return the input so we add a event listener to the input just say input element dot add event listener the event we want to check is just the input and we are gonna trigger a function when the input change from false to true or true to false 
We, the only things we need to do is just update the body. We call this function here. So when we turn on, you see we go to the dark mode and when we turn it off, we go to the dark, uh, uh, day mode or light mode. All right. So let's add some transition to the body so we can see this one more beautiful. So we just say transition 0.4 seconds. So when we turn on, we see a transition in the color. The next things uh, I would like to do is to add this turn on and turn off mode to the local storage and save this uh, true or false. So when we turn on, uh, when we when someone comes to our website for the second time, uh, based on his previous setting, he gets he see our website. So we just need to update our. We make a function. We call it update local storage we just need to save we just use local storage dot set item method and the item we want to save we just call it mode and we need to save this input dot check as a string because in this, in local storage you cannot save the boolean things like true or false. So we just use JSON dot stringify method. I don't know what happened. A string. Yes, sorry, JSON should be capitalized dot stringify method and we the things we want to stringify is this input input element dot checked so here we write input element dot checked so if inside the web developer tools and applic inside the application and we go to the local storage and we choose our website. So when we click on this one, so oh, we need to call this function too. So inside the add event listener, after updating the body, we need to update the local storage too. So when we click on this button, we see that we have a key here with the name of mode and the value is true. When we turn it off, it, become, it becomes false. So when we put it in true and when we refresh the page, this one stay, stays true, but we have to call it at the top instead of just saying input element that check false we need to, we need to call the local storage so we just say local storage dot get item instead of set item and the item we want to get is mode all right true but this one is in the uh, is is a string we want to change it back to the boolean so we need to use json dot parse to return the json from the when first we, we use the stringify to to turn it to a string now we need to use parse to bring it back so now as you can see the mode is false we can turn it on to true and someone comes to our website again and refresh the page, it still see our website in the dark mode, as you can see here.
let's uh, install this button in a better way so instead of using salmon color let's use the white color in the dark mode and let's change the circle the color of circle the background color of circle to black in the dark mode so now we see a more beautiful button in the dark mode and in the light mode that was it for our project i hope you enjoyed and many uh, learned many things see you in the next project all right welcome to another project in this project we are going to create an auto text effect animation as you can see from the final version of our project, we have a typing effect here which shows the careers of the person. We are going to create these typing effects using JavaScript and as you can see, the careers change after each other. For example, the first one is YouTuber, then we have Web Developer, Freelancer, and finally, we have an instructor. An instructor has N instead of having A. And we're going to learn the ternary operator to create such a conditional statement. So see you in the next section for the HTML part of our project. All right, let's start our project. First, we open the Visual Studio Code. We close the Get Started tab. And here we click on File and Open Folder. I would like to create the project as usual in my desktop, but you can create it anywhere you like in your computer. So we click here and we click on new folder button to create a new folder. We name the folder auto text effects animation and we press enter. And here we click on select folder and we close the get started tab again here. Now we can create our HTML file. So on the left side in the explorer section, we right click and we click on new file. We name the file index.html. So we write index.html and we press enter. Now we have our index.html file here on the right side, which is completely empty, but we can use an exclamation mark to create an HTML5 boilerplate. So we write an exclamation mark and we press and choose the first auto suggestion. Here you can see the HTML5 boilerplate. We can use Alt-C to turn on the word wrap to see all the code. As you can see, now we have the doc type, which tells the browser what version of HTML the page is written in. And for HTML5, we just uh, leave it as HTML. Then we have an HTML tag, which covers everything with the lang attribute that sets the language of the page, which is English in our case. Then we have the header and the body. Inside the header, we have three meta tags and a title tag. The child set attribute, uh, defines the HTML 
character encoding and UTF-8 uh, contains all the characters and symbols and the users won't have any problem seeing our page and it is recommended by HTML5. The second meta, meta, uh, meta tab, sorry, met, meta tag is uh, for the Internet Explorer browser and tells the Internet Explorer browser to use the most recent rendering engine, which is Edge. The viewport meta tag tells the browser on how to resize the page and here the first part tells the browser to set the width of the page to the device's screen and also we have the initial scale or initial zoom level of the page to be 100%. Then we have the title tag which sets the title of the browser. We open the browser here inside the Visual Studio Code using the Live Preview extension that we have installed. So we right click and we click on Live Preview, Show Preview. Here on the right side, we can see our browser, which is completely empty, but with the title document. Let's change the title to be the name of our project which is auto or auto text effect animation. We close the explorer section by dragging this line to have more space and we can see all the codes. In the body section, we just have a container I mean the a div with a class of container and inside the this div we just have a h1 that's saying I am a youtuber so later using JavaScript we're going to add some a auto text effect that will change this YouTuber to other uh, carriers like uh, web developers or freelancer. So for now, we just hard coded the H1 here. So we can, uh, in the next section, we can use CSS to style our page. So See you in the next section for the styling our project. All right, in the last section, we have finished with the HTML part of our project. In this section, we're going to start adding some styling to our project using CSS. So first we need to create a CSS file. So in the in the left side we open the explorer section using control shift E or we can open it here in the view menu explorer and here in the left side we right click and we click on new file or just we click here. And we name the file style CSS and we press enter. Before installing our project using CSS, we must include a link to the CSS file within the HTML code. So we go back to the index.html and just under the title tag here, we add a link tag we just write link and we click on the third auto suggestion, the one with the CSS. As you can see, now we have a link tag with the relationship between the HTML file and the external style sheet, which is 
style.css file. And as both files, the index.html and the style.css are located at the same directory, we just need to write a style.css for the URL. An href attribute defines the destination of the link or the URL. All right, no, now we can use CSS in our project. We save the file and we close the Explorer section and we go to style.css to start, start styling our project. We open the browser and increase the size a little bit more and we start with the body section. We remove the margin, the default margin of the body, which is the space around the body section by using margin zero. As you can see, we don't have any margin anymore. And we change the display to flex. So we can bring the uh, this title to the center horizontally using justify content center. So we write justify content and we choose center for this property. Now we can see our text in the center horizontally. And for bringing it to the center vertically, we just need first to set the height of the body to be 100% of the viewport height, which means 100% of the screen size. And we set the align items to be center. Now we can see our text in the center, both horizontally and vertically. Let's change the background color to be, for example, salmon color. And let's change this the font of this text. And if I would like to bring some fonts from Google uh, font. So we go to the, to the desktop, we click on Google Chrome or any browser you would like to use. And here we search for Google font. And in the search results, we click on fonts.google.com. Here you can see many text uh, fonts. You can write here, for example, I am a YouTuber to compare the fonts with the text you want to have. I, I, I'm actually decided, I have actually decided to have the font permanent marker for our project, but you can choose any font you like for your own project. So we click here and we click this select this style and here on the right uh, we click here in on the imports and we copy the code in the middle of the style tag so we copy it and we go to the vs code and just at the top before the body we paste the code using Ctrl V. We can use Alt C to turn on the word wrap to see all the code. And now we can, uh, we can go back to the browser and just under this code, we have font family permanent marker and a cursive marker backup. So we copy this, we go back to the Visual Studio Code, and just under this, we paste that. Now we can see the, the font has been changed to the permanent marker. 
uh, I think that's it for our CSS styling. In the next section, we are going to use JavaScript to change the this YouTuber to other uh, careers and also add some uh, auto text effect that shows typing as well. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have finished styling our project using CSS. In this section, we are going to start adding functionality to our project using JavaScript. So first, we need to create a JavaScript file. So we open this Explorer using Ctrl Shift E. And on the left side, we right click and we click on new file. We name the file index.js. Sometimes the, the code uh, files goes to the right side, which has the browser. You can bring them just by dragging the tab and bring it here. So now we can see the browser in real time. Uh, before using the JavaScript for our project, we must add a link to the JavaScript file within the HTML code. So we switch to the index.html file and just under this div and the, at the end of the body tag, we just add a script tag. We just write sc and we click on the on the second auto suggestion, the one with the SRC. Now we have a script tag and the SRC attribute defines the destination of the link. As both files, I mean the index.html and the index.js are located at the same directory, we just need to write here index.js for the URL. All right, now we can use JavaScript for our project. So we go to the index.js. We close this uh, Explorer section by dragging this line. Uh, first, we need to uh, get the container of the project. I mean, the div with the class of container because we want to manipulate it inside the, this div. So by for returning a div with a class, we just need to use query uh, selector method. So we just write here constant and we name the constant container element and we write document dot query selector. And inside a set of parentheses, we write the selector for that class, which is dot container. We can use Alt C to turn on the word wrap, and we can see the code clearly in that way. All right. The things we want to do is just uh, manipulate this container. We just, for example, use container.element and we change the inner HTML, for example, to an empty string or whatever you want to write. And you can see it here. So before doing that, because uh, we, can, we want to add some HTML tag, so we add a back tag and we just open the back tag and we go back to the index.html and we cut this h1 tag and we go to index.js and we paste it in the middle of the back tags. So we can see the same things we had now as before, but uh, we want this YouTuber to be dynamic. 
we want to have more careers so we make it an array here so we create a constant and we set the array name to career or careers we just uh, create an array and the first element would be the same one we had youtuber we just make it capitalize and uh, the second career would be for example web developer the third one would be freelancer and the last one just say for example instructor All right, so in order to see the different careers here, we can delete this. And instead of this, we have some uh, variable and we, we target this carrier, carriers, and we just say, for example, the first element, we get YouTube, the second element, we get developer we just need to change the index inside the array three we get the instructor all right we set it to zero so instead of having this hard coded we can create an uh, a variable we just say uh, carrier index and we set it to zero as default and we just instead of this we just write carrier index all right and uh, so we just need to have a in bring this inside a function so we create a function and we name the function update uh, text and we cut this one and paste it inside this function we can call this function once to have the text and also we need another variable to have the index for the character of the uh, each element because we want to add the a typing effect so we just say character index and we set it to zero and instead of writing carriers uh, uh, carriers and carries index to get the full element we just add some a slice method here a slice method actually returns parts of a string and if you want to get only for example the first character you just write 0 and 1 so you get the first character or you want to get this the first two characters you get just write zero and two so we need to make this number the second number dynamic two and we just use the character index so instead of that we use character index so now the index is zero but we're going to in increment it using plus plus and we're going to have a set timeout to sorry set timeout to call this function uh, more than one time until uh, uh, after a delay so, so for the delay we just say uh, 400 milliseconds and we don't need a function because it's just uh, one one line of function we just write down update text is enough 
So now you can see that when we refresh the page, the YouTube starts typing to the end, but we don't get the next element yet. So we need to add a condition here. We just say if this character index reach to the to its uh, end, which is the this element uh, length. So we just say uh, carriers carriers array, which is here, and we get the the current index. We get the carrier index. So inside this, we just say carrier index. Uh, so now, and we just say dot length. So when we this character index increment, incremented and reached to the end, we can uh, activate this uh, statement or and uh, we just need to write here, uh, increase the carrier index. So we just say carrier index plus plus. So we increase it one time. So when we, YouTube finished, goes to the next one. But we need to reset the character index as well. So it comes to the first for the uh, next element. So we get YouTube. Uh, sorry, we should set it to zero, not increment. Yeah. Now we get YouTube. After that, we get web developer. And we have freelancer. And finally, we have instructor. But after instructor stops, and the reason we don't get the last letter is the we should put this character index plus plus at the top, not after this. So we cut this and bring it to the top. So now we get all the uh, elements correctly. So here the YouTuber should we have a we should add a raw R here. So we yeah. So we have freelancer instructor and after instructor it is stops working. In order to reset it again, we need to reset the character in sorry, the carrier index. To zero as well so we add a condition here we just say when the career index reach to its end which is the number of this array so it's careers dot length so in this in this case just set the carriers index to zero so now we have youtuber web developer freelancer and finally we have instructor but we have a year instead of uh, having n for instructor we need to have a n instead of a because we uh, we should say I am an instructor. So for in this case, we need to change this uh, hard coded A here. So we have I am A, instead of A, we create a variable. And uh, we just say if this, uh, the element, which is a carrier, uh, carriers and the element we can get by just saying carrier index if this one the first character of this one when 
we can use the slice again and we get just the first character we just say if this one is equal to i for instructor so we just say use n and otherwise just use a so now we have i am an youtuber i am a web developer i am a freelancer and finally we have i am an instructor yeah that was a, a quick project but it had too many things that you could learn i hope uh, you enjoyed and learned many things uh, if you have any question please uh, let me know in the q and a section but uh, see you in the next project welcome back to another project in this project we're going to create tab section as you can see from the final version of the project we have an image on the left side and we have a tab section on the right side each tab has uh, some text and a title and if you change the tab we see that the title and the text uh, has been changed also we have a very beautiful hovering effect for each tab and also when we uh, click on each tab we see a change in the background color of that tab we're going to use javascript to change the tabs and the title at the same time and also we're going to use some css properties uh, and the hover css uh, pseudo class to change this beautiful uh, hovering effects so see you in the next section for the html part of the project All right, let's start creating our project. In this section, we are going to start using HTML. So let's open the VS Code. We close the Welcome tab. We click on View, click on Explorer, and here in the left, we click on Open Folder. We choose Desktop, and we create a new folder. We call the folder Tabs Project. We select the folder here. We close the welcome tab again. And here in the left, we create our index.html. We right click, click on new file, and we name the file index.html. We can use an exclamation mark to create the boilerplate of our website. So we write an exclamation mark, we click on the first auto suggestion. Here we change the title of our project. So we write tabs project. We save the file using Ctrl S. We go to the desktop and we click on the folder that we have created and we double click on the index.html. As you can see, our website is completely blank and we have a tabs project title. We go back to the VS Code and we continue the HTML. In the body section, we create a div with the class of section center. So we write div dot section center. We press enter and we open the div. Here we create a div with the class of image so we write div.image, we press enter, we open the tag, we create an image tag here, we write img, we click on the first auto suggestion, and in the source section, we have to put the link of the our image. Let's go to the browser and we search for a background image. We click on the images, 
we choose the image that we like, for example, this one, we right click and select copy image link. We go back to the VS code and in the source, we paste the link. In the alt section, we just write image. We save the file, we check the browser, we go to our website, we refresh the page. Now we can see the image in our website. Later, we are going to style this image using CSS, but we just leave it for now. Let's go back to the VS Code and we just under this div, we create another div with a class of tabs. So we write div.tabs, we press enter and we open the tag. Inside this div, we make a button with a class of button. So we write button dot button. We press enter and inside this button, we write a step one. We copy this button two times using alt shift down arrow. We change this to step two and this one to a step three. We save the file, we check the browser we refresh the page. If you scroll down, you can see our buttons. As I mentioned before, we're going to style the images and the buttons later in the CSS. We go back to the VS Code to add our texts. Just below this div, we add a div with the class of tabs content. So we write div dot tabs content. We press enter two times to open the div. And here we add a div with a class of content. So we write div.content. We press enter, we, op we open the div. Here we add a h3 and we write a step one. Under this h3, we add a paragraph and we write 100 words of Lauren Epson. If you write lorem, for example, if you say four, you're gonna have four words, but if you write down lorem hundred, you're gonna have hundred words of lorem epsom. So we save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we can see the step one and the paragraph. Let's add two more steps. We go back to the VS Code, And we copy this two times using Alt Shift down arrow. We just change this one to a step two and this one to a step three. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we have three steps with three paragraphs. That was it for our HTML. In the next section, we're going to start styling our website using CSS. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have started creating our website using HTML. In this section, we are going to start styling our website using CSS. Let's go to the VS Code. And here in the left, we create our CSS file. We right click, click on new file, and we call the file styles.css. We go back to the index.html and in the top, just below the title, we create a link tag and we click on the third auto suggestion. We just change this style to styles and we save the file. Now we can install our website. We go to the styles.css the first thing we are going to style is the body section. We just write body, we open a set of curly braces, and we add a margin zero and padding zero to remove the default margin and padding from our website. So we write margin zero, padding zero. We save the file, we check our browser, we refresh the page, 
As you can see, now we have removed the default margin from our website. Let's change the font family, background color, and the font color in the CSS. We go to the VS Code, and just below this we write font family. We change it to sans serif. We change the background color. Before writing down the background color, I want to introduce you to a useful website that suggests the best color compilations. Let's go to our browser and here we search color hunt. And we click on the first website, colorhunt.co. You can find many color compilations in the website. For example, here you can choose the trendy or popular ones. As you can see, there are plenty of colors that you can choose. I already choose one for our website here. I want to use this pink color for our background. So I copy this. We go to our VS Code. And here I paste the color. I just add a hash sign here and we save the file. We go to our website, we refresh the page. As you can see here that the background colors of our website has been changed to pink and the font family is sans serif as well. Let's change the font color to gray. We go back to the VS Code and here we write color gray. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we have a lighter color for our fonts. Let's style the image. We go to the VS Code and just below this, we write IMG, we open a set of curly braces. We change the display to block to show the image in the full width and we write the width to be 100%. We change the border radius to be 0.5 REM to have a rounded borders. We write object fit cover to always have the same ratio for image. And we change the height to be 30 REM. And we save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we have a smaller image with rounded border. Let's start the section center class here. This class. This is the class that covers both the image buttons and the steps. So we go to the styles.css and just below this, we write dot section center. We open a set of curly braces. We change the width to be 90 VW, which is the 90% of the viewport. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, the image is only covering 90% of the width. Even we make the website smaller, we have the same ratio. We maximize the website and next we are going to change the margin to bring the image to the center, add some max width, main width and the padding. So let's go back to the VS Code and just below this, we write margin, zero up and down and auto left and right, which brings the image to the center. We add a max width, 1170 pixels, main width, 340 pixels, and padding, 5 REM, top and bottom, and 0 left and right. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we have the image in the center, we have some padding at the top, also, our steps and buttons are centralized as well.
we decrease the size of the website. As you can see, the ratio is always the same. We add some margin button to the image. We go back to the VS Code. And here we write margin button to REM. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we have some margin at the bottom of the image. Let's maximize this. The next things we are going to install is the tabs class here. This class that covers all the buttons. We go to the styles at CSS and just below this, we write dot tabs. We open a set of curly braces. We change the background color we go to the color hunt website and we choose this color. We copy this. We go to the VS code. We add a pound sign and we paste the color. We save the file. We check the browser. We go to our website and we refresh the page. You can see the changes here. Let's add some border radius and change the grid template rows to auto Let's go back to the VS Code. Just below this, we write border radius 0.5 REM and grid temperate rows to be auto and 1 FR. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. We made a mistake here. We have to go to the index.html. And this class of tabs should cover everything, including the buttons and the steps. So we cut this div and bring it here. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, the background color of all the buttons and the steps are different now. Also, the border radius is rounded now. The other things we need to do in the index.html is to cover all these buttons by another div. So we write a div here with a class of btn container. So we write btn dash container. We press enter two times and we cut all these buttons and we bring them here. We save the file, we check the browser we refresh the page, we shouldn't see any changes. But later we're going to use this class btn container to style our buttons. Let's style the buttons. The class that we are going to tap is this button here. So we go to the styles.css and just below this, we write button. We open a set of curly braces and we write padding. 1 REM, top and bottom, and 0 left and right. We remove the border by writing border none. We change the font size to be 1 REM. Background color, we choose here this color. We copy this. We go back to the styles.css. We add a pound sign and we paste the color. We change the cursor to pointer. We add a transition. To be all 0.3 seconds and linear. Also, we add a letter spacing. 0.25 REM. We save the file, we check the browser, we go to our website and we refresh the page. We can see the changes in the buttons. Let's install the BTN container. We go back to the VS Code. Just below this, we write dot BTN dash container. We open a set of curly braces. We change the display to grid 
and we change the grid template columns to be 1FR, 1FR, and 1FR. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, now the buttons are covering all the width. The problem is now we remove the border radius here. We just want to add the border radius for the first and the last button. Okay, let's go to the VS Code to add the borders. Just below this, we target the first button. So we write dot button. We add the nth child here. And we choose the child, which is the first one. For the first button, we want the border top right radius to be 0.5 rem. So we write border top left radius to be 0.5 rem. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we can see the rounded border. Let's do this for the step 3 button as well. We go back to the styles.css and here we write dot button child we change this one to three we open a set of curly braces and we write border top right radius to be 0.5 rem we save the file we check the browser we refresh the page and we can see the rounded border. Let's change the background color of the button when we hover over it. So we go back to the styles.css and just below this, we write dot button. We tap to its hover. We open a set of curly braces and we change the background color from the color hunt. We choose this one. We copy this. We go back to the styles.css. We write a pound sign and we paste the color. We change the font color to be white. We save the file, we check the browser, we go to our website and we refresh the page. As we hover over the buttons, we can see that the background color is changed and also the font color is white as well. Let's add some padding for the tabs content here. We go back to the VS Code and just below this, we write dot tabs dash content, which is a class from here, this one. We open a set of curly braces and we write padding two REM top and button and one and a half REM left and right. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we can see the padding here. Let's add a media query so when we have a bigger screen, the image and the tabs would be at the same row. So we go back to the VS Code. Just in the bottom, we add a media query. We add an add sign, media. We click on the second auto suggestion. Instead of this screen, we open a set of parentheses and we write main width. 992 pixels. This means if the screen is bigger than this size, just apply these CSS. So we write here dot image. We open a set of curly braces. We add a margin button, zero. And for the section center, we write here dot section center. We open a set of curly braces. We write display grid. We change the grid template columns to be 1FR, 1FR. We add a column gaps, just 2 REM. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, now we have the image and the tabs next to each other. But if we decrease the size of the screen, lower than 992 pixels, we have the image and the tabs on the top of each other.
In the next section, we are going to use JavaScript to show the steps related to the one that we click on the button. First, we are going to hide all the steps. And when we click on each button, we are going to see the related step. We are going to do this using JavaScript, which allows us to remove and add a specific class. So see you in the next section. All right, in the last section, we have installed our website using CSS. In this section, we are going to start using JavaScript to add functionality to our website. First, we are going to hide all the steps, and then we are going to use JavaScript to bring the step related to the one that we click here. Let's go to the VS Code, and we add a content here, dot .content, we open a set of curly braces and we change the display to none. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, now we don't have any content in our website. But we are going to add a class called live, which brings back the content if we add that class to the content. So we go back to the VS Code. Just below this, we write dot .content dot live, we open a set of curly braces and we change the display to block. We save the file, we go to the index.html and if we add a live class here, we're going to see this step one. So we test this. First we save the file, we go to the browser, we refresh the page. Now you can see this step one. We can test this for the step two as well. We go back to the VS Code, we delete this live here, and we add a live here. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now we can see the step two. Let's do the same thing for the button as well. We go back to the VS Code, to the salts at CSS, and just below this, we write dot button, dot live, we open a set of curly braces and we change the background color to be as the same as the tabs one here. We copy this, we go down and we paste it here. We save the file, we go to index.html, we add the live class here. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, now the step one has the same background color as here. But the problem is, if we hover over it, the font color would be white. We want the font color to be black when the tab has a class of life. So we go back to the VS Code. We go to styles at CSS. We go to the section that we write button hover and we add the not here. We open a set of parentheses and we add the dot live here. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. Now if we hover over it, the color remains black. Let's add the functionality using JavaScript in a way when we click on each button, the live class would be added to the related button. So we go back to the VS Code and here in the left, we create the JavaScript file. We right click, click on new file. We call the file index.js. We go to the index.html. Just at the end of the body, we add a script tag and we click on the second auto suggestion. In the source section, we write index.js. After saving the file, we can use the JavaScript file. We go to the index.js. First, we create a cons here. We call the cons tabs. We tap to the document. That's query selector. We open a set of parentheses. And in a double quote, we write dot tabs. We save the file. We just need to add the add event listener to track the clicks on the tabs. 
we just write tabs dot add event listener. We open a set of parentheses and we set the click, which means if someone click on the tabs and we create a callback function. We open a set of parentheses, we write a fat arrow and we open a set of curly braces. Here in the parentheses, we can get the event. So we write event here and we console log event.target. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page, we open the web developer tools using Ctrl Shift C. We go to the console section. And now if we click on any buttons, we can see the button tag here. If we click here, we can see that this button has two classes, button and life. In order to understand which button we are clicking, we need to add some IDs to the buttons. So let's go back to the VS Code. We go to index.html and we add a data ID to each button. For the first one, we write data ID equals to a step one. We copy this, we paste it here and here. We just change a step one to a step two and here to step three. We save the file, we go to the browser. Now we refresh the page. If we click on step three, now we can see the data ID step three as well. Let's add the data set as well. We go to the VS Code in index.js. Instead of only logging the event.target, we add the data here, data set, dot id we save the file we check the browser we refresh the page now if we click on any buttons for example this one we only get a step two or here we get a step three by using this trick we can easily identify which button is clicked by the user and we can add the class live to that button and the corresponding content Let's go back to the index.js. We just save this ID in a cons. We write cons ID equals, we copy this, we paste it here, and we delete the console lock. And here we write if a ID, which means if the ID exists, we open a set of curly braces. First, we target all the buttons here, for example, we write down const btns equal document that query selector all. We open a set of parentheses and we write dot button, which is the class here for all the buttons. Now we loop through all the buttons. Here we write down btns dot for each. We open a set of parentheses and we write down a callback function. We open a set of parentheses again. We write a fat arrow and we open a set of curly braces and here we get each button. So we write btn. First we remove the live class from all btns. We write btn dot class list dot remove, we open a set of parentheses, and inside the double quote, we write live. And then we add the class to the one that the user clicked. So we write event dot target dot class list dot add, we open a set of parentheses, and inside the double quote, we write live. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. 
If we click on step two, you can see that the background color of the step two has been changed to the one that has the live class. We can see that in the inspector as well. We select each element, for example, this step tree, and we click on the step tree. As you can see, the live class has been added to the button. And if we click on the step one, the live class is removed from the step tree button. The other things we need to do is to show the steps here related to the button. So we go back to the VS Code. We create a const here. We call it articles equal document dot query selector all. We open a set of parentheses and inside the double quote we target the dot content, which is the class here, this one. And it's available in all the articles. As the same thing we did for the buttons, first we have to remove the class live from all articles, and then we add to the one that the user clicked. We set the first article as a default, so we cut this live from here and put it to the first one, which allows the user to see the step one as a default. We save default, we go to the index.js, we loop through the articles, we write articles dot for each. We open a set of parentheses and we create a callback function. We get each article here. First, we remove the class live from all articles. So we write article dot class list dot remove. We open a set of parentheses and inside the double quote, we write live. We save the file. We check the browser. We refresh the page. As we click on the step two, we don't have any articles because this class live has been removed from all articles. As the same things we did for the buttons, we should add an ID to the each article so we can identify which article has been selected by the user. So we go back to the VS Code. We go to index.html and we add an ID here. We call it a step one. We do the same things for the others. We change this one to two and this one to three. We save the file. We go to index.js. Here we create a const. We call it element equals document dot get element by ID and in a set of parentheses, we write the ID, which is the ID from here. For example, if the ID is a step one, we choose the article with the ID of a step one and we put it in the element const. We just need to add here element dot class list dot add and we add the class live. We save the file, we check the browser, we refresh the page. As you can see, the default button and the article is a step one. And if we click on the step two, the button is a step two and the article is a step two as well. We try it again, we click on step three. As you can see, now our code is working fine. Let's inspect the article here. Here you can see the step three. If you click on step one, you can see that the live class is added to the step one and is removed from step three. We try it again, we click on step two. Now you can see that the live class is attached to the step two and has been removed from step one and step three. 
Also, you can see that our website is completely responsive. If you open it, the image and the steps are at the same row. And if we decrease the size, they are at the top of each other. That was it for our project. I hope you enjoyed and learned many things. Please let me know your opinion about the project and wait for the updates. I'm going to add more projects to this course. Thanks again and see you next time.